Hello everyone and welcome to the Community Spotlight. We've got our yearly showcase at this point as it's our third time doing this of showing off Mega Man Battle Network in the month of May as uh, a lot of times with Mega Man communities they like to celebrate Mega May so we're having a little bit of fun with that here on the Community Spotlight. This year we've got Mega Man Battle Network 1, 4, and 5 and Metal Battle Network 5 is going to have arbitrary code execution which is apparently relatively new, and I'm really looking forward to seeing how that run goes. But before we get too much into Battle Network, just as a quick reminder, SGQ 2021 Online is July 4th through the 11th. Games are out and submissions, or prize submissions are open. If you'd like to submit something to help out the event, you can go to gamesdonequick.com, see all the relevant information and dates about that. Frame Fatales, the all-women speedrunning event, will be returning in August, the 15th to the 21st with Frame Fatales. And game submissions for that open tomorrow and will be running through the 25th. Uh, you can head over to gamesdonequick.com slash frame fatales for more information on that. And of course, if you want to see information on all of our shows we have here on Hotfix, you can go to gamesdonequick.com slash hotfix. You can find out more information about submitting your runs to any of our weekly shows down at the bottom left-hand side of that page. But if you're watching on YouTube and you'd like to support our live content, we'd appreciate it if you consider checking us out on the, our Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash gdq. And of course, uh, we'd appreciate it if you consider subscribing to our Twitch channel as well as... Hotfix is funded in part thanks to your subscriptions and bits. But tomorrow, if you tune in on Hotfix, you'll see random number generation. It's a show about randomizers, randomizer community, randomizer adjacent stuff like bingo, all that sort of thing. They're going to be having um, Pokemon Crystal, I believe, tomorrow's show. That'll be starting at 7 p.m. Eastern. So with all of those announcements out of the way, we've got Smog, Dallas, and Terra here to run us through Battle Mega Man Battle Network 1. How are you all doing today? Very good. Thank you for having us. Very great. Looking forward to this. Terra, you're muted. Where's Terra? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, thank you. Uh, excited <laughs> to be back, as always. <laughs> so, how would you give the introduction to people like I'm sh I see a lot of Battle Network people in chat, but for any of our regulars who haven't caught this show before, how would you introduce people to Battle Network? Well, you want me to try, everyone. or do you want to do that, Smog? Uh, I can do it. Hello, everyone. I'm Smog, Smog BN. Um, I'll be running the game for you tonight. And so, yeah, Battle Network is an RPG. Mega Man Battle Network is an RPG. Uh, has a an isometric... Uh, point of view in the overworld and you run around as this human kid named Lan who has a net navigator or a net navi named Mega Man EXE and he goes on the internet and it's very kind of like early 2000s ooh the internet is cool thing uh, and you can go around the internet as Mega Man the thing that I think a lot of people nowadays brings them back to the series is the battle system which uh, is kind of like a grid-based, real-time battle system uh, that mixes in with sort of like deck building mechanics. You have a, a folder of 30 battle chips that you can use uh, and use in real time throughout a battle. And then as the battle goes on, you can pick certain chips and then you can pick some other chips. There's some rules about which chips you can pick at certain points. We can go over that. But uh, yeah, is anything I'm missing? Battle Network basically predicted smartphones and artificial yep. intelligence back in 2000. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Uh, yeah, and, and the combat is pretty unique. It's a mix of strategy and action, as Smog will show you, because we have to start the game with the tutorial. Yep. And that have to, has to be said as every year. Do. Somebody has yeah. to mention yep. that it predicted smartphones. <laughs> yeah. uh, before we get started, I just want to do a little thing quickly. My audio is a little weird. Don't worry about the video. It'll be back right now. There we go. Perfect. Oh, you're good? expert, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> one seems like one. Yeah, so uh, I think we're probably good to get started, right? We can explain the rest as we go. Yeah. Oh, yeah, let me you... resync the video, because I think when you Oh, sorry. It... I'm sorry. My bad. No problem. I can get it back pretty quickly that was cool 
If you were synced, yeah, yeah. I'll just let you do it. Uh, question in chat. We're doing Battle Network 1, 4, and 5 today. Mm -hmm. Well, in that order. It, we're, we're doing some of 5. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you later. Yeah. If you can, I definitely recommend watching it. It's pretty. Uh, it'll leave you a little flabbergasted. Mm hmm. Your stream Just is refusing to go back and sync. Could you like restart it real quick for me? Uh, yeah, sure. Oh, okay. <laughs> sorry about this, everybody. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh... Smog had to fix his audio. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's classic. Uh, at this point, it's classic to be at. We should go. have done our channel. Okay, we're ready to go whenever then. Yeah. Why don't you give me a countdown then? Kara, you want to do it? Sure. Yeah, on go. Yes. Three, two, one, go. Good luck, have fun. Thank you very much. Yeah. Too bad Jamik wasn't here to give us a more interesting countdown. <laughs> <laughs> so the very first thing you do in the game is you pick up your PET and you have breakfast. Under the breakfast plate, you find a battle chip. Not that we're going to use it, but it'll, it'll be more important later on. Yeah, yeah, and then so we basically just go straight into the tutorial. Yeah, since the last time this game has been shown, single segments have had a lot of changes to it. In particular, shout out to Chip Trader, which is now used extensively in a whole lot more places than would have made sense uh, a year or two ago. And so there's yeah. a lot of free battleships that you can kind of pick up. I love uh, the new route came from the 600% marathon we did for the 20th anniversary of the franchise, which we used the trip trade a lot to get a bunch of new chips for the library so we can complete the game faster. But then we found out that since this game has a 60 chip, unique chips in the library requirement to finish it, we found out that using the trader for that is also quite beneficial in multiple ways. So it got implemented to the route a few months ago. Yeah. Long story short, the chip trader has uh, a certain chance to give you a new chip. And so if you use it enough, on average, you'll get a couple new chips to your library, which is particularly relevant one, one for reasons Dallas just mentioned. Uh, this is the combat system. So if you haven't seen Battle Network before, basically it's kind of turn-based where you pick the chips. That's the strategy element that comes from deck building. And then it's real-time combat and executing. Uh, the third fight is interesting because in Battle Network 1, it's the only one of the tutorial that actually has RNG, so I've got a random draw and he had to figure out what he wanted to do there. So, a mini bomb for 40, 40 buster shot. That's a lot of B button. And then a sword. Yeah. That was a lot of Especially how that fight goes. It's funny. I'd never seen that draw. The the triple swords. That's funny. Swords are, are not great because the first thing you want to do is get rid of the Metar in the background or yeah. in the back row. So, uh, mini bomb was the way to go. And usually. The standard uh, is you want to be able to finish the fight at the very beginning of the second turn. So it was a normal one. It's on par. Uh, and yep. this game did come out in like early 2000s. So welcome to 1990 internet. Yep. So it, it got better the later games. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. The first thing that we'll probably talk about is you'll see me moving back and forth in battles and firing the buster a whole lot. Shockwave, nice. Uh, and that is because it lets you, it basically just lets you shoot your next buster shot a little bit sooner. Yeah, by killing some of the animation. Mm -hmm. Dallas, do you want to explain step counters? Oh, I'll try. Okay. <laughs> so basically, the way the game handles encounters, it's that you have a step counter that bolts up as you go on. And after a certain amount of time, every 64 steps, or I think it's just, uh, it will increase your odds of getting an encounter by a certain amount. How much depends on the area curve of the, the curve of the area, but it's usually very standard. It goes as in three percent after a bunch of steps. It, as after sixty-four steps, uh, you'll get that check. Three percent encounter yes or no, and it keeps balancing six and nine to fifteen until it reaches more or less fifty percent. Uh, that has said, however, you can reset that step counter in many places for 
sometimes actual good reasons, sometimes not so much. So by interacting with certain things on the internet, like the door with the skull, or like new access points, and even if you cannot access them or you cannot do much with them, they actually are resetting your step counter. Mm -hmm. So uh, a lot of the run is managing your step counter to try and minimize encounters, and then the ones that you do get, taking advantage of it to either play them as quickly as possible, run from them if you get an escape, or, or try to get a chip. Uh, that's our first trip to the internet. So now the oven's on fire. You know, just battle network things. It's probably a virus, so we're going to try and... Uh, the, the oven's connected to the internet for some reason. Yeah, everything's connected to the internet. Uh, one question in chat was, why don't you use a charge shot? And for battle network one, until you put an upgrade or a power up... Two into charge you cannot charge uh that's also true in two so it wasn't mm -hmm. until three and even then three's charge shot is so slow at first yeah. but it's still faster to just use the buster oh, four five and six uh it's more even yeah. okay. so real quick question for people who are not familiar what's single segment mean oh Which yeah point? the category <laughs> uh so <sighs> For uh, a couple of the Battle Network games, in particular one, uh, the random number generator is implemented in such a way that uh, if you save and soft reset the game, which is pretty quick to do, uh, we can predetermine basically every random element and aspect of the game and do things to get the outcome that we want. Uh, which sounds really cool and exciting, and it kind of is, but it, it takes away a lot of the kind of variety and intrigue of playing Battle Network games, usually and casually. So Single mm -hmm. Segment was created as this category that effectively prohibits you from resetting, which negates your ability to uh, control the random number generator. So it forces you to kind of like plan out, like, wh take advantage of uh, random situations, uh, account for bad RNG uh, and, and it's a lot more reacting to the game than sort of choreographing a perfect playthrough. Yep, that's exactly it. Yep. Ooh, mech guard. The thing is, uh, this category can be quite scary because that also means not dying because you can technically save with a perfect roller in a perfect spot, go to the boss, die intentionally and they get the perfect draw that would actually be the fastest way to defeat the boss anyway so we had to make it so going back to the old screen by any means it's not allowed so it used First to be trick, much definitely. more scary but we found <laughs> we found something we'll it's talk fun. about later anyway so this is the first boss and you'll notice uh smog did a folder edit and there's another kind of quirk that's universal in the battle number games where the way that it shuffles the folders is actually uh, not not entirely random. There's a kind of a quirk where chips are more likely to show up in the slots where you have them. So after he edits the folder, depending on if we're doing a boss fight or just running through an internet area, he'll actually sort either to put high damage chips at the top, uh, good flow at the top, or escape chips at the top. So that's called slot bias, and we take advantage of that uh, in all the games. No! Really want. Oh, no! That's funny. The the uh, fireball ate up the shotgun. Oh, it's fine. Didn't realize that would happen. I also didn't know that could happen. <laughs> uh, was I the only one? <laughs> yeah. I lost count. Alice really too knows bad. about the game. Yeah. So, so before we go that... to sleep. Oh yes. Okay. So that means that escape is a chip in the first one. The yes. first two the games. First yeah. game. Oh no. Uh, the fr it's, it's it's a chip in the first two games, but in the first game you cannot press the L button to get an, a chance to escape at all. They didn't implement only, running. Why would they, wanna... they introduced it in Battle Network 2, and they also had the escape chip in Battle Network 2, so there are two ways to run. The nice thing about the escape chip is that it's a guaranteed run. Uh, no encounter, nice. So yeah, uh, we just picked up, as you might have seen, a second escape chip uh, before we went to bed, because as soon as we go to bed, the next scenario locks us into the school. Yes. But like having as many escape chips as possible, as early as possible in the folder mm -hmm. is super beneficial because most of the times the fights give us nothing we want, mm -hmm. honestly, because the setting route is pretty lenient. We don't really need that much chip. RNG setting from fights. And the chips we care about are 
those that are going to be unique to the library. Um, sometimes, very few times, we could get an actual chip that we could use. And then occasionally we pick up chips that Next are panel. easy to get uh, because they take little time to get and we can throw them into the chip trader. Yep. The, the, the chip trader math, I won't get into it because it's way too many numbers, but it's it's pretty funny how it works out. Like, this chip is worth getting because it has a X percent chance to give us a random chip. Mm -hmm. uh, Raukun, uh, sometimes it's glitching out. Is that because of the Discord share or That's unrelated? Uh, fixing oh. the sync occasionally, I think. Oh, okay. seeing that. Cool. Gotcha. So now this is like, the the second dungeon, and like the the internet in being one super boring, but the dungeon in <laughs> two pretty cool. Someone pointed out earlier that yes, each of the different areas has its own kind of unique uh, tile set for the battle. So it was neat. Mm -hmm. And being one was the only one to do that, I think, since they yeah. didn't have any uh, special panel types. They're just normal, cracked, and broken. That's true. Yeah. So the same kind of strategy here. I guess you already got shockwave. Yeah, Oops. I got it from a previous fight. Yeah, so there, there's like a lot of this, this is kind of where single segment and adapting to the RNG comes from the blue mystery data that he passed. Blue mystery data are these fixed items that you can pick up was a shockwave and Smog is a huge fan of shockwave. So he'll, he'll go out of his way to get it in general. But uh, if you don't have it yet for the library, it's worth picking it up because it counts towards mm -hmm. that 60 chip requirement. But if you already have it, Picking it up guarantees pretty much another random encounter, which costs a lot of time, so we're not to skip mm -hmm. it instead. There's actually a lot that goes into the running for those 60 library chips. Mm -hmm. There's so many things you can do for it in terms of buying things with Sunny, grabbing things that are slightly out of the way, forcing yeah. forced encounters, or having setups with specific ships for a lot of random encounters. <laughs> so at the beginning of, of this dungeon i i had picked up two extra escapes and i put them in the folder and then i sorted by reverse id meaning that the chips that are later in our kind of like collection library get put at the top and you might have noticed that uh every battle up until this one actually i think i got an escape <laughs> yeah that's because five. the chips yeah how far did he go into that a second ago uh just basically enough where yeah. it, every chip normally has like a 3% chance of showing up in any slot, but they have like a 15% chance of showing up in their current slot. Mm -hmm. So if you've got three escapes at the top of your folder, 15% chance that you'll draw each of them individually. So mm -hmm. you only need one and too much math. But putting them at the top means that you, they show up way more often than they should. Which is good. good for uh, I think that. But so, <laughs> someone in chat asked how long a 100% run of this game would take. Dallas, you want to answer that question? Funny you should say. <laughs> well, there's two ways to do it. If you do RNG manipulation, <laughs> getting every single chip on the fitting base, which is what we establish as a fun, hungry completionist uh, speedrun, takes just over three hours. It's actually quite a watch. I I and mean, I really like running that. And so far, I'm the only one that has done that manipulation because it's three hours of perfect movement and some nonsense. Mm -hmm. uh, but then for the 600% marathon, we did the o OSS, which is a, basically a Battle of World War remake for the DS with an extra 30 minutes in there. And that doesn't uh, allow to do any kind of RNG manipulation. And that took basically 10 hours. I think that's how long it took me, right? Because I did a run before. Free RNG minute. Yeah, more or less. 10 so to 12 hours, if I remember correctly. But effectively, uh, for the 20th anniversary, we did a 100% series marathon and it took a week. So if you mm -hmm. want to know how long it would take to speed run the entire Battle Network series, the answer is about a week. And that's on YouTube <laughs> if you want to check it out. That's that's if you want to sleep. <laughs> so, even in some cases. Uh, now, what one cool thing here is that Mega Man encountered a, a glitch in the system and Lan is going in the real world to fix it so that Mega Man can continue in the internet. So they, they did a, a nice job with this dungeon in particular, overlapping the real world and the cyber world uh, and having you switch between the two characters to uh, to solve puzzles in advance. So that was cool. 
Doesn't happen too much. Uh, this is another quirk where Smog is going to pause because for some reason in this particular area, after you open the random number door, it resets your step counter, which allows him to pick up this blue mystery data, which contains a quake, which is good for the mm -hmm. library. And it's uh, A-coded, which is great, and it does 90 damage, which is great, and it hits three panels ahead, which is great. It's just a good ship mm -hmm. uh, without getting a random encounter. Uh, we like, even if you got... get Quake Army, you drive it anyway. Cause yeah, because yeah, you don't encounters. get any extra encounters from it. Yep. So uh, there I was moving around just so the spooky viruses wouldn't attack me. That delays them actually attack you, attacking you. Yeah. So it's more now the that stage, so I'm doing back. the math on the escape ships right now in the background. <laughs> okay. So it's like 15% for it to show up in its slot, and 3% I think it's a bit less in BN1. In slot. Uh, maybe. Something well, we'll, say, if, well if, if we want to get a little more technical, what happens is I don't uh, think we do. at the beginning of a battle, <laughs> uh, there are like a certain them. number of s swaps. It just picks two chips and swaps them. Uh, and it does that uh, 60 times in BN1 and oh, geez, uh, okay. some other amount of 30 times in the later games. Uh, what are Look at this guy here? doing a folder edit and explaining. I know, it's line. not actually that easy. <laughs> I actually <laughs> said to Mark, I've won TXT on how to do folder edits 101. He has so, not opened it yet. <laughs> <laughs> this, uh, this is the second boss. We, we've got to solve this puzzle and then the cutscene right after it leads into Number Man. Fireman moved around, he came to the front occasionally, which was good because swords are a highest damage chip for the most part, but they only work on enemies that don't hide in the back. And the next couple bosses, Battle Network 1, has this problem of bosses like to hide in the back. So for Number Man, they, they also flinch at very low damage values, like 30. So they have a bunch of iframes. Uh, Number Man's mm. essentially just this slow fight that we kind of slog through. Yeah, wasted a cannon there. On the other hand, it's not too dangerous at the fight. <laughs> you say that, but you might have noticed that was my first save of the, the run. Uh, it's possible to die there. The number of balls that spawn in, what, one of them has a high value, one has a low value, and one has a medium value. And then after a while, like once you get them below half health, a lot of bosses right will here. have some kind of change in behavior once you get below half health. And number man, he'll start throwing dice or time bombs. Time bombs do 40 damage dice will do 10 times the number so if it rolls a one like you can even ignore the dice it's like it's 10 damage <laughs> whatever but if it's a six you're like that's a little more scary yep for example if it rolls a six i would die right now yeah it's also possible to hit as you're step buffering your your shots i'll spawn something in front of you like almost half the night and yep. so you can you can just drop stuff on top of your head no, that's, that's true for Don't the next for boss as well yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. A bit of a slow fight. I did, you know. It's like... I, that, that's Number Man. It's like, previously, yeah. I think Number Man was always my reset point when I was running the game. Mm -hmm. Well, Hammer Guts, man. Yeah, and like, the chip that we were talking about earlier that's really good, Quake 1, which does 90 damage, and you, it can actually hit him if he's in the back row and all of that. Put it in my folder, didn't even get it. So, it's a little sad, but it happens. That's, that's single segment for you. Yep. And I do this here just because some of the viruses in this comp are a little annoying, but I resort my folder to have the escapes at the top. Oh, maybe too. <laughs> Pretty good. We end up able to get five escape ships. You get three of them super early. And then the fourth one is once you get to Scilab and the fifth one is once you get to the traffic comp. Mm -hmm. So by, by at least like halfway in the room, we got five. So then, all right, now do the math if there are five escapes in the top five. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good. Uh, the other thing is that if you don't get an escape in the top five, what you do then generally is you will uh, add, and then you've got the first top 10 chips, and then you can add again and have the top 15. So as long as all of your escapes are not in the bottom 15, you will be able to run from the fight in three turns. And that's probably something like 90 something percent chance of happening which means smog has in his vast experience along with dallas had several fights where they've added twice and not been able to escape <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah 
And you're That's just like, why? Wow. You know, rule of thumb. If you see a draw, if you want to the fight with, you should take it. But that takes a lot of time and experience. And that I'm not, I'm not good at the game. But Smog yeah. is. That's why he's running the game today. So <laughs> this is Gutsman, and he, 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 in this form, basically just throws the shockwave out. He, he will try to punch you if you're in the front, and then he will crack one row of tiles. Uh, his first form moves fairly slowly. He, he's basically just a damage punch. He does like to move to the front, though, which means you can actually hit him with swords, which is a bit better than the number men fight. He also doesn't do too much damage, so Smog is just gonna tank a bunch uh, of hits. Yeah. You gotta be a little careful, because oh, if you. you do lose this fight, you don't game over, but you uh, have to do a thing to do a thing. Don't worry about it. Yeah, oh, we need yeah. to go back to Mel's piano because well, one of the data we grabbed there was a story required thing for later and uh, the chip necessary to fight Gutsman because he's only fight you if you give him a chip first but he asks every time you mm -hmm. fight him even if it's, pretty, it's pretty weird in order to get to the second internet area you have to have Dex's permission which mm -hmm. is pretty, pretty strange and then he will only fight you if you give him the chip yeah. So I don't know of... how he got to be the gatekeeper of the internet, but uh... <laughs> a lot of the fights in uh, the run aren't necessary. There, there are some that are very difficult, and there are some that aren't aren't very difficult. Um, but it is possible to die in them, especially once you start trying to fight them really aggressively, uh, which is obviously at most points faster. Yeah. One of the reasons is that Battle Network 1 doesn't, your HP doesn't persist. It resets the full after mm -hmm. each fight. And so the enemies just sort of in general do more damage, especially mm -hmm. the navvies. And because we're just trying to play through the game as quick as possible, we're skipping out on a bunch of optional power ups and HP memories you can get. So we have very low health compared mm -hmm. to where uh, later on in the run you're, you're supposed to have. In fact, this game was free routed a couple of months ago, which, uh, like, um, it basically improved the route recently in a much more reckless way. So we have now even less HP memories now because it's more optimal. So we, yeah. we're, there's a point in the game where we can actually just get one shot by two bosses back to back. <laughs> Unfortunately, this run, that I will not be able to get one shot because. Uh, you might have seen I just stopped by a shop just now. Um, it is possible to pick up extra random Zenny from mystery data on the internet and buy a second power up, which powers up your buster. Uh, however, I only had enough Zenny for one, so I bought some extra HP instead. Yeah, that's actually a major reset point because that mm -hmm. extra buster power up will go until the basically the end of the game. So you're gonna have to work with one less power. It's it's gonna be quite significant. <laughs> I did the so, thing. Don't worry about uh, it. In, in Battle Network One, a lot of the viruses have like behaviors that's a little different than like two, three later on. The game's got more polished as time went on. So Battle Network mm -hmm. One is kind of like a beta test of all these new features and mechanics. And the hardhead virus does not have a tell. In later games, they, they shake before they attack. In this one, they don't. So mm -hmm. Mog was just trying to use the custom gauge and feel out the timing. Yeah. All too early. I, I've just tried to, uh, for the most part... Uh, trust the Force? Take... Trust the Force partly, but also um, figure out different parts in the custom gauge where you can look at it and time your next attack. But, uh, you know, different ships have different timings, so... Oh, mm -hmm. I missed that, too. Oh, no! What? I got greedy. You tried them both with a sword? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So, is there rhyme or reason on some of these you're fighting instead of escaping? Is that just not finding the escape ship, or decent chance of a reward? Yeah, so, a bit of both. We, we have a sort of, um order of priority uh the first thing is usually if you get an escape in your first five chips for the most part you're just going to escape uh the next thing is 
Smog is doing a folder edit in a boss fight, I will take over the explanation. No, 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 I got it, I got it. The next thing is, <laughs> if you can take the chips that you were dealt with at the very beginning, um, and complete the fight before the custom gauge fills up, then you take that, because it's still a pretty fast fight. Otherwise, uh, you add, which gives you a choice of uh, five more chips uh, at your next turn. And uh, ideally, you either A, get an escape in those extra five chips, or B, are able to finish up the fight. So you still want to be doing damage in the one turn that you've added. Um, yes. However, there are certain enemies, like the fishy virus, that, uh, that give us chips that we don't usually pick up in the run. Uh, so if we can get them from a random drop from a, a battle, that helps us out. Uh, so sometimes if I have an amazing drop and I also drew an escape, I will take a fight because we've got good chances of getting the chip. So there are stone certain man, enemies by the way. you do want to try and kill if they show up? Yes, for sure. Because um, yeah. different uh, viruses have different uh, drop tables. Uh, so for the that most was stone part... stone man, by the way. Yeah, that, he that was ball. stone man. For, for the most part... Uh, even if you do really well in a fight, you can only have a 50% chance of getting the chip or a 50% chance of getting Zenny as your reward. There are certain viruses that have a 100% chance of giving you their chip at certain ranks, either like rank 8 and higher or only at S rank. Uh, and so we keep in mind what those viruses are and we also see what our draw was and we kind of, you know, react to everything as was said earlier oops i like that tv on the dog channel yeah that's our fourth escape by the way so basically for the thing is a lot of what determines whether or not you take the fight is this route basically as a random check quota you have to meet by a certain point in the game and if you don't there's a lot of very slow backups mm -hmm. <laughs> So we are going to constantly have to keep track of how many random chips we get. And some chips we get are running in, but they save Seti or they save time or they save some resources that we can actually use to get other chips instead. So it's a lot of keeping track of things. For the most part, we're looking for an ideal best number of if you do not do anything extra of 10 random chips. A very, the minimum to go quite fast still number is seven random chips so if you're counting smog just stole like four things right here mm -hmm. including 5000 zenny from a vending from machine <laughs> plan but, has a problem yeah he he's known for doing that across the series a little he even bit. took dad's twitter handle i sure did at dad wait what <laughs> That's actually yes. very, very relevant. This area is a government complex. It houses SciLab, which, you know, sci Science, you know, it's the Science Lab. Very creative naming. And the waterworks for the, the town. Um, and it's also where our next scenario is going to take place. So that's why they introduce it to us at this point. Yeah, your dad basically... So your your grandpa invented the internet, and then your oh, dad yeah. invented NetNavi's. Oops. It library. just runs in the family. So Al Gore is your grandfather? <laughs> Something like that. In this universe. Oh, so it's time. Let's get up. So very soon, it's chip Tyler time. But we're gonna... Mm -hmm. We picked up a lot of unnecessary father worth of the ch chips that we're never going to use. Oh, yes! Let's go. <laughs> this is perfectly normal. Everyone walks like that, right? He's avoiding an alligator. He's late for school. <laughs> He's avoiding something. <laughs> Fast movement. <laughs> <laughs> the shots, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Fat kid flying? <laughs> so, yeah, as... As you can see, as mentioned in the intro, uh, this game has an isometric point of view, uh, which actually does some funky things when you want to start talking about uh, fast overworld movement. Uh, 
We won't go too much into it, but Tara, do you want to go a little into it? Um, Vertical movement, good. <laughs> Diagonal movement, okay. Horizontal movement, bad. Yep. And if you That's can get somewhere with uh, just... I should do this all first. If you can get okay. somewhere... Edit the folder, with... save. I guess it doesn't matter, but... Yeah. Um... You focus on ship order. I don't want another Dallas moment. All right. <laughs> Oh, although it largely doesn't matter. For, it's not for wrong, though. Another, another shockwave, I'll take it. Okay. Medcar G, that's funny. So we're looking for many, many things, but mainly random new chips that are inaccessible any other way, or another escape, or another a really good chip like a Lexord. Ooh, Drain 2. That's oh. a random chip, and it's pretty good. Yes. Yeah. You, you don't usually see that one. You got another mech RG. Keep it. It's trying to tell you something. No, I bet I you get that G man. right here. We oh. already did that science. Yeah. It doesn't work there. <laughs> Dallas, this is about content. <laughs> <laughs> you got me. Oh, actually. It's looking like just one, huh? Yeah. yeah. We usually expect two random chips in average. Oh. Sometimes we get three and it's really crazy. Yeah, uh, basically there's like a uh, what seventy five percent chance to get an old chip. Is that right? Mm -hmm. And yeah, twenty five percent chance to get uh, any chip from the trader's list of available <laughs> chips. So it could be an old chip or it could be a new chip. Yeah. Mm. Oh hey, it's our best friend. <laughs> Load shot. Especially unfortunate, Peter, because even if you only get one random, you, you sometimes get like another one that's useful. In this case, it was only a shockwave instead yep. of like an snip, escape snip. or something. Snip, snip. Can so, I get a snip, snip in chat, please? Snip, snip. Uh, what Lan just did is he went to his dad's lab. He was like, oh, my dad's not around. I'm going to steal his uh, government complex borrow. Uh, ID. Yeah, borrow. You know how it goes. We have your dad's ID and his Twitter handle. We're basically committing <laughs> identity theft at this point. <laughs> I mean, he's technically a Hikari. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I got my dad's permission. Parental permission. Oh, this is another uh, custom sprite having a secret conversation. This comp is good. It's got two key or two uh, items in it. One uh, is a new chip, and one is a bunch of zenny. Mm -hmm. 3,000 zenny. Pretty good. So the plot at this point is what? Uh, suddenly you wake up one day and the whole town has no water. That's no good. Pretty much. Probably a virus. Probably a virus. Everything's a virus in this series. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, when you connect hey, everything to, to the internet. The story. I mean, should we be making fun of that right now? We just had a pipeline shut down by... Oh no. A cyber attack. I, I mean, uh, Battle Network predicted the future. <laughs> Alright. Now, uh, don't, to don't add buy insult a smart to injury, oven. don't buy a smart oven. Uh, <laughs> Lan and Mega Man think that what Mr. Waterworks guy is say, that said uh, it was a little shady. So they hid away in Dad's lab until after the government complex shut down and are now taking an investigation into their own hands. So, you know, I think Mega Man should know better. Uh, he's kind of enabling Lan to, into these bad situations. I mean, uh, to be fair, want? they're right. Yes, they uh, are in, in fact correct. This is our obligatory water dungeon. We have some ice physics here. Mm. I wonder who the boss is. <laughs> Mog is updating our folder. We got a uh, so folder flow is another important aspect of playing these games casually. And uh, in Battle Network One, they didn't have the star code, the asterisk code, the wild card. So mm -hmm. everything has a letter, and you can only take chips that have the same code. So trying to minimize the number of codes in your folder means you can take more chips per turn. And uh, for single segment, it actually ended up being that J code was uh, a pretty good one that we could get a lot of chips mm -hmm. out of it. Or reasonably useful yes. cross gun. So 
Mog's folder's a little bit better, and then of course sorting so that we're more likely to get escapes. Mm -hmm. It's basically gonna be escapes, really hard hidden chips, and a bunch of quite good J codes. Mm -hmm. Shut us to the PN6 runners. <laughs> <laughs> Probably could have added here, but I was like, oh, Shockwave's so good. And we got this yes. chip. Which is not terrible. It does three shots of one hundred uh three shots of forty for a total of hundred and twenty. Yeah, we usually can pay that from a BMD, but getting it it's it's, it's quite good. It's can be useful. It's funny because it has in this king game, BM1, the game with really bad odds for chips, it has better odds. Then in Pell Network 6, where it's a story part chip. <laughs> Tried to get fancy there. Oh, and got rewarded. Wow, I wasn't expecting what? that. The Cloudy it's... Virus is very annoying because its hitbox, when it jumps, is actually kind of wonky. It's pretty easy to miss chips, um, mm -hmm. although there are occasions where you can double hit, uh, which is funny. Yeah. Uh, that was uh, Proto Man. Our best friends, Nat Navi. And then the other virus that was in that fight is a fishy, which in later games, even if there's an object in front of it, uh, it will still dash to attack you and stay in the same spot. In this game, it just kind of ignores that, so it's a little hard to hit. But wait, you still don't have a dash, do you? No, I still don't. Yeah, so it was like if I got a chip from either virus, it would have been good. And obviously, I got cloud so that's nice yeah that's quite good <laughs> so uh interesting quirk of this dungeon is whenever you turn off and on these weather handles it's actually reloading them up uh, so and that resets your gonna... step counter exactly but sometimes in actually it's in one very specific instance we'll go out of our way to turn them off and on Oh, yeah, well, uh, this game is in fact, and this category is in fact faster in Japanese, but not by much. It's not quite, it's not relevant at all. It's only and... a few text boxes that you get to skip in Japanese, but in single segment, in that category, you have to improvise, improvise so much, especially in your folder. If you're just way more comfortable running in English for that, mm -hmm. it's probably just going to be faster for you anyway. The smog oh. is doing a neat trick here. I messed it up. Don't oh. worry about it. Mm -hmm. I was Almost had it. Almost did. I've been practicing my setups. Oh, I still got the chip, you know? We take those. Yeah, yeah that's fourth. So the draft tables for viruses, for the most part, uh, is 50%. Mm -hmm. Like smog explained a little bit of details earlier. Sometimes at a high rank it'll be 100% but usually it's a 50% chance for a chip and a 50% chance for Zenny. so for every fight we clear if it's uh, viruses that we haven't gotten the chip from yet 50% chance to add one to the library to help us get towards that 60 requirement unfortunately there I did not get the chip I wanted I wanted yeah. invis 2 from the spooky spookies are even more of a problem because they can drop so many different mm -hmm. chips it's, it it's funny, There, <laughs> there's only one reek of chip that's... Okay, I'm going to actually focus on this. Yeah, so <laughs> Smog is doing a thing. Don't worry about it. Uh, meanwhile, we'll it Terra? Take a... No, no, there's nothing happening right now. Smog is checking his menus, making sure everything's working, giving <laughs> the stream a chance to catch up. We're just going to take a look at chat. People are talking about the best Mega Man series. Yeah, there's some love for Battle Network, some love for, for X. I grew both of these. Zero's another good one. I think I got it. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, yeah. So nice. this game didn't ha include any polar bears. There's just like a weird cutscene. Smog accidentally jacked back in. That's a time loss. We'll just have to accept. But we can uh, um, we can continue yeah. to the next Don't worry about it. Nothing <laughs> happened <laughs> that saves us time. Absolutely nothing. Oh, well. 
Yeah, Spog is a proponent of real hardware. But, but for the most so part, I mean, we you know. we fixed the water, um, which is great news because not only did we fix it, we improved it. The water has now all been replaced with grape soda. Exactly. So this guy just partied a little too hard and he's wore out. He'll be fine. Uh, unfortunately, someone filed a complaint with the water department, and so they don't want grape soda, and we're going to have to go back to the waterworks and uh, mm -hmm. change the water back. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we have to... We got an item from that kid we saved from the car, or we opened the door for and uh and that lets us access a slightly different path in the dungeon uh and that's how we finish this scenario off yep i can just do it now if that's fine uh give me one second yeah uh, one thing about being is that for, for being an RPG, there's actually not a lot of downtime. Like you, you, if, if you need to take a drink of water or something, basically when you jack in, you've got five seconds, ten seconds. <laughs> and then it's like, hands on the controller, we gotta run. Uh, in the later games, I, I guess okay. five and six, you got auto run. So then you didn't have to hold the B button the whole time. Mm -hmm. Star Force figured it out and they just implemented auto run from the get go, which was nice. They did it wrong in no though. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let me know if that's better, by the way. Yeah, we'll see. Okay, see. So we do have to, like, the waterworks is a bit of a overlapping maze, and we have to retread the first couple areas, but then there's a mm -hmm. split. And as Smog said, we got a key out, and we can go down the other path and figure out what else is going wrong here in the waterworks. And it's actually some funky movement, and not movement, but some, some cool... Uh, convenient routing in the next comp right here. As we mentioned earlier, uh, turning these water valves resets your step counter. So to get to the new path, the one that's correct, we don't have to turn this water path, the water valve, but it resets our step counter, meaning that we can delay our next encounter for a while. We have a chance for an encounter there, but we don't get it. We turn this one, nice. reset our step counter again, go back, we still don't have to turn this one, but it resets our step counter. We grab an here. HP memory. We have a chance for an encounter here. Unfortunately, don't the it. HP memory does not reset our step counter. Yeah, turn the <laughs> valve, reset our step counter, and we've like spent so much time here that the music has gotten to the B section, and we still haven't gotten an encounter. But it almost like it. looped. Crazy. I'd love to see that. Yeah. And if he doesn't oh, yeah. get any other encounter living, it's a perfect county. Mm -hmm. It's funny because thanks to these balls in in that white category where you can save and quit, you in the entire scenario you only get one encounter. That's <laughs> going through all these areas. <laughs> and to be fair, uh Arithar did route out a zero encounter setup, but it required a few too many wiggles. <laughs> wiggles? Uh, wiggles <laughs> Wiggles is a tech that's unique to RNG manipulation. So we'll, we'll cover that in a different run in a future category. Okay. <laughs> wiggles is the best speed tech, though. It has yeah. nothing to do with Smog trying to get to the ice correctly there, though. Yeah, I don't worry about it. It's, it's pretty finicky. Yeah, uh, it's, we're also, gonna... it's a little bit of like, uh, you know, any percent movement versus optimal movement. Oh, yeah. Here, that's we true. can line ourselves up really nicely to skip a whole bunch of this puzzle, get a power up, remember to equip it. Yeah, that's a, a four pixel window to slide between two of the pits and skip half the puzzle. Mm -hmm. And that way, another nice thing is we don't get any encounters in this comp. Uh, this area uh, in particular, they expected you to walk a lot. So mm -hmm. the encounter curve, like how many steps you can take before getting an encounter, actually is area dependent. And this one, along with like the power plant lighters, 
some of the the highest or the the lowest curves, uh, and so you can move like a thousand steps before you get an encounter. Because it's totally wrong. Fortunately, fortunately, sliding does not increase your step counter. So this is true. Hmm. This is the first comp where we get encounters in the waterworks where they start getting a little scary. As you see, the Sorty 3 virus, the third version of the Sorty virus, has 200 HP, which, uh, you know, it's, it's nothing to laugh about. Yeah, uh, enemies it's, get it's actually tanky, pretty kind of scary. Fast. And they hit hard, too. That mystery data I just picked up that had a thousand zenny is not present in the Japanese version. For some reason, it's just there in the English version. Yeah, it's it's pretty US exclusive, and it saves yeah. half a second over the Japanese version. Fun fact. Right, so you <laughs> keep using the word comp. What is that referring to? So when we say comp, it just means computer. Uh, and it's like each area, you know, each contained area. Um, because, uh, you know, it's it's technology, it's like a computer, it's... Tara, explain it better, I have a folder at it. <laughs> Yeah, I mean that that's it. It's computer or comp. Each like subsection of the internet, basically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because everything's on the internet. Really yeah, exactly. Yeah. So this is the next boss, Iceman. Uh Proto Man almost got him, but only almost. Uh so we're we're gonna, we're gonna fight Iceman. He's got this thing where he likes to go to the front and uh Smog was doing a lot of step buffering earlier, but if someone's in the front, you just mash. Oh. Nope. Don't worry about it. Okay. Uh, the ice blocks do damage. Uh, he yes. can he can kick them. So you generally want to damage boost through one of them. Sometimes if you don't have oh, a good draw, you'll take. Uh, you'll use the two escape chips. The freeze bomb will freeze you, yep. which is uh, kind of a cool side effect. Uh, got a nice sprite. Oof. You can mash the, out of it, but not very much. Yeah, the freeze bomb also damages the ice blocks, so you want to stand where the ice blocks are. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, go. Ice that. Sass. Fortunately, he doesn't flinch as much yep, some of the other bosses. From here onward, actually from Stone Man onwards, except with one exception, uh, all the bosses need to be hit with 100 damage or more to flinch. Which is pretty nice for us. I told you there's nothing to worry about. That was not reward. I was worried. Yeah. Reminder to save in your single segment category. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, so uh, our friend Mail sent us an email, and Mega Man is going to hand deliver our response. This is what sending an email looks like on the internet. There's little net navvies running around hand delivering stuff. Yep. And so we told our friend Mail, hey, yeah, we're cool to go shopping for our other friend Yai's uh, birthday gift. Let's go meet up. And then you go meet up. And then uh, Mail's like, oh, yeah, I have something to do. Sorry. Go by yeah, yourself this... and I'll join you later. The scenario so you get like 10 doing. emails. Yeah. Back to back. We're going to. Yeah, Vintown. I'm going to save. This place is kind of a confusing map. The first thing we're going to do, though, is. Oh, well, we take a detour. There's this summer school class over here, and it's got a blackboard. And it's one of those areas that you can sort of, like, unintentionally go into and unexpectedly get a virus that's maybe, like, three times as hard as anything you've ever faced before and then get one shot, yeah. especially yeah. in this Yeah. Game. This so, comp uh, has some very, very we'll scary see. viruses. See. And we get to see two of them. Beautiful. Oh. And we don't get an escape. <laughs> Oh, yeah, this this is actually the worst case scenario. Because <laughs> um, the fire fish he will leave behind a fire trail. Woo. Now, he did get a bomb that he can stand behind, except he destroyed oh, it. Oh, game, please. What? Oh, just take, uh, just take the cannon. Kill kill one of them. Don't, just, don't shoot the bomb, not the side. Yeah, I forgot one. that fishies do the thing that I said earlier that they do. Okay, yeah. we got one. <laughs> see, we wow. got one escape wow. adding twice. Yeah, so what's the, what's the math on that? And you have four in your <laughs> deck, right? Yeah, I have four. 
So the the bombs probably hit for what two hundred? I think they. I bought Formal? extra HP memory since I couldn't afford the power up. Uh, so they Just might the not one shot me, but I think usually in the new route, yeah. with yeah, the amount of HP you have, I'm the sure dynamite they you. would do two hundred damage. The fire does mm -hmm. yeah. uh, But with that, danger. We went in there to get a power up, which will be useful. Uh, we're also mm -hmm. going to go into this vase, which is. Of course, digital and connected to the internet to pick up a very good ship here, Quake 3. We talked a lot about Quake 1. Imagine if it also exploded. That's Quake 3. And did and, a whole much more damage. <laughs> and now we're going to fight Skullman, who can be a bit of a scary boss. Because, uh, like, you know. it, everything does a lot of damage and our health is still pretty low. Um, so it, it's basically just a, a damage race. Um, and trying to control the location of the hands because Skullman will shoot out a fire but then also uh, his hands will uh, occupy your space on the field and mm -hmm. kind of move around in a particular way. You can destroy one of them if you destroy both they'll respawn so we'll try to keep one alive and just dodge Yep. Smog finally put a power up into charge so now we can charge. In Battle Network 1 there's actually two levels of charging the yellow charge and the red charge which is also true in network transmission, I guess. The rest of the games, Ooh. there's only one level. Oh, Skullman also does throw his head at you. Forget about that attack. So your buster will do, what was it? Not eight too bad. times? Eight times and 16 times your attack? Yeah. Good old uh, powers of two. Nice mini bomb mm -hmm. finish. Thank you, thank you. Skullman <laughs> is one of the only bosses in this game who's like really aggressive. He will always move to your row. A lot of the time, AI for bosses is they want to stay away from your row. Uh, so he, you know which row he's going to be in. You just don't know which column. Yeah. Oops, that's the wrong menu. Yeah. And so this is starting the next scenario, which is another kind of scary consequence of Battle Network is kind of like this thought experiment of like, what if everything was connected to the internet? Mm -hmm. And so you you've got these self-driving cars and if someone hacks them or there's a virus like they turn all of the intersections to green both ways uh, and of course this is perpetrated by the evil organization World 3 and they then spin around and start selling antivirus for the virus that they created for a million zennies you can go buy the antivirus and don't worry, if you called it the, uh, the WWW as a kid, so did I. Okay. But apparently these uh, these guys here tell me it's World 3, and I'm like, all right, I'll believe you, I'll believe you. So the gimmick of these dungeons is you go through these orbs, and it toggles between a blue path and a red path. And uh, we can do some fancy movement, like what I just did a second ago, to kind of get the paths to light up accordingly. Uh, but for the most part, we're just walking around, doing our thing. Yeah, that's basically, we'll call it the Swip Swap. Mm -hmm. Shout out to BN5. And so there we got a chip from a mystery data that we want for our library. We're getting more encounter. But the thing about traffic light comps is like the first two comps are actually pretty tame. They have this fire mm -hmm. and water viruses that are pretty easy to handle, but then it throws you viruses that if he smart got the power up with one shot us or two mm -hmm. shot us, um, they have a lot of HP and it's it can be quite mm -hmm. scary, especially around comp four. Yeah. This is the part of the speedrun where if you're a little too aggressive and a little reckless, you can very easily die. Um, there is a part later on that I think a lot of people will be familiar with where even if you're careful and even if you play everything correctly, sometimes you can just die because you get really tough encounters with like a really bad draw or something. Yeah, there are cases where the game says no and you just have to take it. Uh, so nah, speaking of those viruses, the jellyfish in the back, if it releases a charge attack, it will deal 200 damage. Mm -hmm. So usually that's a one shot. 
But the good, very good thing about this uh, jellyfish virus is, is that at S rank, uh, it has a hundred percent chance of dropping its ship, which is very powerful and there's no other way to get it. So if we mm -hmm. top the quick three, which is actually not top five ships mm -hmm. uh, of, of the folder, uh, we have a lot of setups to just go for it, and it's usually a two and three or a one and three to get it because we need to get the right drop table from the virus. Mm -hmm. So it's the game very, first, very good. Uh, we also got our fifth escape there and our final escape, unless we get another yeah. one in the next chip trader visit, but it's probably not, not as likely. Um, <laughs> what was I going to say? Yes, the game first chooses one of the virus that, viruses that was in the fight and, to look at its drop table. So if there are like two Metars and a Canodum, there are two chances to get the Metar uh, drop table and one chance to get a Canodum drop table. So it's usually nice uh, if you see lots of a virus whose chip you want. <laughs> Here, I'm going to put the extra escape in. Uh... Exiled on escapes. Yep. I like that got five escapes. Cup's got a cool theme. For sure. So these blue Metars are the strongest of all, and they do 100 damage. Uh, if you uh are able to purchase an extra power up early and don't buy extra hps because of that they can two shot you and it's very scary um again usually when you're oh, running the game <laughs> the hp memory is a reset point because as we saw earlier when we went to the blackboard and we got that very scary encounter going that out of the way for a power up is really really worth it because mm -hmm. it's just it has just your damage so much more for bosses and encounters you cannot run away from. So I'm just thinking of that uh, heat jelly two sorty three fight, and what I should have done. Oh man, yeah, I've taken the quake three, three and <laughs> double deleted the sorties with the elect sword the next turn. That probably would have given me a good chance for a red wave. Unfortunate. That's quite rank S, isn't it? Pardon? It, it was not, it wouldn't be quite rank S. No, but it would have given me a good chance, is what I'm saying. So the yeah, tips you're still looking still for, good. for like using in your deck, or are you just looking for filling out the 60 requirement? Uh, both. The chip yeah. I wanted was from the Jelly <laughs> Virus, and that both uh, helps us meet the 60 chip requirement, and it's also just a really good chip. Um, once if we... you get fires for the rock was there are still pretty good chips about the folder. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Once we finally like max out our buster, it's an eighty damage charge shot. And mm -hmm. even if you get really bad chips, you can use that to clear out a lot of viruses. So mm -hmm. folder is like good enough to beat the game, but if we yeah. get something nice, we'll throw it in. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Uh, that's mo that's mostly being one in a nutshell. It's like, there's not too many chips. Like, we pick up Quake 3, which is nice, but it's mostly just like, oh, hey, that's a good chip. Let me put it in the folder. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we don't really have the extra Zenny just in case. Balancing it yeah. with folder flow. There's, in fact, a really powerful program at best that we could technically use, but uh, we tested that and it. Given how Bundle War 1 works with like its awkward adding system, no star codes, and barely any flow, it was not worth no, to go okay. for the PA. Oh. Oh, I got no. the Metar drop. Never heard. Oh, <laughs> yeah, because then he gives it the mess rank. I was going to say, I've oh, never heard Smog complain for getting like a wave chip. A shockwave, true. Yeah. But in that would, fight, would you go in for a wave? Yeah. He actually had a five out of six to get something he wanted, because all of like... those chips were new <laughs> and powerful. But he got the one and six. That's the, the sound of disappointment right there. <laughs> uh, so I had an escape there. 
But this virus has a really good chance of giving us the bubble wrap chip, which I just got. Oh, right. Fine. Yeah. Uh, that's uh, the at various ranks, not even an S rank. So that's why I took it. It, it was a super fast fight. Same here, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, I should have just taken the hit. I'm bad. <laughs> so you yeah. stand at the bottom, he can't hit you. That's true. Too late. Still got the chip. Dino Wave is another really good chip to have. Nice coin flip. Yeah, yeah. That, was, that, was a 50, that was a 50 50 the whole way up. Even yeah. if I did the fight perfectly. Yeah, actually, the, the way the drop tables work pretty much are from run six onwards, you have a 50 50. Below that, you're pretty much guaranteed setting. So, this final traffic light comp is interesting because Dallas. Ah, okay. So one day I was riding with a hand on to mess around with some things. A heads up um, display, I in case you're not familiar with the term. Oh yeah, sorry about that. I basically discovered that in this comp, uh, it's, it's it's the final one, and you're trying to stop a boss with a bomb. You're in a bridgy origin situation, so even if you mess up or something, the game won't let you jack out. It will display a message to fly and say, "No, we don't have time." is coming yep. so but i'm pressing the r point, button yes so at that yes. point the game is actually resetting your step counter as well <laughs> so we can press the r button just as our step counter is getting high enough to potentially get encounters so you just reset it and go through this comp with no encounters but it's very nice yep step counter very fast controlling your step counter is uh Pivotal part of any good RPG speedrun. Mm -hmm. And so this next boss, Color Man, is kind of annoying because he's got two uh, unbreakable objects that move up and down in front. And so he's kind of hard to hit with certain attacks, including your mm -hmm. Buster. Uh, Smog's gonna have always. to work around that. And he's also got like a lot of HP. And all the attacks, I think, do like 100 damage. So. So but he's on the back, so no swords, like Electrum, can be used either. Yeah, unfortunate. So he stopped a bus that had a bomb in it by surrounding it in an electrified, electrified field. That <laughs> doesn't sound very smart. Very much. Uh, yeah. yeah, don't worry about it. <laughs> Just battle network thing. I'm doing this badly. A, a chip like Quake 3, though, is really good because First of the level. area of effect. It's a guarantee to hit. It'll also break one of the panels, which will prevent him from moving, for better or worse. Um, now, when you do hit Color Man with a, a heavy attack, sometimes he'll do this attack where he'll, he'll throw a bouncing ball over your side of the field. That does keep him stationary, though. That mm -hmm. which makes it so much better to hit with a buster. So I'm pretty sure it's like 115 damage cup, so the moment you hit the 150 damage mm -hmm. delt, he'll stop and throw the ball. He does it when he reaches uh, 450, once when he reaches 300 and 150. I tested it out a while ago. Getting a really That's... bad draw. Look at this guy <laughs> doing science. Uh, I, for, for a lot of things, some things in Battle Network, the viruses are like random or unfair or unpredictable but some of them are way more predictable than it would first appear so like yeah, as you learn good. more about the game uh, uh you'll eventually run out of new ways to die yeah and even then yeah shout outs to killers <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just let me get you. <laughs> the blue little Go for the thing, thing just blocked you there. Yeah. <laughs> like it, in that terms of speedrunning, um, Battle Network, I think, compared to some of the other more popular games, especially Mega Man games, is not as refined, not as optimized. So mm -hmm. if if you're watching and you like the Battle Network games and you've considered speedrunning in the past, like, mm -hmm. I mean, Smog, you even got into this habit kind of recently oh, and you no. pushed some of the times down. It's yep. the rug. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I actually got into speedrunning 
Uh, I'd been aware of speedrunning for a little while, but I'd never quite found a game that I uh, wanted to speedrun. Uh, and then I saw actually a hotfix. That's the wrong ticket. Uh, a 2019 hotfix. <gasps> uh, Battle Network 3 run by X Kilios. <laughs> and uh, I was I was at the time I was casually replaying through Battle Network 3. I got stuck at Wind Star, as I think a lot of people do, because I was still really bad at the game. And I saw that there was some cool RNG manip that you could do to get the chip you wanted. And I tried it. Half an hour later, I had my chip. And I was like, man, I can do this. And that's how I got into it. Yeah. Thank you, Curious. Right. Right. There's some fun things that you can do in Battle Number to learn speedrun tech. Mm -hmm. Like, speaking of, like, optimized, like, these games are constantly being updated in terms of routing and strats. Like, I... This round, for example, is only a couple of months old, and we've been running the game for, like, so many years already. And, like, we're constantly trying to update the resources to make it easier for new people to come in as well. Seven years. I took a second before I talked to Lane's dad there, because if you talk to him wrong, the game soft locks. So... <laughs> yes, I want to do that. Pretty... Yeah. I just want to also mention that, like, Kilios is in chat and a whole bunch of other Battle Network people. If you're looking mm -hmm. into picking up these games, the community is super welcoming. They're always super friendly to work with. Like, this is the third year that I've done this Mega May showcase with Battle Network people, and it's always a lot of fun. So, if you're thinking about picking up uh, one of these games as a speedrun, just uh, head over to the Team BN Discord. Head over to Team BN. BN. So now... We are entering everyone. If you've played this game and you played far enough to this point, you uh, you might you might remember the horror. Uh, you want to say the name? So uh, power plant comps. So yeah. if you go to a used game store and you buy a copy of Battle Network One, there's more than a fifty percent chance the save file will be in this dungeon, because once you start, you cannot leave this area. The floor overlaps and is invisible. Uh, the encounter rate is weird. Uh, the viruses are strong uh, and you're stuck here. So mm -hmm. there's some pretty dangerous viruses, especially in the third and the fourth area, which mm -hmm. you may or may not see. I hope you do. Smog might hope you don't. <laughs> <laughs> there, oh, yeah, well, so well. as I said earlier, uh, the traffic light comps are where you can start getting dangerous fights. Did that the worst way possible. Uh, and if you're a little <laughs> reckless, you can die. In some of the later comps of this area, even if you're careful, you just get the wrong encounter and the bad draw, and you, you're just done for. There's rats yes. for Taunt 1, though. Rats in this so... game are a little more predictable. They will always move mm. to a different row. They will never move into your row. So you know exactly what row they're going to move into. So it's easier to predict the hit with attacks. They move four yeah. times in attack. Uh, if you get them, these rats have like angry mode, right? Yep. Below fifty percent. Yeah. Don't they still do it? Yep. They do. They, they, it's it's not by much. It's not as pronounced as in uh, later games. Yeah, in 2 and 3, the rats get a lot angrier. And in 2 in particular, they have not only angry mode, but they have panic mode. Yeah, <laughs> that one's scary. So does that mean that if you're in the center row and they're in the outer rows, they just won't move? No, no they, they will they move can to the... So yeah, they can teleport. Oh, okay. Essentially. Yeah. yeah this area also introduces, as Arthur just said, uh, You've seen a bunch of Mr. Progs. They're the nice, friendly little green guy. But uh, some of them... Terribly again. ...in this area are corrupt. So. Actually, we may see. Are you going to go for that, Smog? Yeah. Sure we will. Nice. Actually, good reason. Ah, oh, it's Angry Rat. I'm just yep. going to put... Uh, actually, should have done this earlier. Alright. Try spear. I'll put Aqua Tower in there as well, why not? 
So in order to get through this area casually the first time, uh, you talk to the progs and they'll either give you batteries that you need, recharge the batteries, or give you a hint. But nice. some of them will try to kill you. <laughs> yes, nice, we got it. I did the thing and we got the chip. So, so Smog, yeah, he'll explain this. Uh, the chip that I used is called Sonic Wave. It does 80 damage and it puts out some funky, cool, nice, fun uh, hitboxes that advance forward in the same row. Uh, let me just do my thing. Yeah, and um, there's a short amount of time uh, during which the hitbox is on two panels at the same time. And so you can time it uh, in a way that makes it so the hitbox hits the Mr. Prog, the Mr. Prog moves forward and gets hit by the second hitbox that's still there. Uh, and so that's what I did. I, I came up with a bunch of setups and the chip that he drops is uh, pretty good. So uh, it's not that we want it, but it's good for the library. There's a way to get it later that's really slow, but we would if we had to. Yeah, it's a backup basically. Mm -hmm. In fact, the thing is, about this comp, there are these infected mission products that we know exactly which ones are, but sometimes, it, since finishing a fight will reset the step counter anyway, we decide to intentionally take these fights, because they're going to be faster than a normal fight anyway, and we have a 50% chance to get a chip we want. For the most part. Uh, if we do the fight decently. Um, yeah, it's the biggest thing is that it's it's a fight where we guarantee only fight one enemy and that's what makes it fast so you actually get to see a bit of their behavior which is a little scary they slowly area lock you uh i don't need it not so slowly in the later areas yeah there are also stronger versions of this virus that are the they're the viruses that if you get a little unlucky they can just delete you <laughs> so we're gonna be saving uh, at every every once in a while from here onwards, just in case. That's one of those yes. cases where uh, if you add three, tw if you add twice, you have just enough time to do that usually, and you don't get an escape. However slim those odds, your run is dead. I <laughs> very vividly remember um, when I started running this category certain encounters making me feel and and in later places too not only just in the power plant certain encounters just making me feel physically a little unwell actually a fun fact one of the best moments we've, we've had oh, is what? smog and i were coaching a new bottle of three run <laughs> you know like somewhat pretty much blind ball network one run and he found a very scary encounter on the final area of this mm -hmm. dungeon. And he was about to die, but just barely, as he was with basically 1 HP, deleted the final virus. <laughs> when everyone else thought he was dead. I tried. <laughs> so this is the pink part. This is the, this is the terrifying virus. The tier mm -hmm. 3. He, he moves fast, he steals, does a bunch of damage. Uh, it's, it's neat if you notice that every time they attack, they actually deal 5 damage to themselves. Uh, because it's a broken prog. Yeah, good enough to even have a chance to get its chip, but oh well. Oh, also if you get hit by that or other electric attacks, it gives you a really annoying status effect. Mm -hmm. That's only Every time you one. move, you take a little bit of damage and, and you do the flinching animation. Which means you can't have a charge shot and move. Yep, this is true. <laughs> yeah. So uh, this is one of the areas where actually the amount of text that the English version has is very different compared to the Japanese version. And... Oh. Uh, the yep. Japanese version is faster because it, it it just it. I'll show you in one second. There's when you put a battery in, it tells you how many batteries you have remaining uh, of each type. So like I'm gonna turn off the switch. I'm gonna take these batteries, and, and it's only when you put the batteries in. Um, oops, sorry, I'm just blanking out. 
<laughs> um, and so it tells you you have this many A batteries remaining, and then a next text box. You have this many B batteries remaining, and then a the next text box. You have this many C battery remaining, uh, and the Japanese version just puts it all in one text box. So like three. you have A, B, That's C, three. A, B, C. Oh yeah, it's three per text box. My bad. It's not that big a difference, you guess. Yeah, I, I personally, I. Uh, really just enjoy being able to see when i'm doing folder edits specifically uh just being able to read the chip names even though i can read katakana very badly uh it's just easier to see the names uh yeah. in a language you're familiar with but it, the difference between us and japanese is much more clear and much more relevant in the manep category for many other reasons as well, which is basically a saving, but <laughs> don't, let's don't worry about any other reasons. <laughs> you, you saw nothing. <laughs> I'm laughing Never more punished. the way you shook Never your head. Punished. Than the... <laughs> Never punished. <laughs> I saw nothing hitting. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why that was so funny to me, just seeing that and then seeing you shake your head afterwards. Sometimes. You just do something <laughs> expecting greatness, and it doesn't quite work out. <laughs> but you know, that's okay. The people, I had a, I had a great vision, and it just didn't quite work out. <laughs> oh. yeah. So one of the viruses there could have given me a chip for the library and uh, I didn't quite get it. So this area, I, I should be saving. What am I doing? Oh, yes. <laughs> so I'm, so, I'm so used to not saving at all. <laughs> Sorry. This is the Shut scary up, this area. Frog that goes slightly out of bounds, but we can't... We, we haven't found a way to uh, take advantage of it yet, if at all, if it's if it's possible at all. Yeah, so and there's actually some out of bounds found in Valorant 1 and 2, and I'm pretty sure in 5 as well. Well, they mm -hmm. wanted to, they're not useful or relevant. <laughs> they're just kind of there. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that was but a yeah. while with an encounter. This is pretty much the comp. Mm -hmm. It's not any comp, it's the comp. I think you might get one more and you might not. No, I'll get one more. Yeah. And that's it, I think. If I get lucky, I might not even get another one. Nah, yeah. there it is. The, the thing about uh, this comp is, like Tara was mentioning, mentioning wow. earlier, each area has a... Uh, you got lucky. Yeah, I know. Don't no scary encounters. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm a little disappointed. Each area, each map has a, uh, a an encounter curve. And usually, you have a little bit of time where you're safe. And someone explained it, actually. I'm doing the thing. A little bit of time where you're safe, and then, uh... And then you start getting the possibility for encounters. These comps have uh, a lot of time before you can even get an encounter, but then once you start getting encounter chances, uh, the, it curves up really steeply. So it goes from, like, 0 to 6 to, like, 18 to, uh like 33 or something. Yeah. Uh, the the encounter thing, shout outs to whoever made it in BN1. It's the one thing that they didn't change. That and folder shuffling for the most part throughout the entire series. It's kind of cool. So we've so. looked at a lot into how it works. Uh, Alekman Smog, the first time you fight him, he's powered by the generator, so uh, after you deal a certain amount of damage, he'll just heal to full, and then Land turns the generator mm -hmm. off. It's perfectly fine, don't worry about it. And now we get the actual Alekman fight. Uh, Smog has a really good tip for this fight, where basically you just want to stay in the corner, so that way you can't get sniped by the Transformers the as they spawn in. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then you just pick away Alekman's health. He, he's yeah. both more and less dangerous than a lot of the other fights. Usually, I get where this 200 HP threshold, and when he does the lightning attack, 
And we, we get one shot. Oop. Yeah, so that lightning, lightning bolt attack does 200 damage at this point, which is nothing to laugh about. <laughs> but if you get hit, I'll laugh. Probably. Yeah, <laughs> he's going to heal himself. I didn't have any chips that could flinch him out of it, unfortunately. Uh, in fun fact, a previous follower of one world record died to like that. <laughs> Ooh, there I got hit. Yeah. So now you get Ooh. to see it. Ooh, foo, foo, foo. Painful. I would have died there if I had gotten the extra power up earlier, so you know. <laughs> I was caught by animation and lag. Okay, Nothing good here. Uh, and so this is the easiest boss in the entire game. This is Proto Man from <laughs> Battle Network One. We're basically just staring each other down, and then periodically he'll come up, and Mega Man will pickle him, <laughs> and then we just do that until he's dead. So you know, every single other boss punches a hundred. Right? <laughs> so that's it. Yep. All of his attacks do 200 damage, so if you get one shot by a Luckman, you can also get one shot here. If you get one shot by a Luckman, you won't make it to Proto Man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he moves you five should. times. He's got two and attacks. And then goes to attack you. Yeah. If it does the charge, Smog will snipe him, otherwise. There's one cycle. So or one two, reason two that charge buster cycles. Yeah, one reason that Smog wasn't like hitting him as soon as the buster was full is because we want to stop him from attacking, but also he's got a buster shield, mm -hmm. for, and so he'll block attacks when Proto Man's not attacking anyway, for the most yeah. part. But he doesn't block quite. It's just important. But sometimes depending on your draw, how the fight is going, you can actually fire a bunch of pellets at him that will block the shield, and he immediately attack you without actually doing the five movements beforehand. So yeah. It's a way to like skip a cycle. It's a nice okay. little optimization. Mm -hmm. uh, so, given the split we're on, someone was actually asking about armors a little bit as well. So, you want to talk about the requirements to get past this next split? It's not this split yet. This is the door split. <laughs> well, okay, this whole, this whole. Okay, your split. The, oh, the next scenario, we're yeah, done with dungeons. There are no more dungeons. Now we have to get to the end of the internet. And in order to do that, we're going to need uh, a certain set of memos from World 3 operatives, and we have to like prove our worthiness. <laughs> oh, I forgot to. <laughs> <laughs> so the first, we, we talked to a guy, and he told us hand about where Chad was. I think we gotta go find Chad first, for mm -hmm. reason. Uh, along the way, we take a detour to go back and talk to Freud. Uh, mm -hmm. Basically, we saved his son earlier. The World 3 was holding him hostage. And so in appreciation, That's why he gives He's us... Iceman's uh, operator. Yeah, and in appreciation, he gives us uh, the World 3 pin, which we can use to open those doors that Smog was using to reset his step counter and get a few more free battleships and upgrades. It's true. Um, yeah, the <laughs> I think Dallas and I, who have both run any percent of this game, uh, have a, a tough time sometimes remembering to pick up the world three pin because we don't pick yeah. it up in any percent so i i didn't get too far before i remembered i'm glad we used to get it for a long time it's like skipping that the fact that that's faster given all the free stuff you can get it's kind of mm -hmm. crazy i that's just going to show you that when you can control the rng how how much more optimal uh you can make the run because you're just going up the elevator is too slow yeah yeah so my group we're at four Pardon? We're RG at four chip. or five. We're at six. Six. Yeah. <laughs> Are you counting rings up? Uh, no, I didn't count rings up. Because you didn't get thunder. Yeah, I know. Okay. Um, <laughs> just give me one second. So, it's just the point in the run button. where we're all doing maths uh, of how many random chips we have, what things we expect gauge. to get, and sometimes we don't get those expected things, which are in particular a guard. Dash and uh, rings up and thunder. And it's very specific stuff that we're pretty much almost guaranteed to get because of how often we find those encounters and how easy it's usually to get. 
So we're usually doing the math of, okay, how many of these expected chips did we get? How many random chips did we get? How many random chips do we need? Because that's going to determine everything we do from now on in terms of how many things we're going to put in trader until how many reports we get, what Navi fights we fight. Because Navis, uh, from now on, you know, the ghosts or the operators fighting again will give you a guaranteed Navi chip. Put in X panel 3, you pull the Dallas. <laughs> 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 So yeah, it's a lot of math that goes on, and usually when we are running this category, we're in each other's chat talking about this. Kind of, kind of funny. It, it it's the the cool, interesting, but also hard part of running single segment is counting for all this RNG because, uh, in worst case scenario, there are essentially six fixed chips that we can go pick up, but doing so requires fighting some navvies, and boss fights, as you saw, can be a little bit slow. So if we can get lucky from the chip trader or a random virus encounter, then we can skip stuff that would otherwise be pretty slow. You're witnessing bad luck. Yes, this is pretty bad. I got another uh, fast gauge, sad. Effect effectively, <laughs> uh, you should get a new chip every eight uses of the chip trader. Yeah, but I didn't get any new chips. I got an Alexord. Which is okay. pretty good. And that's it. So it's time to find a lot of things. Yeah. And go out of our way for Do a chip. Do you want to go ahead and it's... put that in the folder? or? I will, yeah. Because I, I think we'll before... all forget otherwise. Uh, we're not really looking for much, so we can put Trilance as long with that small mini optimization. Yeah, exactly. I'm waiting for Trilance here because it does some pretty good damage. Trilance is so good. It's also faster. Um, yeah. Like as far the different tiers of we got Trey Narrow earlier. We're getting or Tri Arrow, we got Tri Lance <laughs> is a much stronger version, so it goes faster. And we got Tri Spear as well, which is in between. It's like it's okay. It's alright. The only bad thing is that actually those chips are terrible against Fireman because he flinches so early. Yeah. Uh... You were struck by Yellow Man. Oh, that's a nice idea. I don't think it'll put Trilance at the top, though. No, nah, but we we'll want Aqua Tower, because that's like the highest damage we can oh, do. Oh, yeah, for it. Fireman. So, uh, <laughs> after you beat a boss, their ghost appears in a fixed location on the internet. And so, Spock knows where it is. It'll trigger an encounter instantly. And Navi's, uh, this one's guaranteed drop, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But then the V3 random, de depending on the rank that you get, has a chance to give you a chip or any. So the, the V2s, or the, uh, the V2 Ghost Navi is a good way to get the V1 Navi chip to help for our library. Uh, it, it does make it possible to then run into the V3 Navi, which, because it's not a guaranteed chip and uh, it's kind of slow, hopefully we don't get that. But sometimes you get haunted by Ghost mm -hmm. <laughs> once you do this. So the goal, is, the, the, big R the biggest RNG thing in the game is... Uh, Trying to get, oh, I should have taken the two cross guns. Oops. The biggest RNG thing is trying to get those chips to fill your library because the requirement is coming up. Uh, unfortunately, we have to do some of the backups, which are obviously slower. Yep. Yep. Because here's the oh. second power up that we wanted to get way earlier, but weren't able yeah. to. And so, speaking of the power ups, the other requirement is you have to be level 30 or 30? 30. Yes. 30. Mm -hmm. And so every HP memory you get gives you one level. Every power up gives you three levels. Yep. You have to use it as well. Uh, and then there's one other way to get uh, level ups, and it's from purchasing armor. Each armor gives you six levels. Ooh, there's another uh, random trick though. You don't have to use the armor, but we'll we'll put it in because armors in this game are a little weird. They effectively uh, half. The damage you take as long as it's not effective against the armor that you wear mm -hmm. so we're gonna yeah. get wood armor um which uh has damage against everything except fire and then fire just does a normal amount of damage yeah, so the not thing even is twice which is nice a part of optimizing you know the level right uh, trying to pick as the least amount of HP memories as possible because 
power-ups and armors since they give you more they're usually just much more efficient which is why this round that we kept talking about like oh you can get with one shot or two shot came mm -hmm. around because we wanted to go fast <laughs> mm -hmm. um the other thing is actually i've gotten a, a couple of random chips meaning the backups i have to go for i have to go for fewer backups essentially so this doesn't do enough but it's a good chunk But the youths are by reverse ID again. Two. I did it before um, Fireman. Before Fireman, yeah. That was a nice triple though. No, but you sorted by attack from Fireman, right? I didn't, because I didn't want to sort by reverse ID afterwards. Because <laughs> Fireman's a pushover. Come on. Okay, that's fair. Okay, okay. Nice triple. But so like that random encounter had 600 hit points. So we yep. just fought Fireman, a boss, and he had less than that. So yep. things are tanky. Oh, oh, and so this is the dynamite virus. Dave. Escape of yeah, honestly. So that dynamite virus is not as scary as the one that who would have one shot us yep. earlier, effectively. But the flappy threes are actually more annoying. They yep. move fast. They jump on your area. Like we talk about Quake Three being a good ship. Imagine them being able to use it against you like every couple seconds. Yep. The game really wants you to do that fight. This fight's scary. I don't like this fight. Yeah. I'll just get rid of him first. But, you know, if you don't have an escape, being able to just take out one of the viruses is probably the best play. Mm -hmm. In a fight like be... this. Yeah. Because, uh, the, the, yeah, I've died to this fight before. I think a lot of people have. Oh, you probably want to half charge the... Okay. Sure. With the, the okay, ghost... Okay, never punished. <laughs> the ghost virus, if you if they're on the field and you get something low health, can they heal yeah. other viruses in this game too? Or yeah. pardon? Or just, yes. Okay. If you get something low health, they will use a recover on that virus. So you want to try and like weaken stuff and then hit it with a full charge to take it out? This is a bad idea. Oh gosh. <laughs> this oh, is a gosh. really bad idea. Uh, yeah. So this is this a really bad idea. Oh, oh. my God. Oh. Gonna watch. Just gonna watch. Okay, we're fine. <laughs> oh, that was scary. I'm just. No! Oh so my be... gosh! He'd be dead, right? I don't understand how I can be so bad at this game sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, quick three, the quick three. Go. I. So, so. It's fine. You're alive? Run alive. <laughs> We're done. Oh, all right. Uh, I'm breathing hey. again. It's fine. You, I mean, you get healed after every fight. Yeah. Mog was just entertaining us. You know. I'm providing content, if you will. No doubt. Hey, the dynamite chip. That's a nice coin flip. I'm going to save. Oh. Jimmy's in chat. Hey, Jimmy. <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> it, it reminded me of how I used to feel when I started playing this category. Yeah. Sometimes you, sometimes you need that little pinch. Sometimes, you know, I said sometimes a few too many times. The the funniest part is that the single segment category you're seeing today is far less scary than it used mm -hmm. to be. It used yes. to be incredibly <laughs> much scarier. This is uh, an interesting fight that sometimes bullies door virus. Mm. Yeah, I've seen many runners myself, including die to this fight. Mm. You remember before we said the hardheads don't have a tell, which makes killing them in the first place hard. This is one reason an 80 damage charge shot is so popular, because you can kill enemies well, yeah. like the hardheads in, in one go. <laughs> The... Terrace is <laughs> this is really badly. There's an uh, argument to be made to uh, have a faster charge shot, except it deals a little bit less damage. Yeah. But yeah, not being able to step up here. Yeah, uh, well, it's I was also I was waiting for the uh, the end lag of the shockwave. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I remember I used to die quite a bit 
to that fight when I started running this game, this category. Off the um, save. Yeah. Yeah, I saved. Yeah. And then from here on, we also have some other scary viruses, specifically Gaia viruses. Uh, you'll see them. They look like statues with a big hammer. Uh, I learned how to dodge them really well, but back when I couldn't dodge them really well, they, uh, they, they hit really hard. They hit really, really hard. Plenty of people have died to Gaia's as well. <laughs> yeah. the, there are a few things that someone has not died to mm -hmm. in, in Battle Network. Especially so one. there is a chip in the power plant comp, uh, which I could have gotten from viruses. Unfortunately, I didn't, so this is the, the slow backup. So let's come to the front, right? Uh, maybe? Oh, uh, I actually uh, don't think they do. Maybe not. <laughs> no. Yeah, never punished. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Oh, you're so always cycling. Uh, I've died to Metar 3s in traffic comps. So yeah. that's Thunder 1. <laughs> As you can see, we got like two extra encounters out of it, so it's pretty bad. All right, we'll go for yeah, this. Also, because you didn't top that game. I enjoy yeah. you say that you've died to Metar 3s and then three of them show up on the next yeah. encounter like, Hi, you Ray. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's such a funny category, uh, especially if you're familiar with the later Battle Network games. Like, as we mentioned, you get healed after every fight, and it was the first game in the series. So I think in the thing I think about is that they were still figuring out balance. Uh, there, I opened the door to reset my step counter, even though I don't care about what's behind it. I think it's just That's an HP memory or something. It is. Funny. Yep. The BM on that HP memory, wow. Yeah, I know. Disrespect. Um, but it's even better right before the door virus. <laughs> uh, a lot of people have died to this fight as well. Oh, yes. <laughs> Pichu 2s oh, are scary. Oh, I did this so badly. Oh, oh. That's okay. I've got them lined up nicely now. Okay. Nice. Uh, Mog is demonstrating why people have died to this fight. Yeah. <laughs> Are you going to shoot it or not? Well, everyone, uh, marathon luck. How do I want to do this? <laughs> uh, well, it'll, it'll run into the fire tower and double hit, right? So charge shot fire tower? Yeah. Uh, fire tower is very sick. It has a lot of. Wait, what different... you got? Tri lance. You got tri lance, right? Church out tri lance. Potential. is safer. Nah, that's fine. Okay, we're going for swag. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. I can't See? believe that's it. Be a six on a chip. All right. Except so... it's, it's like an it's funny because <laughs> once once they were like lined up, I wasn't scared about them attacking. I just can't believe uh, you know didn't get any of my five escapes. So if we yep. use what's the math on that somewhere? If we use the numbers <laughs> that Terra gave at the start of the run, that's a four percent chance. Yeah, yeah, it would be. <laughs> oh, this is why we picked up that dad earlier. It essentially lets us activate uh, an internet link back to his computer that we can use as a starting point mm -hmm. next time. Mm -hmm. I also picked up Hero Sword, which is a or not Hero Sword, Sword, a Fighter, Fighter Sword. Sword. This is a pretty nice addition to the folder. I, yep. I think most runs I forget to put it in. It's not. It's, there's bad. like it's not really worth it. It's it's, it's it's a good chip. It does a hundred damage, right? Yeah. Here's our wood armor. His uh, uh, I can go okay. buy an extra chip actually. Like at this point of the game, the uh, thing is, ideally, the only next fight that you fight is only Bogman. So even though we're picking up a lot of different good chips. Um, you know, that do reasonable damage. There's an argument to be made of is it worth the folder edit when there's only one mm -hmm. file and my folder and my bus are already good enough. I forgot this category doesn't play the whole game. <laughs> yes. Spoilers, though. How do I do this again? Oh. Are you trying? Yeah, you, you just pause twice when you step on it 
and then you you go forward. Uh, Spog <laughs> is just checking his menu again. I, I think you might have got it. You're... I don't think so. Last time I tried this, it was way farther than I remembered. It could be. It's like two thirds through. But you get it eventually. Yeah, I got uh, it. Did, did the shock? As as in, I didn't get it. Oh. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, Maybe we need like a visual marker at the top instead of just. Yeah. Of course, of course, the floor works. Anyway, so this is Stone Man V2. Uh, Gok Gok. Gok Gok Sinchet. <laughs> He's got 700 HP. His eyes light up. I didn't get to talk to him at all the first time we fought him. Smog was monologuing. His eyes light up when he's about to summon a rock cube, and then otherwise he'll hit the ground and summon three rocks. And then after mm -hmm. a while, he'll mm -hmm. his hands turn into lasers. Yep. Very slow lasers, but we do a lot I more damage. I know they've given time. people trouble in the past. I remember <laughs> looking up a, yeah, a game <laughs> FAQ post about someone. See, now I don't even have to go for... Uh, are you at 59 yet? Cube. Pardon? 59? I'm at 58, but I have way too much Zenny. Oh. Okay. So there was a mystery data that contained Rock Cube, which is another chip you're almost never going to get. Uh, but it's just picking it up, since we need one more anyway, so I'm just going to go buy two. Yeah. Buy one. So, uh, so ideally, like, when you hurt? get okay. uh, eight random chips, Stoneman and the Rock Cube behind them, since it's it's a boss fight, but it's a boss fight with a, two rewards, basically. It becomes mm -hmm. almost as worth it as the Chip Trader. Yeah. <laughs> so. Plus, Stone Man's pretty good. Like, the problem we had uh, with Fireman, where he flinches to just about everything, isn't present with Stone Man. You can hit him with anything under 100 damage, and he won't have iframes. So... You can just keep on doing charge shots, which are pretty strong, or you can step buffer like you did in the first fight, or you can do like anything that does 90 damage. If you have lots of those, is good. The only thing that's still unfortunate is that he's in the back row. By that point, we have trailers. So. so at this point, we're pretty much done with the game. Mm -hmm. <laughs> What's that's left is that people are going to check that we have the requirements, like six chips check, did level three yeah. check. And I'll, then we're going to I'll just show you what happens when you don't have 60 library chips. Right. You go did to you this lady. The armor? Uh, I should. Be yeah. next member of the world three. And then she's like, uh, let me check your data library. I'm sorry, you're going to need to gain a tad more experience, blah, blah, blah. So we go over here, we pick up a chip. And then she gives you the memo. So, you know, that's the 60 chip library requirement. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> no, no one has ever missed key level <laughs> memo. <laughs> uh, anyway. So now we gotta talk to this old man. Smog? Oh. What? Okay, content. Gotcha. Oh, dentures! <laughs> nice, nice, nice. Sorry, wrong old man. Free talk to this dentures. old man. He uh, tells you that you need to have a certain level, which we get by getting HP memories and armors, and uh, and it's level 30, as we mentioned earlier. If I forget, I will equip the wood armor. You can see right there in the top right, we had level 30. And now we're ready to go back into the internet. <laughs> Unfortunately, we are. yeah, this, this is the split where, like, this split and the last split are where most of our RNG comes in and impacts our, our time loss or time save. So a lot of the time, even if you have a really good looking run, according to the splits, uh, once you get to this point, depending on how your RNG was, you may learn the truth. Yeah, because if you got no random chips, you suddenly have to do a bunch of extra boss fights. But a uh, run that looks slow, maybe got like a ton of chips and just go straight to get the memos instantly. Uh, mm -hmm. You save a lot of time. So 
So like it's one of these for us that you shouldn't hard reset at like the first two splits because there's really no need. Not yet anyway. But you know, except for the power up that we mentioned earlier. I wanna make sure my folder is in. okay. And I'll save, because why not? Man, I forgot it was split. So now we're on our way to Bomb Man. Uh, he's he's a cool guy. He's he's there before we face the the final area and the final boss. Uh, he's he's like the last guy before that whole end game section. Oh, he's the final boss. What are you talking about? No, no, about? no. Shh, Dallas, shh. <laughs> oh, you want to do the thing? Oh. Okay. Gotcha. <laughs> oh, nice. So basically, we're infiltrating the darkest part of the internet to mm. look for Wolf Freeze location, pretty much. Yeah, even though this area looks the same as all other internet areas, the game technically considers it the, the game's undernet. And uh, it, it makes labeling a little weird. Uh, because the game also doesn't tell you which area you're in in the menu, but uh, yeah, no, don't worry about it. It's yeah, fine. no, no, it's, and being was internet is much more confusing and hard to navigate than yeah. any other game. Yeah, and at this point as well, we already got past the sixty chip library requirement, so we're just looking for escapes because uh, we don't want to really take any chip any. We're strong enough, we have no more requirements. We just want to go as fast as possible. Yep. But of course, Mor Metar 3 is my mortal enemy. <laughs> didn't I? It Aren't didn't they die. your greatest friends? Because they give you that That's away. true, that's a good point, that's a good point. <laughs> I am a big fan. I mean, we don't often get to use oh, Dino. So bad at this game. Sorry. I'll so, stop. I think his real friends are honestly probably Matar 2s. <laughs> yeah, Matar 2s are, are pretty good. <laughs> so, if you let go of, of your charge shot while you're moving, nothing happens. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I totally didn't know that until monster. I saw him. <laughs> so are you pretty much done looking for random chips from fights? Yeah, we are done. Escapes as much as you can. Yep. Funny yeah. thing is, uh, long swords actually a random chip, so we're gonna end the game with sixty-one chips in our library. That's very rare, but it does happen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's kind of painful. <laughs> yeah. Especially because Longsword is a- and we got another one, is a chip that you could have gotten in multiple earlier areas, but it's the game. Yeah, I always claim being games have a sense of humor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We like to say that being games are- and a lot of GBA games are sentient. They know what you want and sometimes they just refuse to give it to you. The desire Probably sensor. Virus. Yeah, exactly. Right, I have an important question. Yes. That rotating pattern in the background, is that an E, a 6, or a 9? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's an E. That's my guess, at least. Yeah. What chat way in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get a definitive answer. <laughs> so this is Bomb Man. He's the, the gatekeeper for the, the cool-looking World 3 area. Oh, Relkin, can you just make that a poll? Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> what is the symbol in the background? Ooh, fire tower. Ooh, fire chips are good on this fight because Bomb Man uh, will badly. spawn three bombs on his area and then kick them onto your side of the field. While they are on his side of the field, or just technically anywhere, if they're hit with a fire attack, they will explode in a plus pattern, kind of similar to Bomberman. 
-hmm. And if they're on bomb man's side of the field, he can actually be damaged by him. So, uh, mostly with heater, but fire tire How much damage do they do? Uh, I don't, I think fire tire is probably better. Yeah, it's, it's probably better if not yeah, drinking even. Because I, I just have fire tire. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I'll also flinch, so. Mm -hmm. Like, one of the best chips to draw in this fight is Heater, which is yep. it, it's fire damage on a spread pattern that hits far a uh, bomb on first and deals just enough damage not to flinch and then triggers the bomb. Mm -hmm. So it's more so, than, I just oh, used it there. Oh, oh, yeah. oh. Nice. It's uh, 170 less than 100. Cool, so you beat Bomb Man, and Bomb Man was protecting the shortcut to the World 3, and when he gets deleted, he explodes and destroys the shortcut with him. Bland picked up that green mystery data, or Mega Man did, which contains some uh, some data that your dad's going to process. Mm -hmm. While we go do stuff, he, he's going to use his data magic. He's a data magician to uh, yeah. discern. He did invent location. AI. Yeah. So, yep. Now, basically, we just go to bed. Uh, apparently, I didn't get a ticket. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, fun fact, the little cutscene, well, the, the little thing where Land goes through the turnstile is a cutscene, and you can skip it and save, like, a second. Yep. <laughs> I will always say this, that uh, when I started running, and that's not present in any other game, so I, I was first a Battle Network 3 player, and then I uh, started running this game, and I just happened to be holding start one time and saw that. And I was like, wait, did, did everyone know this? And they were like, oh yeah, sorry, <laughs> did, did, did we not tell you? And I was like, uh, no! They just watched the run. Yeah, I should right. have, you know? 72% of chat says it is an E. Oh, E. I, I would agree. Seventeen percent said, "I don't know." What do you ask? Uh, I like <laughs> that answer. So we just found a secret metro station to the World Three headquarters. What do you know? In Land it's School, connected to the Lands Elementary School specifically. Crazy. <laughs> what are the odds? What are the odds? At the second scenario, Higsby was acting as a substitute teacher and tried to take over the school. They then let him open up a chip shop one block away, but you know, we'll we'll let that slide. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we went to Higsby's chip shop, found that he was missing. Don't worry about it. Uh, but there was a an expired secret metro station pass. So we go to our dad. We tell him what it is, and he's like, oh yeah, I'll make it not expired. Don't worry about it. Wait, what? <laughs> Don't worry about it. He's a data magician. He's a data magician. I'm glad he doesn't ask any questions about our expired library card. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> and that's our final Metro. Actually, our final uh, mainstream Metro. We, we have one final... Uh, not quite one final. We have some some secret metro to take. Yep. Finally well, done with OSG. Be gone, um, demon. After we saved him too. They were kidnapped. The people that yeah. helped us earlier. That explains well, uh, everything. What's that grape soda? Yeah, the grape soda's back. The oh, grape soda. Yeah. So the uh, metro line takes us to Dr. Wiley's grape soda factory, the source of all mm -hmm. grape soda. Secrets out. And that we got climb it all. So this is kind of boss rush of Battle Network One. We have to revisit effectively uh, a new version of all of the old dungeons. So we're starting off with the oven comp again, mm -hmm. and we have to extinguish the fires. Uh, but because the bosses are already on the internet, you just kind of—it's more like solving puzzles and fighting viruses. Yeah, and later games got, made you actually yeah. fight the. Uh the bosses again, but in this game, not yet. Yeah. I might have forgotten something. I might need to oh, go back for it. forget the thing? I kind of oh, did, I think. Man. 
Okay. This area can be scary. Cause yeah, because I only, I only have wood armor, health. right? And this is yeah. full of fire viruses, so I think I'm just going to go back and prepare. Uh, there's like one ship I wanted to buy in particular from Higsby's. So. so if you talk to mom, yeah, so, she gives you a key item that helps. Yeah, save so humans. time is going to be in like three, two, one, time. <laughs> Smog, aren't you going to finish one. the video game? Don't worry about it. We, we got it. We got it. Oh, <laughs> feels good. Nice. Oh. GG. Shout outs to Reddit. Well done. Thank you, Reddit. <laughs> anyway, so this is the credits. Uh, that was Reddit skip. That was Reddit skip. I wanna. I, I wrote down the guy's name somewhere in particular, because he doesn't get enough credit. That's right. Uh, so what just happened? Um, so who's so, told the story? This was something found by a Reddit user, whose name is Skims is my name. Ah. He posted to the Battle Network subreddit one day, saying just a text post with an uh, text post with an image of the end of the credits, and he said um, something along the lines of, "I was in one of the final comps, and I felt unprepared, so I went back and I went to ACDC, and the credits played." And another big shout out to one of our Team BN uh, community or, or members, uh, who's also a contributor to. The Rockman EXE Zone, uh, Grega Master. Uh, GM went to the Reddit post, asked, What did he do? The Redditor replied, Sort of what he did. And GM just went in there, and I guess he must have like put out every fire and checked, but he, he figured out which fire in particular we had to put out to temporarily trigger the flag that triggers the, the credits. Yeah. Reddit skip, everyone. <laughs> it just works. Yep. So one of those because fires the game... in particular, like the last one that you put out, that one... It's just the last yeah. one I put out. It's the last one I put out in particular, and if you put out the one okay. beside it in particular, the whole thing just doesn't work. <laughs> oh, no. the, fire, uh, the fires are represented as a series of bit flags yeah. and they're they're used in a shared space because normally you complete that dungeon and you move on and so it doesn't matter that they get reused and yeah. they just happen to be in the same location as the cutscene flags and the first one you put out is the cutscene to play the final cutscene which then triggers the credits and the one next to it is the one that says that that cutscene has already been played mm -hmm. that's why you have to put one out not the other and that was Battle Network 1, everyone. Single segment. Um, just before oh, we move segment. on, <laughs> uh, I wanna wanna say one quick thing uh, about what we skipped at the end. We skipped the Magic Man fight, uh, which was really the, the, the true, very difficult, very scary final boss before the skip was found. Uh, but uh, I, I think the, the category in general is much easier with Reddit skip, what do you think, everyone? Absolutely. No contest. Okay, yeah. previously, single segment Battle Network 1 was probably one of the hardest categories because mm -hmm. we, we did a race one time and there were four of us. And you were the only one that finished. Only one person finished. <laughs> so, <laughs> but now it, it's like we have strats and stuff such that mm -hmm. almost everyone should be able to finish. Yeah, it's been category. optimized and rerouted a couple of times. Mm -hmm. It's pretty good. It takes yeah, a little almost... practice, but I highly recommend it as a fairly straightforward run. Yeah, it's almost as chill as like being two single segments. Mm -hmm. yeah, Charles, thank you for, uh, for having us. Yeah, thanks yeah. for uh, doing the run, and thanks to uh, Tara and Dallas for hanging out and doing commentary. We do have two more runs tonight. We're going to have Battle Network 4 and Battle Network 5 Arbitrary Code Execution, which I'm looking forward to. Um... Rish hasn't yeah. told me how it works, which is the best way to do it, so I can be surprised when it happens. If you yeah. thought this glitch was crazy, just wait. <laughs> yeah, just wait for BN5. Uh, it's something that if you are not a tech-savvy person, is just gonna leave you uh, a little flabbergasted. We'll try to explain it, but it's, it's basically like your dad's data magic. <laughs> yeah, except we're doing it this time. <laughs> Alright. So we're going to take a quick break here while we get set up for Battle Network 4. It's going to be run by Komari. 
So stay tuned here for a few minutes, and we'll be back with more Battle Network. So we'll see you in a little bit. Bye bye. Hello everyone and welcome back to the Community Spotlight. We've got our Mega May showcase here with the Battleman the Battleman Mega Network community. Yeah. The the Mega Man <laughs> Battle Network community like we do every year. We just finished up uh, Battle Network 1. We're moving on to Battle Network number 4. But real quick before we jump into that, just as a quick reminder, we would appreciate it if you would consider subscribing to Hotfix as a, it hot, hot bleh. I'm good at with words. Let's try that again. We appreciate if you'd su consider subscribing to our Twitch channel as Hotfix is funded in part thanks to your subscriptions and bits. There we go. So we've got Kamari here who's going to be running Battle Network 4 for us. We've got Erethar and Rish joining on commentary. How are you all doing today? I'm doing all right. Doing fantastically on this fine Monday evening. Erethar? I'm doing wonderful. Just watching some Battle Network. And uh, how would you give the quick overview of this game? What, what's the huge differences between this and ones? Because we, we jumped three games ahead. I'm assuming things are going to be drastically different. Yeah, so there is uh, one to three have sort of their own thing going where they have uh, very similar mechanics and it's a certain art style and such. And then four to six in four, the games kind of change a fair amount you get more mechanics the art style changes a bit there there's a lot of uh disconnect between one to three and four to six people preferring one art style over the other i think four looks better uh i know at least half the people i know like one to three better but the besides some mechanic differences that we can kind of point out mostly in the tutorial um it's the same core gameplay loop. Uh, Battle Network 1 did heal you after battles. BN4 doesn't do that. Uh, one's in fact the only game that did that. Yes, also just to add on to that, um, BN1, uh, you notice there wasn't any sort of like main uh, core things we were going for in combat. It was just kind of draw good chips. I think Smog mentioned that quite a bit in the last run is just draw these really good chips if you get them you just throw them in your folder and hope you draw them and that's how you handle most fights um or you drew the escape ship to run away from virus fights and bn4 uh speed run wise you're going to see that we're not going to really have random encounters pretty much at all due to a japanese exclusive glitch that lets you uh skip those and the combat uh, around the halfway point will start to pick up quite a bit with the new mechanic in BN4 known as Dark Chips. So that's kind of what BN4 does a lot differently speedrun-wise compared to BN1, for example. Yeah, and it's actually one of the fastest games in the series. Uh, technically the second fastest. But if you don't uh, take BN5 Ace in consideration. Uh, but yeah, BN4 gets a lot of hate casually, but it's actually an amazing speedrun. Definitely agree. Sounds good. Are we ready to get started? Yeah. I think so. Uh, Kamari's going to do something at the start here. Yes. It's going to be an audio uh, So We'll explain that a little more after he's yeah, satisfied just, with his start. Yeah, just, just explain a little bit. Like... BN4 is like mm -hmm. the tournament arc of the series, and there are three tournaments. And I need to hit a specific frame in the title screen to manipulate the tournaments. So yeah, that's what I'm going to try to do. Okay. After the countdown, I'm going to do a couple of soft resets for that. So yeah. So yeah, um, I can just give a, a quick countdown, and then we can start yeah. the timer with that. Yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, the timer will just go while Kamari does this. So uh, we'll go on. Go. So three, two, one, go.
I think that's fine. Probably one frame late. Okay. Actually, so I, I, actually, I, I, I don't feel so comfortable yet. <laughs> <laughs> that was definitely late. every time. Yeah, that should probably be fine. Alright, so... Yeah. Uh, to explain a little bit better what Kamari was just doing there, at the start of BN4, well, throughout BN4, there are three tournaments, and you will get randomly select, well, sort of randomly selected three navvies per, per tournament that you have to fight. They all come with their own scenarios, and uh, one navvy per tournament will give you a soul unison as well. I'll explain that when we get the one on the first tournament. But uh, some scenarios obviously are a lot faster than others, and the seed for all three tournaments is determined by the frame that you press new game on. So Kamari was trying to hit a specific one frame, the game's run at 60 FPS, so it's pretty difficult. There's an OK audio cue though. Um, generally speaking, I think he has it down to like maybe a window of three. Is that probably accurate? I think usually you can accurately... I think Kamari is pretty accurate at being okay to go within the three frame window and yeah. um because like the audio cue is not perfect for hearing exactly the perfect frame i would argue but um the three frame window is actually not too bad um especially for like a marathon or like some type of event like this because uh the early and late frame to the manipulation actually give the exact same tournaments with one scenario different that loses like about five minutes or so uh so it's actually completely acceptable to go one frame early or one frame late yeah i was actually going for the for the perfect frame but we'll see <laughs> yeah if i had to if i had to take a guess you were probably one frame late there yeah based on what same. i was listening to yeah it's fine, I just don't want to be two frames late. Yeah, if you go too late or too early, uh, going too early is actually really difficult with the audio cue, I, at least in, in my opinion. I think Kamari agrees. Um, but if you go too early or too late by two frames, you will get completely different scenarios and everything is just really bad. <laughs> Okay, so we can actually skip all the random encounters in this game if we keep up with doing our thing that lets guard, us do that. I believe. Yes. But we do need a That's guard any, A. Yeah, which, we do need uh, a guard A. That's why I'm taking these fights right now. Mm -hmm. I actually skipped the encounter there. Yep. Yeah, there, there's also that. Normally we would open the menu to prevent encounters, but being able to skip them is kind of nice. Uh, there is also a little bit of RNG Zenny that we will need to be able to progress the game. The Thousand Zenny guarantees that, but there's more Zenny we can also get to save a tiny bit of time as well. Uh, so that 1000 Zenny we got earlier is actually incredibly nice. And this fight, I believe, is a guaranteed uh, Guard 1A. I went for the double delete there to guarantee the Guard 1A. And from now on, from now on, I can just show off the glitch. The next time we check the uh, BMD, he just picked up as well as copy damage, since I know we are running Japanese. Yeah, copy damage is a chip that we might see a little bit of. It's not. There's not too many random virus fights, so it's not like we get to see battle chips all too often. But it is still a very nice chip to pick up. Not too much cost to it. 
in particular, it's really nice early on. And it's star code, which is pretty cool. Yeah, BN4 is unfortunately a game where you don't get too many good battle chips early on. Um, the, the sort of power curve is kind of slow, at least. So for the first hour or so, our folder is going to be generally kind of weak, actually. Um, but then our folder won't matter after that first hour, so. So what's star code? Because we talked a bit about little letter codes in the last run. Yeah, so the star code is a wildcard code that can be taken with any other codes. Um, or any one other code, I should say. Yeah, so for example, canon comes in A and B code. Um, so you can take canon A and canon B together. But um, if you only take the canon A, you're also still able to take any other A codes or star codes. So yep. that's basically and... how the star code chip works. It can also be used as a substitute in PAs. Like there's a program advanced uh, for Giga Canon. It's canon A, B, and C but you can substitute any one of those codes for the star code. Assuming the chips come in it, which uh, Canon does. So we're about to see the first instance of the Japanese exclusive glitch that lets us skip all random encounters. So I'll briefly start talking about that. Um, <clears throat> basically, by opening the menu, Kamari will enter any submenu, such as the folder, and what that does is it actually triggers a map change briefly, uh, which for some reason in VN4, uh, they forgot that this is a very special type of map change. And when a map change occurs, the, your step counter gets res or gets changed or set back to zero. So by opening the menu, opening the folder, closing it again, you have effectively reset your step counter back to zero. So looking at certain visual cues or just knowing in general how long you've walked in the internet, you can do this over and over again at the proper times to reset your step counter back to zero and never get a single random encounter throughout the entire game. Except yeah, of course, we, the guard yeah. one that we needed earlier. We only get encounters at the beginning because we actually need guard one A for later in the game and I actually I had to take two encounters because I couldn't get card 1A in the first one but the first one was not that bad because I got Zenny from it and we actually need some Zenny so yeah the uh, BMD he just picked up a little while ago was uh, also Invis star which is another star code which um, was mentioned briefly uh, about folder flow in the last run Folder flow is basically just using uh, all of the same code in your folder and including star codes because star codes can be taken with any other code in the game. So adding more star codes to your folder also allows you to go through it faster, which will be very important for some of the early boss fights. Yeah, and folder flow is not too important in 4. It really is just for you know the early boss fights, as Rish said. Later on, we won't care quite as much. We mostly just want to take the recoves out of the folder because they're completely useless. Mm -hmm. Coming up is actually a very interesting fight. Uh, BN4 is the only game where you're allowed to fight these normal navvies, um, which is really cool, actually. They have a very interesting pattern that allows you to uh, potentially deal with the fight very quickly. We'll see if Kamari gets lucky with that. Seems like a solid draw. Too early. That's still a pretty decent fight. Yep, so basically uh, their counter hit window is... Uh, they'll move four times at first, and then after that they will move two times, er, and then attack. And then after two movements, if you move into their row, that will force them to try and use a cannon attack on you, which you can just briefly delay and then get a counter hit with, which Kamari executed pretty well the first time, second time went a tiny bit early. But overall, solid fight. 
Yeah, I sometimes mess up the timing on that. It just does not feel consistent to me. Coming up is the Elect Tower comps, which has... One of the best parts of the game. Has some very solid music and a uh, pretty potentially annoying mini game with RNG. You want to talk about bats, Arathar? So the bats have they they're not completely random. There are a few patterns per comp, and the first comp I think you can get all three um, two out of three patterns, maybe yes, three yes. out of three patterns, but. Two of the patterns look pretty similar, and we kind of just go for those. Uh, there are only three patterns in the first comp. The second comp has four patterns, one of which you can get all four bats on, and the other three you can only get three. Uh, and then you sort of you save reset stuff to find the last bat. You can save after the sonar activated to lock in whatever pattern you got. Or you can save before the sonar to keep cycling to a different pattern. Yep, I think most runners tend to save after the sonar, because you just run around for a bit. We got perfect bets. Ooh. Nice. Yep, it, this it is, is a little pattern. bit tight to get all four, but it looks like he's got it. Yeah. That was very nice. Was not expecting that. Also a longsword in this comp, which is something that we pick up. It's kind of what we rely on for all of the early boss fights. So is getting yeah. for their like consistent, just difficult movement, or do you need them to behave as well? Uh, so once you turn behave. on the sonar, whatever bat pattern you get, they'll do the same thing every time. Yes. Yeah, there are four different patterns, four but different all patterns. the patterns are completely fixed. They're, they don't do random things. So as long as your movement is reasonable, you should be able to get all four. Yeah, it is to, tight, to but get that not pattern, so tight that it is it's pretty consistent hard to do to get if you do the right number of turns. We're not taking chips here? Yes, for a Shade Man fight, uh, Shade Man, you can't actually damage. If you hit him, he just fades out. So uh, Kamari is just going to bust her in the row that he thinks Shade Man will pop up and just get him to disappear. You only have to hit him five times and the fight just ends. So after defeating Shademan, we actually got a dark chip. We're not gonna use that yet. We just show that to Higsby. And he told us basically not to use dark chips. And we will definitely keep that in mind. Yeah, he used tells them. He tells us a nice long story about uh, how dark chips will uh, cause our soul to deteriorate and uh, drag us into this place called Merkland or something along those lines. And uh, we totally listened to Higsby's advice. I mean, it's an RPG. Whenever they set up a story hook like that, that means you're going to need to use one later on. Just... <laughs> That's how it works. So this is actually the start of the tournament, the first tournament scenario, uh, the Den Tournament. We are going through the prelims. Uh, basically, we first got to go register for the tournament by setting up a name real quick. And uh, then we can actually begin the prelims, which is basically three little quests that were sent on. The first one I think Kamari does is just basically a quiz and then a three fight gauntlet. So is movement different in this one? Because remember in one they mentioned that they pretty much avoid going straight horizontal as much as they can. The isometric movement works the same in all of the games. So in this one we're still trying to cut out horizontal movement as much as possible. Up and down is the best and we're okay with diagonal. Yeah. And that helps to keep encounter checks to a minimum by preserving step counter. There's also one scenario later on where we actually use buffered movement. Uh, so it actually makes use of the fact that horizontal movement works the way it does to make our movement 100% consistent. Very nice, very nice. I, like I, it. I figured, I figured I you would do this. Yeah, I, I usually just go with AAA there because it's just faster. But... Why not go yep. with GDQ this time? 
It's appropriate. Nice. So here I want to draw any A code. Draw, uh, I drew an R shot. That's very nice. I can get a triple delete here, and that will give me a random full synchro. Random. Yep. It's completely random. We have no idea how it works. Yeah. Yep. Uh, it's totally random. We could explain it better, but one of the community members gets annoyed when we don't. So we're just... <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That tracks with. Unfortunately, the... I get a counter hit there, but it's fine. So if one of those spikies comes to the front, specifically the first spiky, you can get a counter hit there. But... Yeah. Yeah, it's unfortunate. Getting the counter hit makes this fight really easy. And then this fight, no draw, but with guard on rig, most of the damage is dealt that we needed, so. Yep. I feel like that just explanation of we could explain it better, but it annoys one of our community members when we, we don't explain it. It's just a good summary of the battle network. <laughs> 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 we have one guy who just hates that we call it random full synchro, so we have to do it. <laughs> we are legally obligated to continue calling it as such. Also, to be fair, I, I it, it pains me to not fully explain it. I kind of want to explain it, but Aerith are Oh, you can me, feel so. free. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. All right. So, yeah, the jokes the are way, been made. You can you yeah. can explain it now. The way random full synchro works is actually the game has a mood counter. Um, so when you get a counter hit, we maybe skipped over this before, but when you hit an enemy just before they attack, you get a counter hit, which gives you full synchro, which will cause the next attack to do 2x damage. The way that this works is actually getting a full or a counter hit just increases your mood to the max value immediately. Uh, so whenever you hit an enemy with different attacks, um, <clears throat> your mood gets increased by a certain value based on the attack that you hit with. So, if you hit them in a very consistent fashion, for example, in that one fight, Kamari did an air shot into three hits of a guard 1A, those four hits increase his mood enough that he just got full synchro from it. What does full synchro do? Is that just like a buff? Yep, it's just an emotion buff. Um, in the top left corner of battles, after BN4, there's a little emotion window that shows what Mega Man is currently feeling, and when you're in full synchro, your next battle chip will deal 2x damage. So, for example, a Guard 1A, which deals 50 damage, normally does 100. Yeah, there are a couple other emotions as well. You can probably run through them quickly. There's an emotion called Rage, which pops up when Mega takes, I think, 300 or more damage in one hit, or gets paralyzed a bunch in a row. And that also gives you double damage on your next attack. Although you don't really see it at all in any of the speedruns, unless 5 still does the emotion bug thing, which is a whole different topic that we'll maybe explain if we ever do 5. Um, we will be explaining motion, emotion bug later, yes. Do you use it in 5? Oh, yes. <laughs> okay. okay. I didn't know if it was in uh, that route or not. Yeah, make use of it quite extensively. I was also worried when you're quote unquote operating poorly. If you get hit by a few attacks in a row, Mega Man will become worried. And you won't be able to do soul unisons while you're worried, which is mechanic will explain after the second tournament scenario. And uh, in BM4 later on, you'll also start getting dark chips when you're worried once we've unlocked that mechanic. Yep. And on there's it's... one last one called Exhaust It. It's only in Battle Network 6, though. And it mm -hmm. only shows up when you've broken all turns of a special form change. And so... Yep. Uh, on top of that, actually, the Dark Chip thing is not just exclusive to BN4. If you're worried in either BN4 or 5, you will guarantee do draw a Dark Chip on the next turn. That's just... Y yeah, it's just it. that Dark Chips work a little different. It's, it's a little different in 5, yeah. Also, yeah, again, mentioned it with normal navvies, but BN4 also lets you fight these heal navvies, which is 
kind of neat. That was some sword hate I just witnessed there. <laughs> <laughs> I just didn't trust him. Every time he picks swords in that fight, he never moves to the front. So yeah, just two buster shots and he's done. Also, uh, now we're actually gonna check if I actually hit the frame. So, this is the main yeah, problem. Yeah, I haven't done the yeah, this is the main problem with the Manip, uh, in my opinion, because you only get to know if you actually hit the frame 20 minutes into the game, so it's pretty tough. Yeah, you have to see the first tournament board, and we're basically going to look specifically for like one image to appear uh, in a very particular location on the tournament board. That I believe indicate. it was one frame off. Can confirm for you in a second. No, I was two frames off, I believe. So, what does that give me again? I have no idea what this means. Mm, so you get I know, I know that it's Ponta, Aquaman, and Totman for the first tournaments, but I'm not sure about the other ones. I can find you what it was. But, uh... I think you could probably just continue, like, this, or if you have like a backup save to load the actual proper tournaments, you could also maybe do that. Yeah. Uh, I think this will probably get you either Metal Man or Proto Man. <laughs> yes, which is really if bad it's if not lose like Man, it's up kind of to fun. 30 minutes. Proto Man's so, bad. Proto Man's real bad. Yeah. Uh, so if I'm allowed, I can just switch the save and load up a Save file on which I hit the frame. Yeah, that's fine. I all right. Think that will probably be for the best. Better showcase, and that's yeah. That's sort of how me. a lot of the games that we yeah. showcase on GDQ that need a particular manipulation at the starter run. I'm just very sorry I didn't hit the frame. It it works out. It's hard. It's it's yeah. definitely very hard, and like we said, we got it. You have no way to no, know. Let's go. Oh my god. First try, first try. First try, of course. <laughs> so yeah, I am... I was running on emulator just in case that could happen. Just for safety reasons. So yeah. Mm -hmm. So the first scenario, we actually fight a ghost. Yeah, for some reason... Like, so being 1 through 3, generally shy away from like things being unrealistic for this kind of futuristic world where everything is uh, you know uh connected to the internet and then bn4 just kind of does away with that pretty much immediately and uh you're literally up against a ghost yeah bn4 doesn't care at all are you saying that ghosts aren't realistic um excuse me i didn't mean that uh believe what you want to believe uh but <laughs> I'm also trying to double check just just to make I'm curious exactly what frame that was. I want to see uh, how bad I'm it was. I'm pretty sure been. it was uh, five six five. So there are some bad navvies in the in the internet right now, and they are all ghost navvies. And so we need to deal with all of them before actually battling in the tournament. Yeah, there are actually a bunch of heal navvies and a bunch of uh, normal navvies. So this one's a normal yeah. navvy, but normal navvies aren't required. Zenny. That one just yeah. gives us 3,000 zenny. <laughs> it's very worth it. Okay. It wouldn't have been that bad. The second tournament scenario just would have been bad with Burner Man and Metal Man. But it would have been perfect final scenario. Metal Man perfect. would have been good content, though. <laughs> it would have been punching yeah. a lot of rocks. <laughs> <laughs> Especially was... because BN4 runners are not practiced with that scenario. <laughs> have you ever done Metal Man, Kamari? Yes, casually, like five years ago. <laughs> okay, I forgot that you've played Blue Moon. So, for me personally, as a kid, I played Red Sun, uh, which is the opposite version, so, like, some of the soul navvies that exist in this game, I've never done their scenarios. Would have been a, a fun experience if I ever had to do those. 
Yeah, so since I see someone asking again in oh, the chat, I the reason we keep opening one of the menus is to skip encounters. It's a Japanese exclusive oversight in the way that uh, loading maps is written. That was rude. You were like one step away from the next screen. Yes. Maybe I need to reroute my... That one's a bit odd. If, if you copied me, I think I run through a ton of 3 and 6% checks, so... Yes, I copied I copied both you and Rish, so yeah. I routed mine to be perfect, but my run probably was not perfect. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, those look like automatons. Yeah. <laughs> They're called, uh, melodies. Yep. Oh, we get to make use of copy damage, maybe. Yes. Very nice. So this next fight is actually a little dangerous. Yes, I'm gonna say you before this die one. if you have just a horrible chip to run. Yeah, an enemy that pulls you forward into poison panels. Uh, it's not a fun experience. Luckily, Vanfors, yeah, it's so fast to save just for free because we have to open the menu to uh, negate encounters in there. Does going to the save it's menu fine. count for negating encounters? Can you like? Do that yep. to negate yeah, you can actually to open, save. You can actually open any of the menus. They all work. Yep. Any sub menu. It's it's literally just a matter of going into a sub menu, um, such as folder, library, sub chips, save menu, because, as I said a little bit earlier, it uh it initiates a map change for whatever reason, um, because technically the map is not actually loaded anymore. We have cleared out the ghosts from the internet. It is time to go and fight the ghost master herself. So in the first tournament, we are actually looking for a live sword program advance in most of the fights. We yep. don't really need it for the first one, but it's nice to get it. I figured to get a counter hit there. I actually want him to come to the front right now. Wait. It's fine. It will be fine. He just reset his... his pattern. Surprised it took us this long to get the classic question in chat of how is he rollerblading upstairs? Yeah. Yeah, Lan is a, a marvel of human strength. Don't know how he does it. He's um, multi-talented. Good at net battling and rollerblading. Yeah, unfortunately, uh... I was really bad, but it's... it's okay. <laughs> unfortunately, yeah, now na normal navvies are really awful because they like to summon that wind box that pushes you to the back, and our main source of damage is swords, which means we need to be in the front. <laughs> so real quick, because we didn't really use them at all in Battle Network 1, uh, what's a program advance? Good question. Uh, program advances are very powerful chips that only occur when you select chips in a very particular order. So, for example, the program advance we're looking for is Life Sword. So we need to take three chips in a, a particular order, Sword, Wide Sword, then Long Sword, which means we need all of those chips to be in the same code, which we have them all in S code. Um, other ones may be are just the same chip, but in different codes. Aerithar kind of touched on it a little bit with Giga Cannon being Cannon A, B, and C. Um, and usually they're just really powerful chips that do a ton of damage, like Life Sword, which hits in a 2x3 area compared to any other sword, which is much smaller and does 400 damage, whereas its components actually only deal 240 in total. So. Uh, another brief thing, it was talked about during uh, the BN1 run as well, but <clears throat> uh, due to the slot bias that was described, we do have a lot of our chips in the top five slots in our folder. It's because they are more likely to be drawn there, and this is more prevalent in BN2 through 6 because uh, those games do actually fewer sw uh, slot swaps 
by about 30. So chips are even more likely in these games to remain in the same slot after the, the shuffle algorithm. So the internet was just flooded by Aquaman? Yeah, it's something it's about a Max opponent cry baby and just cried mm, and he yes. just got flooded. I I believe the lore is that our washing machine is leaking. We have to get it fixed. <laughs> I I believe uh, the washing machine is is leaking and it, it's broken basically, and they want to get it, get it fixed or get it replaced. And Aquaman thinks they're talking about him, and that's. Why he he cries and floods the internet? That's amazing. I didn't even know that because I've only ever played this scenario in Japanese. Oh yeah, no, that's the real thing. There, actually, uh, the, Aquaman over here, Shuko talking about replacing something that that goes drip a lot. <laughs> no. And Aqu Aquaman's thing is that he ends a bunch of sentences with drip. <laughs> it, it's something Man. along those lines, and then he runs off and gets sad. Gets sad, incredible. cries, floods the internet. <laughs> People in chat are agreeing with Aerotharis' uh, telling of the story. Yeah, I, four is my favorite game, so I remember a decent amount I, of. I them. trust everything Aerotharis says about. Be in for especially. Oh, that's a mistake, but you know, mostly it's true. <laughs> so now we're gonna fight Aquaman. Yes, this is also the first boss fight where Life Sword is really, really good to draw because we don't have a whole lot of good tools, and Aquaman has 500 health. So we're really looking to draw Life Sword. Not even a single sword in the first draw. Though. Uh, yes. Brigitte's first sign. There's a sword there. The one component that we have a, a single copy of in our folder is Life Sword, or er, uh, is Long Sword. So we kind of want to see that one more so than the others, uh, because that's the one we're least likely to draw. This looks like it's going to be a brute force fight. Yeah, I'm just gonna take the swords. Yeah, so at gotta... some point, you, you have to kind of just say enough is enough and take the swords. Yeah, because like right now... Gotta the... counter hit too, so as soon as that panel's gone, I'll pop him Yes. Done. Yeah. If you would have opened the gauge though, I guarantee you Longsword is there. <laughs> it is in fact how it works. So this is going to be the first soul unison tutorial. We actually get forced to always do Aquaman scenario first. Like it's always the second, or I should say, the second scenario of the tournament. There's no way to do the other soul unison scenario on your first play. You'll always get Aquaman. So um, that's because they want to show you how soul unisons work and do so through the Aqua Soul tutorial, which we're never going to use again. We only use it for the tutorial. Yes. Yeah, we'll in Red never Sun. Never ever see that again. Sorry? We'll never see that again. Oh, yeah. So, one of the reasons that uh, Blue Moon is better than Red Sun is that in Red Sun you get the Gutsman scenario instead, because the, the Unison Navis are different. Uh, and Gutsman's actually better soul that we do use occasionally in the speedrun, but Red Sun, the Gutsman scenario is way slower than Aquaman scenario. Forever. And it also adds more Zenny that's required to complete the run, which is already kind of a sour spot in BN4. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the whole Sparkman scenario, by the way. It's gonna yes. put three numbers in here and then we're done and we leave. So. Kamari is putting in two numbers, which will help him to narrow down exactly what code he needs to put in. He put in 1-8, determines, okay, how many numbers were right? None of them, okay. So let's try 908. how many numbers were right? 
Turns out it was still none of them. So with that, he knew which of the five possible codes it was in order to actually, you know, unlock his extra folder, which is the whole idea. This guy gave us an extra folder and then locked it for us in our PET so we would have to do this tournament fight with that terrible folder that's basically just our starting folder and only slightly worse than our current folder. This is also by far the most important fight to get Life Sword on. This man has 600 HP and is a nightmare to hit with any chip. Yes. Yeah, his, his movement pattern is really bad for actually trying to hit him with things. It's just not a... This is a he very fun fight. spends fight. half the fight invisible, and by invisible I mean actually just not on the field. You can't hit him with it. He's just also not coming to the front, like, ever. Yeah. <laughs> he knew. And now he does. Yeah, now he's just only coming to the front. Yeah, the second you've gotten your sword switch out of the way. So there we go. We got it, um, on, a, on a perfect run, he would be hitting uh, 400 HP right as you get Life Sword. Doesn't always work out like that. It was an unfortunate draw beforehand, but getting the Life Sword that early means this fight is still not that bad. Yeah, it's like pretty good actually. Uh, you will also sometimes get random synchro in time for Life Sword and Does the hit him one more time. Double damage. There we go. But yeah, he's by far the worst Navi MPN for at least in the speed run. Yes, he's very difficult to deal with. <laughs> just, uh, he's just really obnoxious. But his scenario is way too fast, and Top Man is also pretty obnoxious as a boss. I, I take it back, Top Man's the worst. But you don't get him in the speed run, so it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> also, Burner Man is pretty terrible, too. But... Yeah, but... Also, normal Navi V3 is, like, the worst, hardest enemy in the game. Yeah. So... With that, we finished the first tournament. Um, so now, basically the kind of flow of this game is we have a little bit of a scenario with some type of dungeon comp, and then we have a tournament. And then in that tournament, there are three scenarios that we have to do. And then we kind of repeat that again. So now this is the kind of middle ground before the next tournament. Uh, the idea here is our friend right now wants us to go uh, uh, see something with her. I, I don't know if she explained it to us, but basically they're announcing the opening of a theme park that she wants to go to with us. Yeah. So there's a contest being held on where you can win tickets to the, the Castillo theme park that's opening. And she wants to go, and she knows Land's really good at net battling. It's a net battle competition. So we, we're in charge of winning the tickets. Yes, but she never tells us this just kind of assumed that we have to get the tickets for her. I, I think she tells us when we get there. <laughs> yeah, uh, very, subtly, very subtly. Mega Man gets to the area and rolls like, okay, do the thing. <laughs> I think she like she just, just like looks, looks at him looks like, at hey, you should talk yeah. to that Navi over there. <laughs> she literally just says, oh, you know what to do. Another three fight gauntlet. Uh, this one's, again, very annoying. We haven't gotten very many powerful chips yet. We will soon get something going, something, uh, after this gauntlet, so we'll actually have some means to do fights. But we do have to do this with a very terrible folder still. We have to do Rage Duck first, I don't remember. Yes, actually, we do have to do Rage Duck first, you're right. I'm gonna try to get a counter hit here. Nice. That is very nice for the last fight. Oh. This fight could go really well, where it, it could be all everything is terrible, and usually everything is terrible, but he's gonna try. I don't know how I got hit there. Everything is terrible. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> This is why we expect to happen. It's fine. This particular fight is so annoying. 
the, the way the attacks line up is usually not very kind. But if it is kind, you can one-shot them all with reflecting. I mean, guard. Guard 1A, yeah. It was still fine overall. Yeah, it was fine. We ban one. Just took an extra turn, basically. So here our computer is being hacked, and by hacked, I mean someone literally broke into Land's house and typed on this computer in Notepad. <laughs> yeah, just, just just open it up. So open it's it's up. very concerning, so we're going to go use VI's computer instead. Yep. Who knows what viruses he put into our computer? Yeah, we can't risk that. It's... Ducks. We used to go all the way to Elect Town, but we found out that VI's is just faster because it's a compromise. Uh, yep. If you were playing on English, you'd probably go to Elect Town still. So... And yes, coming up is a very infamous door uh, for anyone who's played the Infor. Judy is presenting. Yes. And uh, it's, is this just a bug in for so some GMD are guaranteed to have certain contents? And yes. that, that's usually where we count on getting all our, our random Zenny from, it's from those specific GMDs. Also, I actually forgot I... I had to load a save, so that's why I'm, I was not picking up GMDs. Because I actually got a battle in Battle Green Mystery Data. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah, and, I, and I had Zany from that. Yeah. You don't have to that's do That's why I, I wasn't picking anything. No, I just oh, that's really good. Out. That is a very nice fight. Oh, that's that so is... good. That is what I wanted to do. I've never uh, seen the first a normal Nazi fight this good. Did you counter hit and do full synchro counter hit for another full yes. synchro? He sure did. God gamer. And now for the infamous door. Rage Duck. The There's a joke stuff. in there somewhere in my name. Also true. Also true. <laughs> and now we're yeah. in area three, which is there's another fight here that can yeah. kind of be annoying. This is the last fight that Kamari has to do with um, cool a bad folder basically. Chips. Yeah. Very nice. Surprised that the heal navy didn't take down Mr. President when the uh, cannon was being fired. It's the worst. <laughs> yes. He down always protects Mr. President. He he always protects his metars when you're trying to counter hit them. Um, <laughs> jump so right. He'll just turn. jump right in front as you're about to get a counter hit, so you don't uh, get the counter hit, and now you don't have full synchro for your next attack. Reminder not to soft lock with the navy yes. Yes, you can solve program. Uh, but yeah, um, for the heal navy fight, you're you're pretty happy if you get the full synchro guard hit on the heal navy. It was a really good fight. And now this is the navy coast, which we did not see in Battle Network One. Uh, it is a additional customizer feature that was added in Battle Network Three. Where you play this sort of like Tetris mini game, uh, you basically have certain programs that have to go on the command line to be used properly. Some that can't go on the command line. These are plus parts, and then uh, same color can't be touching each other as well. It's a lot of weird little things. For the most part, you won't see any real problems with it because the N4 Navicus is really clean. We're also hey. now. For that one time, we put two HP 500s in. What was that? Except for that one time, we put two HP 500s in and don't care. But oh yeah, we just ignore it. Other we'll... than that, it's fine. Yeah. Are we uh, doing yes, any we are... unintended stuff to it this time? I know uh, the other games you do we will, just not much. 
Yeah. There's one time that we do something that is very unintended with the Navi Coast, and it is because we need a lot of HP. It's not so much that it's unintended, it just was our suggestions, right? It's not as bad as six. If anyone's familiar with six, then that because it's very, very broken in that game. Yeah. So what's going on here? These are lotto codes uh, introduced, I believe, in three as well. Basically, these are codes that are hidden throughout the game, or sometimes in real life places uh, they were hidden, like on TV shows or magazines or stuff. And these codes give you in-game rewards. Uh, Kamari is getting four battle chips here, which will be put into the folder very soon, and three or f yeah, I think three Navicus programs, uh, which are HP plus 400 twice. There are two separate ones that we just grabbed, and Buster Pack. Buster Pack is, without a doubt, like probably the best thing we can pick up right now because it increases all of our buster stats quite significantly so that even if we don't draw anything we now have the ability to deal with fights in a generally fast way yeah i'm gonna add that one like right away basically we're gonna have a big menu coming up here in a second it's actually separated because all the right where uh we take out whatever we want we kind of don't care because there are only four chips that matter now three chips you need you very specifically actually need to take out uh, the guard one A because you need to trade that in at some point. Oh, um, did you already do Navi Coast? Nah, you, 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 you do it separately because uh, you need to. Oh, fair, it. fair. Save um, a also, little bit of the cleanest folder Navi Coast edit you can ever do. It's literally press A twice, three times. Yeah, open the Navi Coast and mash A until it's done. And so, also briefly talk about the four battle chips that Kamari got. They are Airhawk 3, uh, Var Sword V, Gundel Soul EX, and Twin Fang 3. So, Airhawk 3, insanely good chip, highly recommend. We're about to beat the game probably about an hour now because we just got that chip. Um, <clears throat> we also then get Var Sword and Twin Fang, which are both kind of solid, can do some decent stuff with it, but are generally just... they're lower priority on the list. Gundel Soul EX is pretty much just a press A win game button as well. Um, yeah, Gundel Soul is really good. Yeah, so it we're looking to... Definitely my favorite out of the four. There we go. Yeah, we did a quick folder edit as well that swapped them all to the top four, so they're more likely to be drawn as well, so that we can hopefully see them in these types of fights. And there's gonna be also, we have five attack now from Buster Pack, so that's also yep. a thing. So essentially, you got two really, really good chips, and then two more that were pretty only worth it. Pretty much only worth it because you were getting other chips at the time anyway. Yes, that is correct. Yeah. There's definitely an argument to be made that you could cut those out too, but at I've the end, played of the day, around with only getting two chips. I've played around with getting zero chips, in fact. Yeah, there's like, I don't know, 10-ish forced fights before you start having access to dark chips. Yeah, more if you're bad. Uh, yeah. Also, we are approaching one of the best parts of BN4. Everyone's favorite time. Get hyped for the best music in the game. Uh, Alright, we are approaching toy robocomps. These comps have some very appropriately themed music in my opinion. I think that the music is flawlessly executed for the theme of these areas. Uh, <clears throat> on top of that, the main concept here is that there's going to be doors in the way that uh, tell a story with one piece of that story missing. We have to go find some story data to fill in the missing piece. So you just have to use some context clues if you're playing this casually. We just memorize where the, uh, the story data is located. <laughs> I just enjoy that when you give that context of what's going on and then you say, I think that that's how I usually learn that you have a controversial opinion. 
<laughs> I'm saying it because... <laughs> it's just that there are four of these comps, and the same theme plays in three of them. And then they play a slower, slightly different version than the fourth one. These... <laughs> I think most people like to get, or end up getting stuck in these comps a little bit casually, so they, they hear this song so much, and because it's so kind of like upbeat, it kind of just grates on you. At least that's the way that I remember feeling about it. It, it actually did annoy me as a kid. Uh, but I will admit that it does is a very fitting theme. It also seems like it's a pretty short loop. Yeah, it's, it's not particularly long, you know. Yeah. It is and longer than nine seconds, though. Yes. True. It's a... Uh, the other nice thing about it, nice, I say, uh, is that because of the Japanese exclusive glitch, we get to hear it on loop with no interruptions. Because yes. there's no battle. <laughs> yes, we get no random encounters to interrupt and uh, break the, the tedium of this you song. Got to this. There's, uh, what, like 10, 20 minutes of this? It's less this is, these comps are also insanely long, yeah. They are very because there's so much forced auto-scrolling in them. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, this entire, like, uh, like, I didn't want to say swimming. I guess you'd call it kind of like sailing sections, almost. It's like a red. It's just like a little, like, trip through the river. Uh, but like during those sections, it's just an unskippable cutscene. You, you can't do anything. You just have to mash to the text when it pops up. Some of them have auto scroll text as well. It's really good. I love it. Yeah. Literally the only example I've seen of auto missing Varsword. So Varsword is a chip that has input commands, uh, kind of like you would do for inputs in Street Fighter. In fact, exactly like that. In fact, most of the codes are just codes from Street Fighter. But, uh, Full circle, you know, quarter circle. Sword's basically. literally impossible, so... Yeah. Life Sword is a full circle input. Um, it doesn't, it always does 150 damage no matter what you do, but unfortunately, like, those fights, it's really difficult to get the enemies to line up properly for Var Sword, so that's why you just have to buster it down at the end. But he did take care of one enemy with that Var Sword. Melodies are very annoying. Yes. For vice for Varsords. Yeah, this is also coming off the game uh BN3, where Varsord was absolutely broken. Uh and I think they recognized that and nerfed it practically into the ground. So the way you're meant to do these comps is uh you're supposed to go around outside and look at the various storyboards and the um, and the Castillo and it'll tell you the story and then these plaques that we're interacting with recount the story with gaps and you have to go find the data that matches yeah like the the text on these storyboards is actually word for word elsewhere in the game that you might have already read uh, if you actually explored when you were first going through Castillo, but uh... this one is about um, Wiz Dog and his rival Wiz uh, Monkey. Yes. And the the two data, one of the data you have to get is Wiz Monkey, and if you haven't read it, you're gonna pick up Wiz Cat because that makes more sense. Yes. Yeah. Uh, That's what I did yeah. casually. Because everyone did try on their casually. Let's be real. Lon read the exhibits. Of course. And and then you did 50 points later, and that's when you read the exhibits, and you were like, oh, oh I see. <laughs> yeah, a, a section later in the game it forces you to interact with different things to try and find those points, and you're like, oh, I understand now. The, the first one was about a princess who used her axe as a mirror and got turned into a tree or something? Something along those lines, yeah. I think I think it was like her lover got turned into a, a tree by some Maybe. or something. I just like remember what the data are. But... Yeah. <laughs> uh, the third one's actually, like, it's about a robot who... 
I was gonna get that right, but he had a friend the just didn't let me. And the friend was a bird, and the bird died. So he decided to become toy parts, so he could bring happiness to other people. I'm not gonna use the white sword. Oh, and they had like a, a song or a dance or something. I don't remember all the data specifically. And then the last one is a Boktai crossover thing. Yep. The third one is kind of just the story of Tin Man, but yeah, a, <laughs> it's a little like bit. They literally call him Tin Man, I think. It's literally just called Tin Man, yeah. 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 The third one is actually my favorite. The, the third one? Yeah, I think it's yeah. the best one. You guys actually rated these stories? I yeah. read them all. I mean, I read them all too. But like... <laughs> I never rated them. <laughs> so this comp actually... The, the whole time, like, there's a couple cutscenes, inside cutscenes, that allude to the fact that viruses might be popping up on the raft at some point. And then this comp finally has it happen once. Uh, and they're just like, oh no, this has never happened before. Literally. Um, but. So yeah, we have two force fights to deal with in this comp. Kamari is also doing a phenomenal job of not getting random encounters, which uh, can confirm is really difficult in these comps. It's very easy to uh, get lost just jamming to the tunes. Yes, actually. I just skipped. It's funny that you just said that because I actually messed up my movements and skipped the encounter check for sure. I saw, yeah. You mean in comp 2? No, in comp 3 actually, right at the beginning. Look, Kamari picked up a charge plus one, which is kind of a thing that depends on the room. Charge plus one, our charge stat is four right now, our buster stat. So picking up the charge plus one lets you get level 5 buster, which is kind of nice for some parts of the game. Um, I don't normally pick up the charge plus one, or at least I didn't when the I used to. The game just won't stop giving me. And I don't know why I'm missing this, because <laughs> I am doing a full circle. I, I apologize. It's because I called Varsword useless. It means it has to show up every time. Yeah. No, Varsword is... Uh, it's... I can't do Life Sword anymore either. I don't know why. I mean, doing a 360 on a D pad is hard. It is. Yeah. It's really difficult. Cool. It's also funny because it's like. I think compared to the normal 360 that you have to do, or like to the quarter circle and semicircle, it's a reverse circle, right? So you have to remember the actual yes. position too. And um, I never remember. Yeah, it's like, I'll usually try and do the circle and be like, huh, wait, why did I get the other input? It's like, oh, because I did the quarter circle input trying to do a full circle, but I didn't do it the circle the right way. I can do BB left down up every time. Can't do life sword. BB left down up is the code for elemental slash in BN3, which is insanely busted, but sadly does not exist in this game. If it existed in this game, it would be also good. Amazing. I'd actually we never use... Probably wouldn't uh, even go dark, because you're just given like four Varsoids over the course yeah. of the round. That'd be nice. I had actually never used Varsword before running BN4. So yeah. Uh, it was my favorite chip when I played 4 casually, and then I played 3 and it was so much fun. Kinda didn't talk about it briefly, but a uh, little fun thing. For some reason the game just makes you go through that area blind, like so all the lights are off. Oh my god, and... it really is just slowed down. Yeah, you just, you just have to and maybe that that and be to match the theme of the comp, but... Yeah. It's cool. It's just like it's the fourth comp, man. Change the music a little more. Right? Is that Kool Aid, blood, or lava? It's supposed to be lava. I I'm a big fan of it being Kool Aid, though. I like Kool Aid better, yeah. 
it, like it's super translucent. You can see through it. So, Kool Aid seems more applicable here. The only reason I even consider it being blood is because we just, you know, jacked into a vampire and there's vampire bats you in know, the background. It's probably possible it's meant to be blood. Yeah, I've always thought I it was blood, actually. I just didn't say anything. anything. Yeah, I, I, I would tend to think that it's lava, but like... It's not like that lava texture, right? Yeah, that's kind of where I'm going with it, because with... Dracula Kool-Aid. <laughs> <laughs> It's Only a, Mars. <laughs> it's it's a vampire that just drinks Kool Aid instead of blood. Clearly, it's Some flaming hot Cheetos. I like that one too. It's good. All right. So I this actually... comes usually where I get an encounter. <laughs> the funny story about I'm pretty sure the reason Kamari always gets an encounter here is because we mentioned earlier that he like copied from Arathar and I and uh, so he I think he watched my my PB of this uh, this category yes and I did this wrong so I, I I got lucky but I did it late and so kamari keeps doing it late and gets punished every now and then <laughs> yeah. yes especially whatever parts he learned from my run i've never routed when you're supposed to do this it's just a feeling thing for me yeah. so uh so we we've got one fixed fight left i think and then the yes boss. and then the boss the yes. boss we get to fight man right now. Uh, Remember the thing about not using dark chips? Oh no! Why would you use a dark chip? You're not supposed to. Yeah, we're gonna have our soul dragged to Merkland. Yeah. Oh, this time the game actually requires us to use a dark chip? Yeah. Thankfully on the required dark chip use, they don't give you any of the bad stuff. Well, I think you get bugged, but they don't give you any of the permanent bad stuff. Yeah. Um, that happens when you use them any other time. I like how I confidently stated earlier that the, the game will require it because of that story hook. And it was right. Oh, yep. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, yes. But it's it just, obvious. Just so obvious. Yeah. yeah. In this force fight, we look for Airhawk. Hopefully. Yeah, he's gonna get virus for a bit. Twin Fang's alright. The icon yeah. for that chip just looks like the tournament bracket. Sideways. I can see it. Yeah. Now, here's Shade Man again. So, we also talked a bit about emotions earlier, and, uh,. Sorry, something happened. Um, getting hit lowers your mood, which causes you to be able to draw dark chips. Uh, so Kamari is going to take a few hits intentionally to try and get the dark chips a bit faster. Normally, you could actually wait three turns, uh, and the dark chips just appear. But this is faster. Yep. And interestingly, if you're in later playthroughs of Blue Moon and you have Protoman Soul. Uh, it's the only time that you can unison with a dark chip. You can unison with a dark sword to become dark protonum in that fight. If you uh, wait the three turns to get dark chips without becoming worried. Is it actually dark proto? It's just regular proto, right? Yeah, you what? go regular proto with the dark, okay. but you unison with a dark chip. Yeah. So this is the point scenario. This is the prelim for the next tournament the i think in this one it's called the eagle or hawk i forget i believe it's I eagle uh, but this is the scenario that taught all of us young gamers to examine literally everything yes like how many hp memories and reg ups did you guys find doing 50 points because i found a lot <laughs> yep it... i have a habit now where i examine everything the first time i see it in any game 
you gotta examine a lot of things, and when you don't know where they are, you just talk to everything. We also set up a little shortcut from Dex's, which will be very nice for the first tournament scenario, uh, where we need to go back to ACDC 2. Also, uh, in the last scenario, we had to use a dark chip, because that was the only way to, to beat Shademan. But in this one, we're actually gonna use dark chips again. Yeah, so now we're going we want to... to use dark chips. Yeah, dark chips, as you might have noticed, that dark sword did 500 damage. They're, they're very strong, so we are going to start setting up the ability to use dark chips whenever we want. Uh, on a couple forced fights. We didn't have any of the negative side effects of using a dark chip, as Erethar mentioned. Um, but using a dark chip typically will reduce your max HP by one, and it lowers a value known as Karma, uh, which can impact Mega Man's status. The higher your Karma, typically the more uh, your mood starts a bit higher. Uh, but if your karma is lower, your mood starts a bit lower, and eventually once you go fully dark, you actually just draw dark chips at the start of every fight. So we're going to use dark chips to get our karma low enough to have that happen, starting with the first boss fight. What's a little bit of soul drain between friends? Wait, you use dark chips in this room? Yes. Very much yes. We have zero care about the negative side effects of dark chips. Uh, one, of, one of the drawbacks of this, though, is, well, called a drawback, but we don't need it anymore. The Gundale Soul we got from the Chip Trader, um, as soon as we start using dark chips, that's not going to work anymore. It will do literally nothing. Yep, it just poofs. It's fine, though. We won't really need it anymore. Yeah, it, it was still worth it for the other... Yes. For the scenario that we used it. Oops. So now we're going to play Rock, Paper, Scissors for five more points. <laughs> yes, fun little fact. Um, you see those things on top of the Mr. Prog's head? Those are not its ears. Those are its hands. They kind of look a little like scissors. Uh, so you, he, this guy asks you to play Rock, Paper, Scissors, but he can only ever do scissors. Uh, so you just have to pick rock, and you win. I never noticed that as a kid, until someone Same. pointed it out to me after I started speedrunning. Had you already figured out that rock always works before then? Uh, I knew that rock was the answer, I didn't figure out that, that was the reason why. I just figured it's like, oh, the game just has you randomly, you just have to pick rock. Also, so... a reminder that Mr. Progs don't have ears, those are its hands. Yeah. Yes. So right now, I have to do three fights, and I'll start my Dark Mega setup. That's why it's saved, because these fights can be a little bit scary. Mm -hmm. The way this works is, the first time you use a Dark Chip, when you are light or normal Mega Man, your Karma gets set back to a particular value, which is 480. Um, <clears throat> so Kamari might do the first fight like normal. Um, I think that's usually how we handle it. Um, and then the next fight, he will set his karma back to 480. That will make him tainted Mega Man. Once you're tainted, every dark chip usage reduces your karma by an additional four. Uh, and if you go into a, a mode called Dark Soul, uh, your karma goes down by 10. So by... Using a dark chip, going down to 480, going into Dark Soul once, and then using one more dark chip, we lower our karma to just under the threshold to be Dark Mega and get dark chips at the start of every fight. Also, Fortunately, I got enraged there, which is really, really here. rare. So, oh, I don't know yeah. how that impacts mm -hmm. this. I just need to wait. I believe. Yes. But that was really slow because I got raged. 
So Good. that's it's one fine. of the ways I mentioned way back that you can get raged is if you uh if you get I was not light. charging my buster there because I used dark cannon and unfortunately I missed but yeah dark cannon messes up your buster you can charge it anymore but yeah the way I do these is I actually go dark only in the third fight there. And then there, there's a fourth fight over here where you can do another one. And then we can I, I either take a uh, encounter in park area too, or you can actually go dark on the video man fight, which is the next tournament boss. But it's really risky because you have exactly enough HP to tank ex the specific fights to go or specific attacks or to go dark and. If, you get hit by a different attack, you're dead. So, uh, <laughs> it's, it's it's not recommended. A, it's a safety strat um, to not go dark on the third, or to only go dark on the third fight of that gauntlet. Um, it's and then technically the also strat. faster. It can be depending on your draw. I would just let Dark Mega take the wheel. And... Yeah, so you, you actually should let Dark Berserk go over uh, at least once. Yes. It's going to guarantee that you make it in four, uh, four battles. Or sorry, three battles instead of four. So what's the Dark yep. Berserk? When you are Dark Soul and take yes. lethal damage, Mega Man will go Dark Berserk. Um, he kind of zips around on the field however he pleases and he can randomly use your held chips and he can randomly shoot the buster you can also if you're holding chips you can use them manually as well you just can't control where he is at the time that you use them he does randomly use chips that you have previously used throughout the uh the game he can oh yes yeah. for example just throw out a life sword because we have used that at least once um, or he could use Airhawk or any of the other chips we've used. He saw he saw him use just a regular cannon. He can also literally cheat and use Gundel Soul, even though he was about to ask that. that. Yep, yeah, that can happen. Uh, so, based on what I mentioned earlier, uh, Kamari's Karma is now exactly 476, which means that it's below the threshold of 479 to be Dark Mega. And when you're Dark Mega, you start every fight with Dark Chips. <laughs> I and forgot my movement was reversed. Reversed, right yeah. yeah. The, uh, this is also the Video Man scenario, where you get to this point, and Video Man reverses your controls outside of combat only. So Kamari just has to use the opposite directions of what you'd expect. So like, if he wants to move up, he has to move down. If he wants to move right, he has to hold left. And, uh, yeah, basically, this uh, scenario doesn't even have a gimmick. If uh... Wait, your controls get reversed? Yeah. Oh, I never noticed. <laughs> Erithar always likes to joke that this scenario doesn't have any, uh, <laughs> any real impact, or that there's, there's actually no gimmick to it, because if you just press the buttons, right, it doesn't even look like anything's changed. Yeah, but if you actually step on those things, those arrows there, I don't know, uh, you get sent back to the to the start of the comp, so we don't want that. Yep, and then this is why we set up the uh, little shortcut earlier, because we can get the shortcut from here back to our comp, which then lets us go to Texas, which connects directly to ACDC2, which is where the next tape is that we need to grab. We also need to read an email to get another shortcut that will bring us to Town Area 2, where the last tape is. Also, I believe I have enough Seni already for... For the password, for the mm. P code, I mean. Um, I'll try to pay a bunch of next time you open the. Yeah, I'm gonna check it out. Yeah, I do have enough. I will still 
grab GMDs though, because I want to get chocolate. Yep. You only need the 6,000 zenny. If you end up getting to 7,000 zenny, you can buy something uh, which saves a couple text boxes uh, that you would otherwise have to skip to not buy something when you talk to an NPC. Yeah, there's an NPC who tries to sell you overpriced chocolates in uh, a foreign country. And you can haggle her down to 250 and you can actually keep haggling and then she says she's not selling them to you anymore. Which is ideal, but that takes a long time. So we would prefer to buy them. This is Video Man. He sets up these little tapes that you have to just hit with your buster ideally. Uh, otherwise they will push you back. And uh, he then summons a couple other attacks. But we this just use boss, dark chips and he dies. That is the power of dark chips. Unfortunately, the first 12 is actually really bad. But that kind of happens with dark chips. So there can be times when your dark chip draw is so bad that it's better to take normal chips on that turn. Uh, mostly in random encounters, if you get air hawk or yes. sometimes twin arrow. Or twin Bar fang, whatever can that chip's also called. work. Yeah. Um, in particular, Dark Stage Dark Lance is the draw you never want to see, except for sometimes boss fights. Coming up next is the Metal Gear Solid scenario of Battle Network 4. This is literally just a nice little stealth mission where you just don't want to be seen by these heal navvies. You can high five them though, that's totally fine. Yep. There's quite a few that we're just going to high-five. Yes, Kamari, yes. Wait, how's, how's it going? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> just hang out right next to the guy. Shout out to Rish. <laughs> it's my favorite thing. You just hang you out right next to the guy. You can walk straight past some of them that don't even know. Yep. The scenarios, and someone's asking chat, are completely random, but we've manipulated them. Uh, you can manipulate them, sort of, if you know what seed you want, and you know which frame to click new game on, and you can hit that frame, then you can choose the scenarios in theory. We do this for any percent, it's uh, difficult, because you have to hit one specific frame in a 60 FPS game, but it's not impossible. Yeah, it has a very nice audio cue, um, which makes it a little bit easier to do. Definitely not trivial though. Yeah. Again, the worst part for me is having to wait 20 minutes to see if you got the frame. Yep. It's actually really obnoxious. Also, what did you say about Dark Stage, Dark Lens, Aerothar? Uh, did you get it? Yes. Classic. Easy. Oh, and your, your normal chips are garbage. That's good. Uh, luckily, the busters are really strong by now because we have buster pack on. Yep. And that's why we get buster pack is for situations just like that. <laughs> Yeah, I'll actually quickly shout that out as well. There is an option. Yeah, there is. A, yeah. Um, that there, once you have um, saved the game, the tournament scenario, or once you've already started the game, the tournament scenarios are locked in, can't change. So you can save the game, and uh, you already know exactly what tournament scenarios you can get. So we have set up a set seed file that you just start the game from continue. It is the earliest time that you can save the game, nothing has happened in it, and you can use that to have the perfect tournament scenarios in a speedrun. Um, it's just its own category because it doesn't involve using or being able to hit that manipulation. But it is there usually uh, as a nice little tool for potentially marathons and uh, also uh, 
for races where you don't want tournament scenarios to determine who wins effectively. And uh, it's also really nice for practicing the perfect scenarios until you uh, are more comfortable hitting them in it. Yeah, it's mentioned in chat here. There's a, I guess it's like a poor coding practice, I suppose, or like lazy code that, yeah, it literally worked, so they didn't fix it, but it had uh, consequences for future hardware. The Woodman scenario, the gimmick that we're going to see in a little bit, can uh, break the game. You it can experience severe slowdown or even freezing on certain ways that you can play the game. The original DS was bad for it, uh, and that's the only thing nowadays. If you have like really bad emulation, then it can also break. Cut out to Dark Stage there, Clance again. I was gonna say, Aerithar has cursed the run to only draw that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah, coming up is more. my favorite mini game because uh, the movement for this is very nice. And uh, I'm totally not biased at all when it comes to yes. saying that. Um, the movement here is really cool for being able to get through these areas very consistently, given the sort of mini game we have to deal with. Basically, what we do is um, Woodman summons these wood towers that just pop up out of nowhere, and if Mega Man runs into them, he will get knocked back and take damage. Um, but they are in a very set cycle. So I mentioned this a bit earlier, but with buffered movement, or by basically doing movement that is 100% consistent, making sure you turn in the appropriate places, using horizontal movement until you hit a wall, for example, um, you can always get through the cycles at exactly the same speed. And because of that, you're going to see some very strange movement out of Kamari, but it's going to result in getting through this area very fast. I have actually not learned this. This happened after I stopped running Gen 4. It's a, a rush thing, I think. You did this, right? Yes, I, I did come up with this idea. That's why I uh, think it is very cool. And it I'm is very cool. cool. It is very I, cool. And it's something that was kind of in the back of my mind that I always knew was like, definitely possible. I messed up at the end. But I, I just couldn't be bothered to route it. Mostly because I didn't have to. I mean, it's generally fine. Uh, there's a couple times where you'll intentionally get hit by the wood towers, by the way. Um, the It just works out that way that you can't avoid it very well. So like here, for example, I guess it's probably a little delayed, but Overall, got hit. There is a task of Blue Moon, Paradise. and even the task hits some of the wood towers in some places. Yeah. But, yes. the movement so there movement was, was very good. Yeah, actually... Come. I, I only the noticed one mistake that. from Kamari, so... Yeah, yeah it was pretty much perfect. It's good. That was unfortunate. Woodman is the weird boss for some reason uh, that also, some attacks just don't hit him. Hit him. I like yes. the lance doesn't huh? push him. Uh, that was impressive. Hit doesn't stop his wood from popping up out of the ground. That was a good fight though. It's great. Fantastic mashing, Kamari. You managed to both delete him and yes. use a chip on the exact <laughs> yeah, same frame. Like, yeah, I think that is one frame. <laughs> that, was, that was crazy. <laughs> I the think whole point of that uh, scenario, yeah. I don't remember because I played more Red Sun casually. I think Woodman was just kind of going out of control. Uh, they were doing a Save the Trees campaign or something, and then Woodman got a virus question mark. Yeah, so we just needed to get him to chill out. You had to fix Woodman, and then we can fight. Also uh <laughs> that fight can actually go pretty bad fight was versus dark aquaman yeah because it can use yeah, basically so... any chip i've ever uh i've used so far including dark chips yep. 
basically what happened there is uh, a boss named Laserman, who we'll see later, showed up and uh, pulled our Dark Soul out of our body, and our friend Aquaman showed up to help save the day, and our Dark Soul jumped into Aquaman, took control of his body, and started making him go amok, so we had to deal with him. And luckily, Kamari drew the best possible draw, which is Dark Lance, Dark Sword. It's a nice little combo when they go to the back row. You hit them forward into an immediate Dark Sword that hits every panel. It basically deletes pretty much every boss in the game. Yeah. But yeah, that fight can be very scary if, you know, Dark Mega ends up doing that to you, perhaps. <laughs> Yeah, uh, he can actually just start a fight by using Dark Falcon, and that just kills you. Yeah, that would just kill you. That's correct. That happened to me once. We'll never forget. And now we're coming up on the, uh, I guess there was really no, like, intermediate scenario here this is just yeah. all the prelims for uh, for the last tournament uh so we go from the hawk or eagle tournament right into the blue moon tournament uh so these i guess you can kind of argue that maybe this is not really the prelims until you know that it is the prelims because uh, basically what happens is a couple adults kidnap land in a foreign country and uh throw him in a hotel room and act like they're going to ransom him, like make his parents pay some ransom uh, and you have to break out and that's your prelim is being able to break out of this situation to prove that you're prepared for the Blue Moon tournament that sounds like they just tried to prevent you from entering and then use that as an excuse I could totally see that The way this these fights can actually be really annoying. Uh, I would like to draw a dark mini bomb in all of these fights or most of these fights. These draws are not the best right now. Yeah, um, it's funny that you just say they did this on purpose to try to kidnap you because <laughs> in Red Sun in the Gutsman scenario. Dex's little brother literally fakes his own kidnapping to try to get you to not do the fight. <laughs> drop out of the tournament. Yeah. And it's terrible. And I hate it. It's so slow. Yeah. Because Dex's little brother is worried that he's going to lose once again. But he knows Dex is going to lose. <laughs> <laughs> Dark Mega, take the wheel, maybe. Do it. Oh, we're not. I... Oh, he area locked himself. The nice thing about being dark is that you do have one saving grace, which is literally, uh... If you die, you don't really die at first. You just let Dark Mega take the wheel. Yeah, the game is really safe after you get Dark Soul. Probably gonna get Dark Cannon here again. Because of my yeah. HP. Some of the draws are kind of based on your HP. Dark mini bomb. Ooh, nice. Which is very nice. So yeah, I, I got a really bad draw in the second fight. That is the one I'm most worried about, usually. Yeah, we are done with the prelims. Yes. We collected the four pieces of data to uh, get ourselves out. And uh, now it's time for the first tournament scenario, which and for the one of the best scenarios in the game for sure. <laughs> Kamari's yes. favorite for sure. Yes, of course. As a uh, Brazilian, is... I love the scenario. We're gonna play football right now, or soccer, whatever. Yes, uh, we can call it football for uh, the non-Americans. Um, but yes, this is the foot bomb scenario. Uh, Basically, this is RNG central right now. This entire split is just RNG. Uh, we'll, we'll explain a little bit more why, but this is also the scenario we needed Guard 1A for, is because 
we need to talk to an NPC that will give us, uh, that will turn a Guard 1A into, uh, you know, something for us to be able to play this game of Flip Bomb. So, this is the most heavy RNG point in Battle Network 4. Uh, most heavy single RNG point. I guess technically drawing Life Sword could be comparable on the first three bosses. But this is, even when it goes bad, significantly faster than the alternate, which is called Water God. Anyone who's played BN4 casually before probably remembers Water God. It's the one with uh, like the big uh, computer area maze in Netflica, where you have to fight a ton of viruses and you're lost all the time. And yeah, it's, it's really slow. That is a good start. Yeah, so this foot bomb game is basically just a two out of three that the normal enemy does not block your shots. And you have to first deal 200 damage per shot, and you need to hit all of them on him. Um, every blocked shot just loses you time, if it, and it's just a one in three to get blocked. Um, getting a one in three if you block the shot does save a tiny bit of time back due to the animation, but the important thing is making there's nothing you can do about it but uh the important thing is hitting the two out of three to actually reduce his hp to zero all right that was not bad at all actually you got blocked i think once yes you even blocked one shot wow yes that was actually very good didn't you block two i maybe i i kind of zone out a little bit during foot bomb i won't deny to be fair, um, different runners have different preferences. Uh, it is pure RNG. Uh, there's no value to doing left, right, or center for your shots or blocks. Um, so what I do is I literally just mash A, and so I just fire down the middle. Um, block middle, shoot left. Kamari did the opposite of shoot middle, block left. We yeah, all have our own <laughs> preference. <laughs> Clearly no one likes going right for whatever reason. Ah, uh, right's just incorrect, you can't do that. I have very specific reasons for doing what I do in football. Ah, uh, you're on Japanese and you didn't even grab the barrier. Oh yeah. <laughs> I don't know if Kamari knows a whole lot about that. Have you seen um, that before? Nope. Oh, so... uh, that BMD, you can pick up from the other side of... Like, you don't have to walk up to it, you can get it on the way. You, you can grab it across the There's way. It's like two seconds and 100%. Yeah, it's it looks really funny because you just grab it when you're nowhere close to it. Aerithar always does it because why not? Yeah, also, I think it, probably gonna it's either only in the Japanese version or it got patched in VC. I don't remember. <laughs> so now this version, the ball yes. deals 400 damage. So you only need to hit him twice. But if you get blocked twice in a row. <laughs> That is uh, you just Or three times in a row. You just end up behind on, on the pace, so... Oh, the save. And then... Double the save. Oh my gosh, this is it's really good. This is the one where you just <laughs> lose a lot of time. Yep. Because if you lose... It's very easy to lose if you just get blocked twice, like I said. But... Um, Luckily, Kamari got a tiny bit lucky and was able to get some blocks himself. And didn't end up losing, but he did lose quite a bit of time because it was like two whole additional cycles he had to go through. Yes. Oh, it, it was asked in chat, but no, you can't game over here. You just have to repeat the, uh, the minigame. Yep. And now for the normal enemy play. Also, that was why we got those two HP plus 400s, is so that we have enough HP that we can do that. Uh, mini game without too much trouble. Also, we have not yet changed our uh, Navicus back, so our Buster stats are pretty weak. They are actually the minimum they can be as of right now. I just used Dark Winds to destroy the, the wind box, so I could just hit him. 
I approve of that decision. The uh, normal Navi fight did not go very well. Those were some very yes. unfortunate draws. The so, first draw was actually pretty good. I just missed uh, Dark Spreader because he moved really fast. Mm -hmm. um, we grabbed... We just grabbed one blue mystery data, which I think is spin pink. And we grabbed an earlier blue mystery data in the goddess comp, I think. Or hero comp, excuse me. Yeah, hero comp. Um, which gave us an expansion memory, which means that we now have one extra row or column, I forget exactly which, I think it's column, honestly, to play with in our Navi Cust. Uh, and with spin pink, we can also spin an HP plus 400 program to fit into our Navi Cust very nicely for this final Navi Cust setup we're about to do. That was not terrible. Yep, so we fit I... charge plus one in, we fit attack plus one in, buster pack, yeah. so our attack and charge are both five, and we get an extra HP plus 400 in there as well now. I basically missed one input there, and it lost me a couple of seconds. Now, ideally, in these fights, I want to draw Dark Minibomb in all of them. Dark Minibomb is just a really solid draw against viruses. <laughs> Most viruses do not have more than 250 HP, at least at the first playthrough. Uh, I don't know if there are any in some later uh, playthroughs of BN4. For those that aren't aware, uh, BN4 actually has some forced NG plus action, where uh, you can do NG plus, all of the viruses and enemies get upgraded a little bit. Um, and you can then use that to unlock additional tournament scenarios and 100% complete the game, but uh, we don't have to do that currently for this any percent category. Uh, and yeah, so Dark Mini Bomb is just super good, as you saw. That entire gauntlet took yes. like 15 seconds because he drew it on every single fight. It is not that common to draw Dark Mini Bomb in all of those fights. The now way for... that dark chips work is uh, actually based on Mega's HP. If you're above 50% HP, you're more likely to get certain dark chips, and if you're below, you're more likely to get certain other dark chips. I don't remember specifically what dark chips are on which side, but I do know that dark stage and dark Rika are bottom half of your HP, and uh, offensive chips are generally the top half. Um, cannon and bomb, I think, are the most common, or among the most common when you're above 50%. To briefly touch on this mini game, uh, this is the Kendo Man scenario. So we basically have to fight three dolls like this. Uh, they each have a tell to indicate which direction that you have to hit. So even if you can't read Japanese, you can figure out exactly what you need to do. Um, you either have to do up, down, or right to attack him. Um, if he raises his sword above his head, you might have to attack low, or he might be attacking you. Uh, if he's attacking you, his little text box will have an exclamation point in it. That's usually how I, personally, uh, would tell the difference, because I can't read Japanese. Um, I think that's how most BN4 runners are able to tell. Yeah. Yeah, I, actually I just look at the way he's pointing. Yeah. I actually messed up there, because he was pointing up. And he yeah, thought it's hard to know. Down. Messing so, up can waste a little bit of time, but it's really only the last Kendo doll that you have a risk of failing on. Sometimes yes. you can in fact even fail just because he decided to attack too many times. Yes. That's maybe what's gonna happen here, actually. Someone asked how much time yeah. Japanese saves in the chat. Uh, infinite is the answer because we can skip encounters. Whereas the English version is forced to take random encounters, can't do anything about them. Yeah, 
so we go through these kendo dolls in the order of like easiest to hardest technically i think the uh sharo one that we're currently fighting is the most aggressive uh he will just attack a ton of times like erithar said and each attack that he does means you are not attacking and if you're not attacking you're not lowering his health which means that if he just attacks too many times uh you legitimately will fail because rng decided so Looks like you don't even really need to look for the exclamation point either, because the when he's attacking the text no, box is just shaped differently. It, it's huge it and, and pointy. Okay. <laughs> it's really easy to see. I find the finer details are nicer to look at. I don't know why. All right, all right, Rush. I see. Sure, sure. I have no idea why I actually look for the exclamation point. I know about the spiky text box thing too. It's like whenever I'm mashing through text, I'll look for a specific word in a text box to know it's the last one. Yes, I do that as well. I do that for BN6. Or used to do that for BN6. But yeah, yes. now that we're done, we're gonna fight Candleman. Uh, mm -hmm. Just kidding, actually. <laughs> we still yeah. have to deal with some stuff. This game baits you a little bit into thinking the scenario's over, but it's not. Uh, there's one more thing we gotta go do, because Mr. Famous um, has some other thing to take care of right now. Basically, his friends are being attacked by lions because of an enemy he made a long time ago. Also, I will reiterate this again because I think uh, it's been a while since we mentioned it and seem to see a lot of questions related to it. Every time Kamari opens the uh, chip menu, or any sub menu to be fair, the game does a map change, which results in the step counter being res reset to zero. So by opening the sub menus, like the chip folder, it prevents all random encounters. Uh, <clears throat> And doing that at specific times allows him to get through these areas very quickly. Also, I believe fights like this uh, also reset the step counter. Yep. So we don't need to do it here, for example, because every fight here is close enough that we'll just have our step counter reset for us with every fight. But... Oh, that's so smart. <laughs> Think. Wait, does that cut out a ton of horizontal? Movement? Did he just do something galaxy? -like? Yes. Yes. Uh, it saves a tiny bit of time. Oh, it's not that much horizontal, I guess. Actually. Yeah, it's it's not a whole lot of horizontal movement, but it does cut out some. In fact, the horizontal movement is brought back with um the diagonal movement that you otherwise wouldn't have to do because of your position. The controls like reverse right now or something? Is that what those like Tweety Birds are? Uh, and the little a... ducks yeah, are very little ducks over Mega Man's head. Yeah, the little ducks over Mega Man's head means that he is confused, which means that yes, your in battle controls yeah. are reversed. So I can probably call out all the bugs off my mind. Dark Bomb is a forced backwards movement bug. Dark Sword is a forced forward movement bug. Dark Vulcan is the confusion. Dark Lance is the one that's custom minus one, I think. Or that might be Dark Stage. One of those two. One of the two, yeah. Hey, uh, Dark Rika. Dar Dark Lance is custom minus one. Dark Stage is Very custom nice. HHP drain. Dark Rikov is in battle HP drain. Dark cannon <laughs> charge shot. <laughs> that is another I reason also... why Dark Dark Lance is really good, by the way. Yeah. Um yeah, Dark, Dark Lance doesn't usually flinch enemies. So sometimes enemies just uh move from one panel in the back row to another panel in the back row and double hit themselves and as a result just get deleted. Because Dark Lance typically does 
uh, half HP of the highest uh, HP enemy on the field, I believe is how yep. it works. Capped at 500. Yes. Yeah. Capped at 500, correct. So yeah, uh, I was actually not supposed to use, or I didn't want to use Dark Stage there. Just I was just mashing. Well, yeah, you gotta mash, you know. It just yeah. works out that way. And so that was why we needed 6,000 Zenny. Uh, talking to that heal navi bought us the code to get through this security cube. Um, so that we can go through and uh, do this scenario. This is the junk man scenario, which doesn't really have much to it other than a bunch of forced fights as we clean up some some junk. Yeah, so currently junk man is in Mega Man's body, and you will start every battle confused. And we we have to go get Mega Man's soul back on the net, and then we can fight junk man. It's actually kind of a sad scenario if you read it when you play casually. It is. It really is. Junkman is one of my favorite navies. Yeah, it's. I really like this scenario, and I like Junkman and his cross is really cool, even if it's totally useless most of the time. <laughs> yeah. It's a PvP cross, so you won't see much use of it casually. Here, I really like to draw a dark sword or a dark spreader. These fights can be a little annoying because uh, not only we are confused, but all the panels are cracked. So you can get area locked very easily. Yep, and a lot of uh, chips, as Aerithar mentioned, give bugs that uh, force movement to the back or front row. Dark Sword forces movement to the front row, which is actually really nice. Uh, yeah. Dark Mini Bomb does the opposite, and Dark Mini Bomb, you actually want to stand in the middle, so uh, it's really kind of annoying. With Dark Mini Bomb, if you're fast enough with your mashing, you can actually get it out before the bug forces you to move, but it's usually not recommended. Mashing it out, I think, is one frame. It might be two. It's, it's not very many. Oops. Almost forgot to get the... Kindness data for Junkman? I was wondering. <laughs> yes. Junkman is so much faster than the alternate scenario, which is Proto Man. It requires <laughs> you to collect the three board parts, which costs a billion zenny, and then you have to run around on the net a bunch to actually get them and then to bank them into a hoverboard. Uh, and then you can go to the undernet and do the scenario. Yeah, all of that was just because you need to go to the undernet. That's not specific to Proto Man's scenario. Yep. So you it's the can same do that any time, in fact. Yeah. Uh, it's but, a... Yeah, Proto Man's scenario requires the undernet, which requires the sea slider, requires a ton of Zenny and the board parts. Yeah, both uh, Red Sun and Blue Moon have a scenario like that that forces you to go to the undernet. Um, in Blue Moon, it's Proto. In Red Sun, it's Search Man. Both of them, it's just awful to do. This is the Junk Man fight. Uh, he summons some, you know, little bug frag things. We just call it junk. Uh, <clears throat> And some screws every now and then. Unfortunately, Dark Sword doesn't work on this guy because yes. he never comes past the back row. I was really hoping for Dark Lance there. Dark Vulcan's also terrible because he spawns things that have a hitbox constantly. Yes. Yep. And that is Junkman, and that Although, is the final tournament scenario. Dark Vulcan will hit him once uh, when. The projectiles are switching panels because they lose their hitbox briefly. Yeah. It's pretty funny. So now we are basically in the final sort of scenario, which is uh, 
what this game has been about all this time. We haven't really talked much about it because there's it's kind of just a background story until this very moment. Uh, but basically, there's a meteor that's uh, about to strike the Earth, and uh, some scientists were trying to figure out how to fix this. They launched a giant laser beam at it, and that failed. So now they've figured out that the meteor is actually a, a collection of a bunch of data. It actually has a server on it. So they're going to send a navy <laughs> to to uh, <laughs> to deal with this meteor. <laughs> the meteor is connected to the internet. <laughs> yes, yes. The meteor <laughs> is connected to the internet. Um so that was the whole point of the last tournament we did was the winner would be sent to the meteor to fix the or to redirect its path um <clears throat> but actually the person who came up with this plan has a, a different plan in mind uh and is actually evil all along etc etc I'm glad that chat is enjoying that plot development. Uh, <laughs> the meteor does have really good background music. Though. I will be honest, the reason that I actually love, like, probably the biggest reason I love running BN4 is getting to the end just to listen to the music. The, it's so good. The ending music called uh, Save Our Planet is insanely good. You can walk past that lady. You, I swear, <laughs> every time we do a BN4 run and you are not the one running, you discover this for the first time. You know, it does seem familiar. <laughs> <laughs> uh, funny thing about this guy, so Sharo is like this big space, um like power or whatever like they're, they're technologically advanced um and you talk to that normal navi and he's like hey do you have the password and you just tell him no i forgot it or something he's like okay well here you go here's the password you don't even tell him you forgot you're just like nah <laughs> just like no i don't have it <laughs> it's like, oh okay here it is you're welcome <laughs> for uh, free access to the space program's internet yep which I guess is publicly accessible anyway, but... Yeah, I don't know what it is, it's kind of weird. But uh, right now, what is happening is the evil organization Nebula has set up a bunch of, like, internet blockades to different areas. Um, and so we're going around and destroying those blockades so that we can uh, do the thing we need to with the meteor. Yeah, also, talking about the Meteor comps real quick, uh, as with Toy Robo, one of the advantages of running the Japanese version is that we can listen to the whole song. Yes. Yes. And knowing Kamari, Kamari has some phenomenal movement, so uh, I, I don't expect too many mistakes, uh, which means we will definitely get to listen to the whole soundtrack and won't even have to deal with any uh, space abnormalities either. I mean, we all know I'm gonna get an encounter in there now. You'd be sad if the thing doesn't happen. <laughs> You're gonna be sad if the thing... We'll talk about the thing when we get to the comps, because uh, it doesn't really make too much sense otherwise. It might, it might not even happen. It's yeah. the, thing, the thing. The thing. The thing about the thing is that it might not even happen, so... <laughs> It's unfortunate, but it's just the way it is. And so that is all of the blockades taken care of. And then we find out the signal is coming from uh, a place in Park Area 3 that we can only, or Park Area 1 actually, that can only be accessed through dun dun dun, the Undernet. <gasps> so this is our one trip through the Undernet in BN4. Wait, does it just like send you the under undernet without the requirements? It's a separate version of the undernet that you can't access most of the undernet. It's just like a casual stroll through it. Uh, 
Like, you're basically literally walking over the undernet the whole time just to get to Park Area 1 uh, yeah. separately. You have the ability to fight encounters in Undernet 1 and 2, and I think one GMD can potentially spawn on the path in one of the areas. But you can't actually get to the proper Undernet or explore or anything, it's just a straight line. Just reminded me of those internet security companies that try to sell, like, dark web security scans. <laughs> I actually messed up the movement there. Crazy. This comp can be... <laughs> kind of maze-like. <laughs> I just... I, I saw your mistake after a second, I was like, hmm, yes, that is not the right way. Uh, but I yeah, this... the cut too early. Yeah, this comp... is very weird and kind of maze-like if you don't know the correct path through it. There's also a hidden path up to the, the top right that yep. leads to a heal navi that gives you Gundel Soul 2. The undernet theme is also really good in this game, in my opinion. Yeah, it is. Every... I love being 4's soundtrack. It's so good. They're all good, but 4 is my favorite, for sure. A shame we don't get to really hear it for too very long so fast, especially when you're going straight through and no encounter. Yep. Very bad dragon. At least these enemies are all grounded for dark speed. Yes. <laughs> and that is the last virus fight of the of the game that is forced yep. that is forced because the game's over because this navi blows up and kills me oh never mind yeah uh that navi pulls the whole aha it was a trap all along and then he self-destructs and your friends come in and save you yep your dad sent your friends with gigantic barriers because he knew this was gonna happen uh and they show up just in time to protect mega man why didn't he just yep. send Mega Man with a barrier then? Uh, I had stupid plot. Reasons. I think he didn't want to like alert the bad guy that he knew was bad this whole time, that he knew what was going on. Okay, this but anyway. slaps. Ooh. Yes, exactly. Here we go. It's so good. Here we go. Save our planet. Meteor comps. Uh, I'll quickly describe what you have to do. Basically, there's these numbered panels on the floor. You just have to walk through each of them in the particular order. If you do it in the wrong order, you get sucked up into a black hole and sent back to the beginning and you have to redo it all. That's you can this mash to get out of the black hole. I didn't know that casually, so I had to do them all without getting the black hole the I first think, time I played this. I think, yeah, the black hole is something that happens if you take too long doing this. Um, it's like, but I think there's something it's separate. It's super weird because think, it's not specifically the step counter, but it's not specifically just waiting either. So yeah. I think if you don't move, it won't happen. Uh, there's also a what's it called? Um, there's like that's that was the thing that Arthur was describing was the thing that happens after a while. But there's a separate thing which I believe happens when you step on them out of order, and you cannot mash out of that from my memory. You just get sucked up uh, immediately. Yeah, if you do them out of order, it just it just resets you. And now we leave you with this amusing, amazing music. It's the best. The encounters in here are pretty annoying, though. If you happen to get them, they 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 have some really bad viruses in this count. Yeah, black hole eats you. It literally pulls you in. And... It just dumps you back harmlessly at the start of the area. You know, just black hole things. Yeah, Even so... that little hiccup there might be enough for the thing to happen. Yeah. It really isn't, but it might be. It's the really move... tight to get it to not happen in this area. The movement in this comp is super tight for it. Nope, so right now we're gonna fight Laser Man. We're actually gonna fight three bosses. Uh, not exactly in a row, but kinda. Yeah, it's three yeah, boss it's fights. Also, um, I did not press too. A there. That was a good try. 
<laughs> it was, but I... <laughs> Wait, who's that? Oh. Uh, I got you that can just hide behind for this fight, but... Uh, Dark Spreader's bug is that you need <laughs> It's fine. <laughs> What? That's so, that is so impressive. Honestly, one of the reasons is that I'm kind of nervous, so I'm mashing a bit faster than I'm used to. Oh, that's fair, that's fair. So, yeah. But everyone who's played BN4 casually remembers the double Cirque Gunner encounter. We can skip that, it's not going to happen. Yes. Also, my favorite boss in the game right now, uh, Dark Mega. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Oh, you start. need the HP amount! Let's go! Yes. Unfortunately, I just missed. It's we also okay, he just fine. hit from the back. <laughs> it's fine, so, it's fine. Dark, so Meta, Dark, Dark Mega helped me a lot. So Dark Mega just Dark Sorted you, and then Life Sorted you. <laughs> yes. And now... Once we beat Dark Mega, we're actually locked out of using Dark Chips from now on. Well, and we just only have to fight the final boss, Duo. So now we have to do this fight without Dark Chips. Uh, which means our best tool is literally just our boss tool. It's the Mario. fastest way to do this fight, unless you open draw all three swords for Life Sword, is Buster only. Yep. Because opening the custom gauge to dig for Life Sword is slow. So it ends up still just being faster to do Buster on me. So, so if you only find the three swords on like the first turn where you have to open it anyway? Yep. Yep. And you you can take some chips on the first turn if you want. You Usually. can technically take things like uh, Bar Sword, Twin Fang, which would effectively change, save like a charge shot because they do over 100 damage. Um, Airhawk does not work at all because he's floating on nothing, and Airhawk needs panels. Yeah, so uh, this, this fight actually makes like every tool the N4 gives you less good. Mm -hmm. Airhawk just doesn't work. Lobbed projectiles like Minibomb just don't work. Um, Pile Driver does half damage because uh, part of the PA spawns behind the enemy, and there's no panels back there for it. And uh, that kind of covers all of the super strong I, place. I, I, is right when Kamari, the, the boss starts blowing up, so very soon. I know. That is BN4. Very nice. GG. And yeah, that was, that was pretty solid. Did get a little scary at the end, especially given that we don't have undershirt in, so uh, I think I think he might have been one or two hits off death at the end. Um, yeah, uh, he didn't was grab one hit shirts. if it was, uh, if it was like the hands attack, the one he, he punches the ground or the one he double punches the, uh, but it was two off the, the missiles or the bombs that he Oh, throws. I don't even consider those. <laughs> yeah. Well, I sometimes use those, uh, to get iframes and I get hit by the other one. But yeah. Uh, yeah I opt to just not take damage. Cause yeah, that's of course. That but... also is a very good way to begin. <laughs> but sometimes taking damage lets you do more damage. That's, exactly. That is true. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Uh, this was PN4. Again, I am very sorry I didn't hit the frame. But yeah. Uh, was overall a very solid run. BN4 is, in my opinion, one of the best speedruns in the series. Because it's really, really consistent. Uh, you don't get encounters, you use dark chips, which are really broken. And yeah, it's a really short game compared to the other ones. So yeah. Yes, BN4 uh, is definitely, in my opinion, one of the better speedruns in the series. Uh, even as someone who doesn't necessarily like BN4 as much casually, I think the, the speedrun is very solid. It's a very optimized route, not really too much to do, and they, like, there's not too much RNG to it. Most of the RNG boils down to, did you get a good dark chip? Which is honestly not that bad, so if you are interested, definitely would recommend BN4 to newer runners, potentially, because it is one of the easier ones to pick up.
Yes, and there's also the option to do set seed, which makes it even easier. So yeah. Yeah, thanks for uh, showing that off for us. Uh, thanks real for quick, the opportunity. Do you have any shoutouts before we wrap things up and move on to the last one? Uh, shoutouts to Jamik and shoutouts to Speedruns Brazil. That's all. Thanks so much for doing the run for us. It was a good showcase. Uh, we have Thank one you. more Battle Network game to show off tonight. It's going to be Battle Network 5 Arbitrary Code Execution run by Rish. So we're going to be getting that ready soon. But as a quick announcement, for well, we're going to take a break here before, between games. The SGDQ 2021 live schedule just went online. The online schedule just went live on the website. So you can go to gamesdonequick.com slash schedule. You can see how the actual schedule for the event coming up in July is while we're taking a quick break here in between games. Once again, we'd appreciate it if you would consider subscribing to the channel as Hotfix is funded in part thanks to your subscriptions and bits. We're going to take a quick break here. We'll be back in a few minutes with Battle Network 5 Arbitrary Code Execution, so stay tuned. Hello everyone and welcome back to the Community Spotlight. We are here for our final round of the night, Mega Man Battle Network 5, any percent with arbitrary code execution. That's what that ace means up there in the corner if you're not familiar. And just as a quick reminder, this has been our Mega May show. We do one of these every year. Uh, we're potentially looking at doing another uh, showcase of Battle Network later after this because they had more games they wanted to show. Imagine that, not being able to fit everything in one night. But we'll, we'll get to that at a later point, most likely. And uh, just as a quick reminder, if you would consider subscribing to the Games Done Quick Twitch channel, we would greatly appreciate it, as Hotfix is funded in part thanks to your subscriptions and bits. But Rish, Marco, Tara, how are you all doing today? Oh, I am doing fantastically. I'm back from BN4 and now ready to try and showcase this uh arbitrary code execution shenanigans what about you tara i'm looking forward to the run this is <laughs> i'm looking forward to marco trying to explain it before you <laughs> do it <laughs> yeah i'm mentally preparing myself for uh, trying to make this make sense so on a scale <sighs> of one to ten how much sense is this going to make to a casual observer it uh, depends on, so if the scale is one makes absolutely no sense, a zero, uh, it's just, <laughs> oh, wow. okay. it's, it's, this is, it's, it's going to be funny uh, at the beginning. We're basically just going to be playing the run normally for a little while. Uh, and then eventually, uh, we're just going to start doing things that make it, it makes sense when you know what's happening. But like, when you think of the objective Does of it? hit the credits, it makes zero sense. Like a negative 478? Or however yeah, much winning? Yeah, something like that. Oh. Do you like counting chat? We'll be counting later. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of counting in this run. <laughs> Hardest part of the run. <laughs> but but to be fair, the first uh, first hour or so is actually going to be not too different. So we do get to see a little bit of the, the B and 5 stuff. And it's got a liberation mission, so we're going to see some cool new content. Yeah. Yeah, that is the nice thing about this, is we get to see some of what BN5 is. Liberation missions are super fun and like are actually a big reason for playing BN5. And then suddenly everything's just going to go haywire and I will be uh, doing things that make no sense. So you're going to hang out with a lot of the best Navvies and in Team Colonel, Nightman, Shadow Man. We're going to see a lot of Nightman and we're going to see quite a bit of Shadow Man too. All right. Well, I think part of the fun of this is going to be the nonsense, so we shouldn't probably explain this too much, but yeah. I think you've got some stuff you wanted to show before we start the run. That is correct. So, uh, because this is arbitrary code execution, it does involve some, like, essentially payload writing. Marker could probably describe a bit more of what that is, but I'm going to quickly show off what the payload is. Basically, this is the crossover battle menu, and... We just typed in a name and a description here. So this has already been pre-set up. We don't have to touch it. Uh, <clears throat> but this is the payload that we are going to be writing uh, that will allow us to do some stuff. 
And yeah, That's... I don't know if you want to describe Marco like what this potentially means, but that's the code. Yeah, um, <laughs> that's the code. Go. This is one of two reasons we're on the Japanese version, right? Crossover battle was unique, right? The JP or is it on English? It's on English. Yeah, it is on English. Okay, but but uh, the reason we're on Japanese is because to set a lot of this up, we have to do a JP exclusive glitch. Mm -hmm. Yes, that is correct. So in order to load this into the correct memory addresses, I need to open this menu specifically and then back out. And now we're all set up. Nice. Uh, <clears throat> so I think with that, uh, this game does have another like one frame window on startup, but it's way less important than it was in BN4. So when we do the countdown, I will do a soft reset and try to hit that frame, but it won't be nearly as, like I won't do too many soft resets to actually get it. Okay. Yeah, soft reset. Oh, alrighty then. So I think we get to get started real soon. Yeah, whenever you're ready. All right. Uh, I think Tara did a countdown earlier. So Marco, please give me a countdown if you don't mind. All right. Five, four, three, two, one. Good luck, gamer. Thank you. All right. That was more numbers than I expected from you. I I have to show off how good I am at counting. Well, it's being five, so you got to start from five. That's too shame. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Bruce is a big fan of superstitions and feng shui, so he likes starting on specific audio cues and sending in specific locations. This will be a recurring theme. <laughs> yes, <laughs> this is very correct. Uh, <laughs> for the record, the uh, audio cue is actually a double audio cue, double frame perfect that I have to hit. And all it does is set up the first set of GMDs to potentially have more Zenny. That's all. So I could do a small rant on GMDs if I have a moment. Go ahead. Uh, with the Battle Network series, each game they tried to do something different with most of the mechanics in the game. Green Mystery Data's in Battle Network 1 were determined when you pick them up. Uh, this is true for BN2 as well. In BN3, they put GMDs in a separate RNG that gets set uh, when you jack into the computer, kind of like Rich just did here, and then it re-rolls it whenever you pick one up. And then I know in five and maybe in four as well, when you go onto the internet, it sets the contents of all of the GMDs on the internet. So, uh, uh, and then that's like when you jack in and it depends on the RNG and starting in three, there were two different RNGs. And as it progresses from four five and on, the RNGs advance more aggressively. So the fact that it's gotten to the, the point that they, they found even a window of reasonable GMD frames. Uh, and as Rich said, it takes two separate audio cues in order to even line it up. Crazy. Yeah, at best, it results in me getting like 1100 Zenny from GMDs, which is actually really nice. Uh, but uh, the frame actually has some decent side frames that are good enough. Uh, I only need 200 Zenny, ideally, from GMDs in order to be able to do the route as I should. At least this is better <clears throat> than being 4 where if Rish is off, he didn't lose 30 minutes. Yeah. Also, a very nice... You mean with, like, Protoman and BN4? Yeah. yeah. Like, uh, trying to line up tournaments as opposed to... Oh. So, Battle Green Mystery Data in HD's areas can contain either Zenny or Bug Frags. Normally both would be good. The funny thing about this category is for BN5, there's a Navi Customizer program later on called Auto Run, which is super <laughs> nice, but it's only relevant in the later parts of the game. Or you, you can't get it until the later parts of the game. Um, we, won't, we won't quite go that far. Yeah. The regular Any% percent Run also needs to get eight Bug Frags so that you can get Auto Run. Uh, which I've gotten two of already, actually. That's funny. But you're but not the regular any percent run. I, I am. This is not a regular any percent run. Far from it. Yeah. Uh, also, GMDs have two possible spawn locations. Each of them do. So 
Chris will sometimes check a dead end, and he's just looking for GMDs. Oh, is that why you turned around back there? Yeah. Yep. Okay. I, f I, I really liked... Um, I submitted a run of Battle Network 3 to Speed Demos Archives I was like years ago. <laughs> yeah. And one of the reviewers said, uh, I like this run, but the, the runner makes a lot of wrong turns. Like, he gets lost at the start of the game. And it's because <laughs> I was trying to find the GMD. <laughs> If you don't know that, it looks like you're... Oh, he went the wrong way again. Jeez, Terra, don't get lost. What the heck? S silly speedrunner. Doesn't know where he's going. Yeah. Nice play. Thanks. Oh, the Super Matar fight. Yeah. This is actually <laughs> the funny fight that you can't run away from. Just crack uh, out. Oh. I well, you can run away me. from it. It just yeah. requires 400 max HP, which is way beyond everything. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> yeah, that specific fight, for some reason, uh, is just more powerful than any other fight in the area. Every other fight, I have like a 75%, and now actually a 100% run chance. Uh, but that specific fight is just coded weirdly, that its battle level is high enough that you need 400 max HP to have a guaranteed run chance. And even, like, so normally I have a 25% chance to run away from it right now. It just makes no sense. I wonder yeah. if, um, Your ability... I wonder if that uh, that specific encounter appears in another area, and it yes, got, like, uh... misflagged because of it. I mean, the fact so... that it's just two Metars is kind of weird. Yeah. Uh... They're just built different. <laughs> <laughs> Every encounter has a associated value of a level and your ability to run from fights starting in BN3 is exclusively based off your max HP and I, it's different depending on the encounter so I think this was all just manually entered and they probably just wrote the wrong value because there's no reason for that to be as high as it is because mm. they even like did cool things where um, after you beat an uh, area and clear the liberation mission if you revisit a previous area it'll actually put in stronger viruses so they do like update the encounters as the game progresses uh, but that one just doesn't make sense yeah right now i'm running around inviting my friends to uh go to my dad's lab with me and while i'm doing that i'm also stealing, stealing some everything. random data from all over the place getting some reg mems some hp memories some zenny uh so yeah, that, that's what we're doing right now. So an interesting thing to note about the Japanese version of this game is the, like, your friend's HP comps are actually different in the mm. Japanese version. In, uh, the, like, the worldwide release outside of Japan, they were all pretty Did you just generic. Jack they into look a tree? Yes, he this sure is did. a tree. He's yep. gonna jack into a squirrel lighter, so. <laughs> mm -hmm. If that's what it takes. If that's what it does. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that when you sent me the the screenshot folder. <laughs> oh, I forgot to. This one also has something I need. We're gonna have to refer to that when it comes up, since it'll be in Japanese text and people won't see it. I I would watch the cutscene, but it doesn't matter because <laughs> we can't read the text. Yeah. I wouldn't even know which text box it is. All right, so that, uh, with that, we just collected everything I need to, and now evil organization has taken over the internet. The cutscene is, is actually basically out of a sitcom because Dad says, I forgot something in my desk. Land's like, I'll go get it. At that time, everybody gets knocked out. They go in to try and steal everyone's PETs, and they're like, where's Land? Guess he's not here. And that's the only reason you have this game. Yep. Because <laughs> Land was slightly off screen at the time. Yeah, he's just hiding in a corner, and the bad guy from last game, Dr. Regal, shows up, and it's just like, he's alive. What? Wait, why are all these people here? <laughs> but like, Lan isn't. What? I, I expected Lan to be here. <laughs> no matter. I'm sure that he's not hiding just behind this corner over here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's no way Mega Man will foil my plans twice. Oh, I need this copy damage over here. I'm more evil this time. <laughs> yeah. All right. First forced fight coming up. 
There's also a gigantic door in our way that we can't do anything about yet. Well... <laughs> hmm. And that was about normal for me. Oh, we don't rig a guard? Not worth it? Yeah, you can. I am a big proponent of uh, just get lucky. Zenny is a good drop. We need a lot of Zenny for this particular route. This particular route needs a ton of Zenny. I'm actually going to have to grind Zenny later. Just to make this whole thing work. Really intimidated that B tank. Yeah. Showed him his boss. Did you just lie to your mother? Uh, maybe. How could you? Listen. Star Force Geo does it all the time. Uh, <laughs> I'm just bring, bringing it back to this game. So now that our dad's been kidnapped, I can just go steal his ID without any repercussions like we would have in, uh, well, I guess in BN1, you still don't have any repercussions for doing it. It's the same idea, though. We just go steal our dad's ID so we can run around the Scilab freely. Snip, snip. Snip, snip. Isn't that, like, a really bad idea, given that your dad has clearance to a lot of really powerful stuff throughout the series? Absolutely. It's okay. It's Absolutely. Two-factor authentication, we won't be able to log in anymore. Two-factor off? You think they have two-factor off? You've seen the passwords in this car. <laughs> Even I've if there was the two-factor through... off, we just jack into his phone and get it. Isn't the next comp literally, like, breaking passwords? Yeah. <laughs> That's true. The supercomputer in BN2 that controls all of Electopia, first password's cat. So. <laughs> <laughs> um... So I'll briefly talk about it, because it is relevant to this route. Um, I just picked up a GMD that had a cannon star. How do I know it's a cannon star? Uh, because I clearly read fluent Japanese. Actually, it's because it's the only star-coded chip in the GMD drop. You already got it? <laughs> yeah, I did get it. What's uh, this guy? The cannon star is necessary later, potentially, in order for the arbitrary code execution setup to work. Assuming I get a little unlucky. Oh, is it because, like, depending on the damage you get? Yeah, it's based yeah. on the damage value of uh, of the Nightman ship. Crazy. What I just said will make sense later, don't worry. <laughs> Hopefully it'll make sense. <laughs> Hopefully. We'll try. Uh, left three. No, wait, that is left three. Alright, one... Yeah, so my notes have to tell me, like, which ones to grab, because I have no idea what these characters say. Alright, so that's comp one. But yeah, the, for the record, the, uh, the gimmick here is just swap the characters to make the passwords. The progs give you a hint, but I don't need the hints, because I'm just a god, clearly. He's got the uh, official guidebook. Yep. Sneaker and expires. We use another one. We can talk a bit about... Wait, which one is this? Sneak runs. Since I don't think we've used it... Yeah, we haven't used it in any games today. If you don't mind explaining one of you. I'm waiting for Marco. <laughs> what? Why me? <laughs> Uh, sneak runs are like repels in Pokemon, you... except they work off of uh, your battle level, so like your max HP. Uh, so if you have a high enough level, you will just not get encounters in certain areas. Uh, a lot of the time save in 5 it comes from just sneak running in areas. Yep. Yes, every, by the way, every Zenny drop that we get is very nice because it means we have to grind a little bit less. And early on, we still need some random Zenny just for the regular route as well. 
That's even with the, like, 1100 that you, you manipulate? Well, that I tried to manipulate. I only got 550 from it, but... Oh, uh, okay. But 550 is good enough, is the thing, so... I'm not, like, I'm not upset with that at all. Realistically, I only need 300 from that manipulation. It's just, if I hit the frame perfect one, it gives me 1100. Next up, we have Colonel, the first boss. Speaking of sneak runs, when you get swapped to land there for the cutscene, land is currently using your sneak run as you walk in the, the overworld. Yep. Uh, reg this, and then what? Sort by attack, was it? Yeah, we'll go with it. Alright, so this is Colonel. He's gonna move four times and then attack, hopefully from the front row, so I can get a counter hit with a sword. It was not in the front row. Ooh, very nice. Is that giving you a full synchro like in four as well? Yes. Uh, no, not quite. It's just straight up counter hits. Yeah, it's a, it's a counter hit, just like we were doing a little bit in BN4. True, but 4 had random synchro that we can't explain. <laughs> <laughs> 5 doesn't. <laughs> just making sure we get that distinction. <laughs> yep. I like how both Reesh and I were caught off guard by that. Because <laughs> I, I, I forgot about it. I wasn't expecting it again. <laughs> <laughs> Arathar made the same joke. It is obligatory. Alright. So coming up is the first liberation mission. Of the entire game. One of you guys want to describe how liberations work? Yeah. Marco, you want me to or you too? Um... Uh, you take this one. So liberations were uh, unique concepts specific to BN5, and uh, it puts you in control of a party of navvies, team of Colonel here. And at the start, we just have Mega Man and Colonel, but as we play, we get more members. And each navvy uh, can move across this kind of grid of tiles, and some of them are nebula tiles. Uh, they're purple, so you know it's evil. And you can liberate that tile, which will start a timed battle. You have three turns. The custom gauge opens automatically when it fills in order to defeat all of the viruses in the fight to liberate that panel. Uh, if you do it in one custom gauge, it's a one turn liberation, which also has a side effect of liberating all of the panels around you, which can be nice, as well as each Navi has a kind of unique ability to liberate a different shape of tiles. So it's kind of like this top layer of strategy. And as you get into fights, then it's the standard battle network combat. All the navvies have your same folder, uh, but each navvy that's not Mega Man also has a signature chip. So. Yep. Also, just to quickly touch on US versus JP. In the US version, there are fewer maps in some of the later dungeons, uh, and because these maps were taken out, some BMDs were moved to other locations. So, for example, a uh, <clears throat> a mystery data in one of the ship comps later on had a reg up two in JP that was moved to Yai's HP uh, in the US version. Because of this, in the US version, we could actually have enough reg up to reg copy damage for this liberation, which is really nice. I would actually prefer to have that, but we don't have that in the JP version, so I am stuck with guard on reg. It's not that much worse. Also, did it's... you reg glitch anything? No. Not worth it? Uh, I For this, I want guard regged specifically for Colonel, 
uh, so that I can uh, do the Blizzard Man fight consistently. I like that as well. So for this fight, I'm looking to draw a uh, an A-coded chip, specifically Cannon A, because that's the only one. Or uh, Air Shot also works, because it gives me a counter hit if I actually hit that correctly, but I missed it. Uh, Guard 1A actually gives you a guaranteed counter hit on these guys, which is really nice. Oh, also, Liberations have the best music. So, there you go. Yeah. For the tiles, you can see kind of the big roots and stuff moving around on the field. Um, whenever you fight one of them, it's just them. So honestly, that can often be better than a random encounter. Because you know exactly what it's going to be. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the dark holes that... Rish just liberated are where they spawn from, and you have to clear all of those in order to have access to the boss, the Dark Void. Uh, and then other panels can sometimes have items on them, which is mostly irrelevant. Some of them contain order points, which lets us use more abilities. Others are health, which is nice but not necessary, etc. So, whatever. I was trying to be really fancy with this. I liked the effort. Unfortunately, the uh, the Powie or whatever they're called in this game decided to not play nicely. So we're actually going to wide sword here. It's actually not necessary, especially if we get a one turn, but the wide sword prevents that guardian guy from attacking us, uh, which means we save the time from an animation. Yep. Because otherwise he'll move towards you and then attack. And keeping him where it is saves the animation and also means that we can fight him, which again is better than a random encounter. Mm -hmm. I was just did to get the buster up there. Yeah, you also do get a chip there guaranteed, which is buster up. And it is pretty nice to just throw that in the folder. Especially I, for this route. I, I like your guys' strat better. Than, um, <laughs> Dark code. So this is why I wanted cannon earlier, because this just works out really nicely. As Tara mentioned, these fights can be very consistent because it's just the one guy. Go for the major hit. Go for the major hit. No. I'm so sad. What is Terra <laughs> trying to bully you into doing? Uh, a strat that only really he does uh, nowadays, but it, it's actually just kind of like an older strat in general. Uh, you see that little question mark panel? Mm -hmm. It's like a little above where I currently am. Basically, when you talk to it, it will be liberated guaranteed, uh, but it has like a bonus effect that you get from it. So it can give you a battle chip or order points, or it can do a major hit, which hits an enemy, such as the boss that we're about to fight, for some amount of damage. And as a result, we could start the fight coming up with less damage to deal to him, but it's also a little slower. There's also a very nice consistent way that Terra does to always get it, because it's like a two frame window. You just gotta time it a little bit. It's four, four frames. frames. Yeah. Uh, do it for the content. Yeah, no. it, it's not necessarily, well, it, it's it's slower than just doing the fight well, Yeah. but if you hit it, um, it makes it easier. It makes it more consistent. And yes, it's better content, but Rish is too busy going fast over here. I've never done it before, so I don't know how to do it. Oh, that's fair. Practice it, so you can do it next time. 
Or just like close your eyes and press A. <laughs> you know, that works. <laughs> I, was, I was surprised <laughs> well, to hear Tara say, oh, that's fair. And then he quickly recovered it by telling you to practice. <laughs> <laughs> Like wow, that's not the answer I expected. Uh, that's that's definitely not a Terry answer. I will not deny. <laughs> All right. All right. So that was for the first liberation mission, which is generally very consistent and overall pretty easy. And next up is the Nightman scenario. Also has a really good, funny cutscene if we were able to read the text boxes, but uh, sadly we do, do not have such an ability. I was trying to remember why I go over here. My muscle memory told me to. Reason is we uh, are buying a dark chip. Unlike Whoa. being, unlike being four, where you get dark chips with based on your mood. Uh, dark chips are something you buy and actually put into your folder in BM5. <clears throat> so, we just bought Dark Sword Z. And uh, we're going to make a lot of use out of this Dark Sword for sure. That's illegal. <laughs> <laughs> we also need a certain number of sneak runs for upcoming. Yeah. Wait. Okay. I kind of threw a little bit, but that's fine. Just get lucky. I still need 220s any after this point so that I can buy an item that's story required. Did you buy too many or did you buy that? I bought one extra that I technically don't need but can still use. Uh. Oh, wait. Did you not wait for the Zenny reward? the Zenny reward? No. Not on that fight. It's only like a thousand. It's not oh, a huge okay. deal. Uh, well, there's 500 Zenny you could get, right? Off the side I, as well? There is one that results in you getting Liz Killer. Also, we're fine. I just, like I said, just get lucky. Oh, uh, <laughs> um, so yeah. Basically, you could do one extra fight, but it would result in you doing the liberation one turn slower, which means you wouldn't get Blizzard Man SP, you would get Blizzard Man regulars chip. Uh, Is that not enough for double kills in an SP? Um, it's just, it makes like the very slightest of difference. I don't think it's a huge deal. Because you if you're going for Zenny, you could essentially get the 500, pass another turn, yeah. get 1500 Zenny. But yep. Blizzard Man SP. I mean, Blizz, man, uh, Rish will probably put it to good use in draw comps when we get there. Yes. A oh, shout out to that Mr. Prague. He's got one of the best quotes in Battlefront. <laughs> in Japanese, so we can't see it, but talk to him on English, see what he says. Yep. Wait, are you oh, still four yeah. bug frags? Yeah. Are you sure you don't <laughs> want to just do any percent? <laughs> I this happens every time I do this ace route is uh, I end up with eight bug frags like stupidly early. It's just the game rubbing it in. Yeah, exactly. The game is like, huh, you're not gonna play me the normal way? How dare you? I'm gonna give yeah. you what you would want otherwise, and not what you currently want. Right. What I like when you... Jagoomba does a run and gets sixteen bug frags in any percent. Oh gosh. What if you did the payload and then just did any percent to trick the game? That would be genius. That would be genius. There's some subtle differences. I mean, maybe you could just decide, like, eh, actually, this is ace. Or, ah, this is not ace. I mean, you I do I... ace and then go beat the final boss. After <laughs> two hours. Yep. Or Zenny is good. Definitely don't have enough Zenny to buy the HP memory early, which I could do right now. There's a shop. Ooh, wait, maybe. Hold on. Ow. Might have spoken too soon. Give him Airhawk. Do it. Oh, that guy. Oh, you uh, clearly have not done this fight before. <laughs> I know. I have, no, I have done this fight before. I did that exact thing before. That's why I moved to the back, seeing if it would work. Uh, Rush did not use an e-reader code. 
The only add-on you need for this is the wireless adapter. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Hideo Kojima for making Ace possible. <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> you heard him. Context? <laughs> so the menu you use to input the payload for Ace is only in the game because of a crossover with a Hideo Kojima game for the Game Boy Advance Boktai. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> so, it's really funny because Marker wrote up a nice paste bin thanking like all the people who helped with the routing. People like, you know, Prof, GM, Lucky. Uh, <laughs> and then threw one solid shout out to Hideo Kojima for wanting to make a, ch a kid's game. <laughs> Oh wait, I have to talk to Dex first, that's what I'm doing. The the journey to get to Ace has a a long and storied history. Correct. Shout outs oh. to Number Man. <laughs> I I <laughs> I have been working on Ace on and off for like what two years? Just... Two or three. Yeah. yeah. Forever. It has been a while. And then suddenly, just had it all work out. I still think the uh, the timers idea would have been absolutely hilarious. I'm, I I've explained the the total control method to you, haven't I? Yeah. <laughs> I'm still working on that. It's a little crazy. Uh, what do I do with this idea? I'm trying to remember. I do remember now. I set this up so that I can actually do the um, later Navi Cust edit. Alright. So I mentioned earlier about not having enough reg ups, uh, because in the JP version, a reg up 2 doesn't exist until a later comp. So this required me to grab two extra reg up 1s, one of which I've already grabbed, and the other of which is right here. Didn't they move one of them to the doghouse? No, the doghouse one always exists. It's the one that got moved to Yai's. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. So just real uh, quick, over the last like 15 minutes or so, a lot of people have asked about what Ace is. And uh, Ace is arbitrary code execution. It's going to let uh, Rish do very, very broken things to the game, is the, the simple explanation that will leave it being a surprise for you. Yeah, we're, we're kind of mostly leaving it as a surprise for right now, because explaining it now will not help you understand it later. Like, guaranteed. So, we're, we're just kind of leaving it as a little bit of a surprise for now. And, uh... Yeah. Mostly, well, it's easier to show. So, yeah. as we do things, we'll explain them. Can it's I get much some easier context for why we're on this island, though? I've actually never watched any of these cutscenes. Uh, so because Nebula took over the internet, uh, school got cancelled, right? Uh, okay, cool. And, be and because of that, uh, we're just kind of laying around bored. Our friends don't have their net navvies because all their PETs got stolen. And so they were just like... Uh, Yai was just like, hey, you know what sounds fun? Let's go explore a remote island that used to be a mine. That sounds like a great time. And then uh, the ground and opened up. Yeah, and then when we started exploring the mines, the ground just opened up and swallowed them. All our friends fell into a hole. Yep. They're and, fine, though. And, well, they're, they're currently uh, right below a giant drill. They, but they're uh, fine. But they're fine, they're fine. Uh, oh, I didn't do the folder edit yet. Aha. That's fine. Let's actually do the folder at this time. So after the next liberation mission is when all the stuff is gonna start happening. So yes, so, thirty minutes from now or something. How did I do this? The thing? the main components are access to Orin area, uh, nightmare, a liberation from which to rob, a specific amount of HP which will be easier to hit, and then. We boy got him to be standing you're, really uh, good you're cutting out a little bit there tara yeah mm. this is why i like having blizzard man 
a good chip. It's a very good chip. Can I try that again, Terra? Dude. Alright, how do I, Is this any better? Yeah. yeah it sounds a little. Sounds like it. Mm. Yeah. Uh, the things that we need to set up Ace are access to a liberation mission from which to wrong war. A specific amount of HP, which will be easier to get with a Navi customizer and some extra parts. Uh, Nightman uh, battle chips, which we can get after we do the drill comps, because that's where we can fight Nightman and then fight V2 and Omega. Uh, and then Shadow Man. We'll be standing in a very specific spot. Nice fight. I was so close to doing it the cool way. <laughs> <laughs> so. Someone might be asking, why would you get the dark ship and then just not use it there? Because it would have been really good. Uh, the answer is, I'm managing my karma. Because karma management is hugely key to this route working. Okay. Because I'm going to get a ton of random fights, I need to manage my karma flawlessly. Well, what's karma, Rish? Uh, karma is a underlying mm -hmm. system that we kind of talked about a little bit in BN4. It's a sort of counter that goes up when you don't use dark chips and goes down when you do use dark chips is basically the uh, best explanation of it. Um, <clears throat> and so On rocks. it basically controls like your starting mood, whether or not you can draw dark chips, stuff like that. that that's effectively what it controls. Um, and yeah, that, that's pretty much all there really is to Karma. Are you at like a basic starting value until you use a dark chip, or is it going up every battle you're not using one? Like, how does that work? So every time he runs away from a battle, it does increase his karma if he doesn't like use a dark chip. Um, you start at the, 500. You start at mm -hmm. 500, and if you're above, uh, what is it, 480? And you use I think a it's dark a chip above 500. It's like 520. Right? I thought it was just 500. Maybe it is 500. I don't know. If you're above a, a specific value and use a dark chip, you get set to 480. And then from there, depending on your status as Mega Man, it goes <laughs> down by different amounts. I... So it doesn't matter how much get... <laughs> he's getting right now, because the first chip usage is going to set you to a known value. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's why I'm putting it off right now. Because it'll be easier to count once we start from a known value. Mm-hmm. Makes sense. At a at a later point where there's way fewer random encounters to get. Yeah. So right now, uh, we have a 75% chance to run away from these fights. We're just risking it every time. Um, I'm also looking for fights to take with a particular virus in them. Oh, I already grabbed the two GMDs in this area. Uh, so basically, we're looking for a virus called Drixels because the drill arm ship is really good in the next liberation and for some of the boss fights that we need to do. I thought they were called Lucky Typhlosion. Yes, they are named after the uh, the true uh, speaker of the drill arms. That is correct. The biggest uh, supporter of farming, grinding drill arms. Oh, you got around that rock nice. My movement is sometimes good, just wasn't good that one time. Unfortunately, Ooh. that is the right fight. <laughs> that draw was not good enough to S rank it. You actually only need an 8 rank or greater. And that results in a, a guaranteed drop from the Drixel's drop table of Drill Arm. So we just need an 8 rank. This is a really good fight, except again, I was not getting the draws. Uh, we have a bunch of swords in our folder that we're looking to draw. Um, I'm just not seeing them. Are they at the or, top, or did you sort the folder? The folder has been sorted, so Blizzard Man SP is near the top, and the attack plus 10s are at the top. So That's that fair. if we draw a sword, the sword doesn't do enough damage to kill them outright. We actually need a little bit of assistance from the attack plus 10. I was trying to think of what that chip was I just got. Airshot. Oh, it is airshot? I'm pretty sure, yeah. 
Well, that's going in the folder later, because it's a start <laughs> code. It's either that or it's life sync, and I think life sync's the one in the next comp. Yeah. No, the next comp is copy damage. I know that for a fact. I've grinded those GMBs quite a bit. I didn't actually know there was copy damage in this. Well, yeah. Why? So why is Mega Man's punching animation on these boulders just so funny? I don't know. I don't know what it is about it. Just the way Everyone's he punches while, it. Everyone's while he'll punch backwards, like behind himself, and still hit the rock in front of him. Yep. That's always very good. So I haven't gotten a single drill arm yet, which is uh, not good to say the least. But it's okay. I should be fine. Uh, if worst comes to worst, I can take additional fights in comp four. Just like eat the time loss to try and get some more drill arms. Even Is, though that uh, comp's really hard. Comp four the best? Or because you could go to one where you could get GMD at the same time. Uh, comp, comp four, four is... is the one with the GMD that has drill arms. Oh, yeah. I know what GMD you're talking about. Mm, that's a good reason too. So that was the uh, the bats drop table that I just got there. Nice coin flip. Yeah. Shadows to roll. <laughs> roll plus ten is pretty strong. That's roll plus twenty. Yeah, Even I don't stronger. Know why, I don't know why I threw the extra plus ten on there it's just to be safe, you know. For style points. Exactly. For custom points, actually. <laughs> Thanks, Shout Tara. Out to two and three. <laughs> Thanks, Tara, for a joke that you wouldn't understand if you didn't but play B and two or three. Team <laughs> points. Well, the plus ten wouldn't. The the roll definitely outweighs it. I'm shaking my head right now. You can't see. It. <laughs> Weaving our way through some rocks real quick. Hey, it was hard to make sure that the Beastman fight didn't give you a team point using roll in there. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly, my brain just turned off and I forgot how to dodge for a second. It's okay, you get held after every. Oh, wait. Wrong game. Wrong game. Let's get just draw a reek of 1000. <laughs> So, I still don't have a single, also shoutouts to Doisim Skip, just a tiny bit faster to break that rock and fall off. Was that found Shout by Doisim? Shoutouts to Doisim and Jim. I yeah, don't probably. actually know. <laughs> <laughs> probably. Can you prove that? Who knows? I'm, I'm sure it was. I'm the one who started calling it that because I'm pretty sure I watched him do it once. But it's been so long that I'm second guessing myself. Listen, name skip names in BN don't make any sense. We have slain Dion skip, and nothing will change my mind to make them True. make sense. True. True. Okay, so this fight is actually disastrous. I can't. It'd be a one in three at best. Okay, well. I mean, you could just pull Mario communities and call random tricks a dram. Ah, uh, should I just? grind encounters in this comp <laughs> to get at least like one drill in. But I, I don't know which one's better, three or four. But if you're gonna do it, you should also just check out and back in and pick up the GMDs as well. Don't do you do the, the nightman stuff before or after revisits? Hmm? The nightman oh. fights. Uh after, right? before. Before? Oh. Yeah. Also, if we do it at that point, uh, it would still be well, yeah, the encounter too be late there. because we would be getting karma as well. Oh, true. And the fights just count would better. be different. <laughs> so this is going to be a little awkward. Uh, right now, we're doing something that we don't have to do yet. But uh, this is... This is effectively how we're going to grind Zenny, but I'm also going to use this as an opportunity to try and get uh, some drill arms because drill arms are just too useful to not get. Oh, that's interesting. 
I was told you couldn't get an encounter. You can't, except I moved more because I was fighting the conveyor belt. That's how that works. I took more steps because I was trying to fight the conveyor belt. You're not normally? Yeah, with the conveyor belts off, which happens later on in the game. Oh, right. I should have just waited. I <laughs> Get some eyes in the chat. Uh, I did get one, right? I only really need two. Like, two would be fine. Thank you, chat, for the IEs. <laughs> it's important. Yeah, they were on point. With being one and the got gox. Yeah. Reminds me of Fat Kid Summoning Ritual. I'm afraid to ask. <sighs> yeah. Oh, uh... no, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not used to doing this this way. It's okay, you want encounters, right? This is fine. I do want encounters. This is helping a little bit. Alright, so this is the fight that I like Ooh. to see. Oh, that's spicy. I had to pause to make sure they weren't both gonna line up immediately. That would make that awful. Yeah. Uh, Alright, so we have two drill arms. This is acceptable. We can move on. Another... oh wait. That was an interesting chip. Uh, okay. So let's move on with the game. In all of my attempts, I've never had to grind drill arms. Would you say that's never happened before? Yes, it's never happened before. Rich, are you so okay? No. <laughs> I'm getting bullied by conveyor belts and rocks. Alright. It's just still better than Metal Man scenario. True. I pressed A. Never mind. Just... <laughs> <laughs> I pressed A and it just didn't work. I saw him posing there for a really long time before he punched it. <laughs> so all the rocks are weird. The, so the, the reason that mining used to be done here is because there's magna metal. And so the the rocks have magnets in them, and they will literally grab Mega Man, and so you can ride behind them, and they'll just pull you down with them. Yep. This is accurate. So Rush was probably actually stuck on the left rock once he broke the other one. Yeah. Wow, all this lore. Alright. We're good. Ready? We can't get any more encounters. Do you not want encounters? Not really. Uh, uh, you, you, can get, you only got two drill on. This, uh, this comp has some weird fights that are actually, like, require Blizzard Man SP if you were going to go for a drill arm from it, which well, makes But it... also, you got 100% run, right? So... Yeah, you just but it's also you got just... It in it's just time loss, though. I'm trying to save as much time as I can. Well, it's not time loss if you get drill arm. True. I mean, you should have just gotten it from the GMD there. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, uh, I should have. Reset and do it again faster. Okay. I'm on it. Alright. Coming up is the first... Well, not first. Uh, well, it is kind of the first something. This round is full of first. Oh, wait. I need to do a little bit of a full right now. Let's get You got drill arms now. You. You also got copy damages and cannon star. You got a lot of good stuff. I guess the cannon star is already in. Cancer is actually not in. But the I got Guard star? Warning. Of course not. Fuck you. Your folder's so bad. Fix it. Fine, Terra, I will fix it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Here, ready? Guard one star. Uh, where's the cannon star? Oh, wait. There's so that. many copy damages. I guess they're. You get them well... from these GMDs. Uh, anyway, I have that rigged. We're good. We're good. Pretty I'm gonna quick. save. No. No. <laughs> so this next fight is very specific. Um, Rish got uh, Dark Sword, and Nightman's got a, a, a very strong pattern that he follows. And Rish knows exactly what he's going to do. So he's going to kind of stay at the bottom, 
and Nightman's going to do this attack where rocks fall, and Rishis and Tinnish are going to get hit, because we we talked about Mood kind of in Battle Network 4, it's the same thing here, and he's got a dark chip, so all the same rolls apply, that we're going to uh, lower our mood to get to the worried states, we have a chip on reg that we can use to get a counter hit, and then hopefully we can just all string all this together and it works. And then it just works out that he's going to jump forward right now. After four attacks. And that's it. Wow. Okay, there is no 480. I love the that's dark wrong. mood you get there for a split second for Mega Man. Yep, just like nice little evil face. And yes, for the record, that did set my karma exactly to 480, chat. So if you want to help me count now, our karma is currently 480. Every time we use a dark chip from here on out, our karma will go down by four. And every time we run away from a fight, it will go up by two. Yeah, and the funny thing about going up by two is we explained that that's kind of a bug. Uh, I didn't talk about that yet, but yeah. Uh, so in the Japanese version specifically, normally if you finish a fight or run from a fight, your karma is supposed to go up by one, right? Yeah. Yep. But... In the Japanese version, if you run from a fight, whatever changes are supposed to happen to your karma apply twice. So if you use a dark chip and run, it's double. If you don't use a dark chip and run, it's double. And so we're just going to take advantage of that. To yeah. raise and lower Whatever karma. reason calls the subroutine for like calculating your karma twice when you run away, but not when you finish a fight. And yeah, only yeah. in the JP version. So weird. It, it ends up being actually really good for us. It's super useful that it does it twice. If it didn't do it twice, this whole shenanigans would take so much longer as a result. Mm -hmm. It would be literally assume, double the encounters. I assume that means you're going to use some dark chips, not kill things, and then run. Just so you get like the <laughs> minus eight. Yep. Yep. If we do it, it's like there's actually two things we're controlling. Both our karma and our health. And so getting both of those to, to line up is, well, there's a there's a lot of math and routing. So shout out to Marco Prof GM and everyone else that put that together. Uh, we have another liberation coming up, though, and we got Nightman on the team now. MVP is going to carry the team. Um, we also have a better folder. So uh, this should be, well, liberations as they go get uh, more fun to play and more fun to watch. Mm-hmm. Nightman's mechanic is that he just blocks attacks from other guardians. Uh, so if someone were to take damage near Nightman, he would just block it and you would take zero damage outside it of combat. Champ. Easy one turn. Can't stop him. He is a legend. He, he is really strong in this liberation mission. I will not deny that. His signature chip is a Kingdom Crusher. For the fans. Oh, do it! For the yeah! <laughs> Uh, so does that count as a combo? <laughs> no. <laughs> eh, it might, but... I actually don't know. It doesn't matter, because it's not going to be my most it's, recently used one. It's also about Mega Man, so... Yeah, I, I don't even know how that works since it wasn't Mega Man. <laughs> I think Prof looked into that at one point. I don't remember the conclusion. Rish did a little bit of specific positioning there. It's funny, Mega Man is actually the weakest one on this game right now. Yeah. He doesn't have a signature chip and we don't have a good uh Navicus. Uh, but the way that these enemies on the field move is dependent on the uh, I'm pretty sure it picks the closest person and then picks the closest tile to that person. And so if you're standing on like a little bit to the left or a little bit to the right, you can get enemies to move to different tiles and that'll set us up for some like better one turns later. Yep. Oh yeah. Karma doesn't increase or decrease during liberations, right? It, oh, does. it does. Oh, it does? It has yeah. gone up twice. We are currently at 482 Karma. Because we just finished a second fight. Shout out uh, to Relcoon for counting. We appreciate that. I was supposed to do this fight with Nightman, but whatever. We can, <laughs> we can make this work. Oh, Nightman's particularly good against Ten Hawks. Ooh. Flawlessly executed. <laughs> <laughs> Easy every time. 
<laughs> that that enemy had 2020 HP per second. It doesn't matter how long it takes to do those fights, just with time loss. But yeah, that was unfortunate. Um <clears throat> One of the other things man. Yeah, one of the other important things is that we are there's a couple one turns that save time because it results in Shade Man not attacking. Shade Man is the boss of this liberation, and he only attacks if a friendly character is standing next to a dark panel. Uh, so, what we do is if we get one turns in very specific locations, we just never end up next to one, and Shade Man will never attack, which will save a tiny bit of time. Yep. Uh, <clears throat> but yes, this liberation is. 100% consistent, uh, and even if I make mistakes, it doesn't lose that much time to after keep you. the 100% the same always. After you. No, after you. No, you, Einstein. The same <laughs> shuffle. So, the reason we did some very specific movement with Mega Man earlier was to line up this Tin Hawk on this panel so that we could fight it specifically with Nightman, because Nightman is the MVP. Get him, champ. Uh, I'll just do it without chips. Who needs chips? You have Nightman. Look at him. Nightman don't need no chips. Look at him. <laughs> Nightman's buster funny. hits twice behind him. It's That's normally like in... Isn't it on the left of him specifically? Like yeah, even if you turn around. And that one turn gets us order points. This one turn saves time a little bit because it means that uh what's it called we don't have to sit through one the, uh, big bird maybe. moving yeah yeah and it just worked out with the buster up that we were able to do it yeah buster up. Gar that, that draw just happened to work <laughs> so yeah that forces him over there so he can't attack us. The bird spawns elsewhere. None of that really matters because Colonel is going to one turn something here. Yes, thank you. 483. <laughs> is there a day man? Someone asks in chat. <laughs> <laughs> we get a Tayo. Tayo. All right. And Do now, we, we don't get Django at any point on this run, right? Nah, Django is a really nice chip, but not really necessary on this one. Not even for the fans. Ten Hawk. You give me the code, I'll do it. All right. Oh, that was uh, interesting. It was handled. <laughs> yeah. Yep. All right. So now we're going to do one out of the way fight with Mega Man. This is routed in, so it is expected. For money. Uh, this gives us 2,000 Zenny. Come get me. All right. Man, that reminds me of, a, I think, a Fat Kid clip, wasn't it? He was going to die to Gregar, but Django saved him with... The motorcycle? And the <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Alright, and this is the last fight we will do with Mega Man, period. In this liberation, I should say. I was supposed uh, to say, uh, ever? <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> well, this yeah. new rat's sick. I mean, uh... <laughs> it's like, we, I, uh, I don't think 44 is, or 45 is the number you're looking for. It's close, It's actually. close, actually. <laughs> really? <laughs> it's so close. With Ace, who knows? 485 is very close to the number we need. But unfortunately, it's an odd number, which is very bad. Yo, is that a drill arm? Drill arm? Wow. <laughs> so good. Right. Drill arm would normally push things back, but not if they're moving and not if they're blocked. So he's able to get a bunch of hits on both of those enemies as a result. Oh, this fight. With Nightmare. I remember it's how to do fine. this. Because we got Kingdom Crusher. 
Well, you know, this is why I made sure mm. that I had this. Oh. Come here. Okay, I, I was wondering if you're just gonna mash that out or not. Laugh if you miss. I am not that ballsy <laughs> right now. I hate failing this fight with Nightman. <laughs> it doesn't make a huge difference because we are about to do something a little odd, and it's for Zenny. Also, this is what I was talking about with Night Shade Man attacking. You can't pierce that armor. Laugh so at your efforts. We're gonna pass. Wow, speedrunner over here. Why not go ahead and access Shade Man? No difference? Because then oh, you have like Colonel's I was, I was supposed to do that at some point with Colonel. It doesn't matter when you do it. Yeah. So every liberation has a target phase. If you're two under that, you get a special reward. If you're on target or one under, you get a good reward. If you're slower than that, you just get Zenny. But in this case, we would rather have the Zenny. Yeah. It's so late in the... I say late. Technically, this <laughs> is very early. But for the route we're doing, this is very late in the run. So at this point, getting the chip reward doesn't matter. Especially Should... compared to the this is any amount being 2,000. Yep. Shade Man SP is nice it's got a good area it's a good code it can paralyze but there's not enough fights left for it to be better than 2000 Zenny. yep what's but Shade Man gonna be thinking right now like he's just what are they he's doing shaking in his boots <laughs> why aren't yeah, they doing anything face, he's about to face a night man standing there menacingly <laughs> get him night man Alright. Unfortunately, yeah, I actually like drawing swords here. Shaman okay, you'll there. get him next turn. Pattern with Nightman. He likes to come to the front very often. And while Nightman just stands there and takes it. If you hit me, I hit you. Oh. Look at that fancy. Oh. Move He's down. doing the thing! <laughs> It's been That's so hard. long since I've seen the thing. That happens to me all the time. Shade Man will try to appear behind you and drain your health, but uh, we buffered out of it, and then shouts the drill arm. Can't stop Night Man. I was terrified for a moment. I saw my life flash before my eyes. All right. So pretty much immediately following this is uh, the squirrel cutscene. Yes. And then we're going to get a little tutorial where we can learn how to use Airhawk. Has nothing to do with Night Soul. Uh, <laughs> and then we're gonna start our quest to uh, fully utilize the power of Shadow Man. FYI, this fight does not count towards your karma. For reference, this does not count towards your karma. Even if it did, Bruce would already be prepared. I, I would be well aware of it, yes. So this is supposed to be a maze. Uh, it's even more confusing in US because all the comps are exactly the same. They're a little bit longer in the Japanese version, which makes them stand out, but also means that you're more likely to get an encounter because they're also bigger. So that's up by two. Yep. So we just a run, run glitch. Yep. We run away, goes up by two. And... We are expecting. I actually actively expect to get two random encounters in this comp. But my notes have taken care of every possible situation of random encounters, assuming I don't make some dumb mistake with movement. Okay, apparently it's, it's, it's I, a big I, assumption. I got insanely lucky there and skipped an encounter. Do you not just take it anyway, or do you know you need another There's one? There's no need to take it. Yeah, it doesn't end up mattering. Yo, there right. he was. Uh, Shade Man, get a good look. He'll be back. Yeah, so we're going to take a detour first, because at this point, Higsby Shop is available, and it contains this Number Man trader. And as you enter the codes, we're going to pick up a lot of useful things that'll make our folder better. 
which we do need to rely on our folder for a couple of nightmare fights coming up. Also, Rish Marker will give you a code in chat once you get through the rest of them. Yep. Uh, and we're basically just using the number trader. We're going to get some chips. We're going to get some Navi customizer parts, put it all together. There's also the three chip trader in a couple shops, but nothing that we really want because we need to save as any for a couple of specific things. Nice one lurking. Oh. It thought that I uh, let go of the B button, so it canceled the input. I almost gave you the code for Dark Ages instead, by the way. <laughs> Is that the only, like, way you can get Dark Invis? No. You can get two copies? It comes in the eye code. I think it's part of a trade quest. Neat. Uh, alright. So that's that. We have gotten all the lotto codes. Or did you do markers? Yeah. I did that one, like, right after the code that I was in the process of doing. Cool. So I have Django. I have Django. You gotta give a shout-out to Kojima. Yes. <laughs> Course. Uh, so this is when things start to get different, right? Not yet. Okay. Uh, not really. Okay. Uh, Carry on. We we have to keep track of our karma. Can get a random encounter here, but we didn't. Uh, and then time for menuing. So we want to get rid of that. And get rid of those. All right. Uh. Yeah, you put him in. First ID sort, beautiful. And then we're gonna put in custom two, and that's it for right now. So, do your notes account for getting the bugged encounter? <laughs> well, I mean, my notes account for how much karma I have when the whole thing starts. Uh. I should have been checking GMDs, whatever. But I try to avoid this encounter. Technically speaking, I guess, yeah, there's a very small chance that I get absolutely bullied by Revise. The good thing about the bugged encounter in that area is you can sometimes have a battle GMD. Yeah. So even right. if you're sneak running, you can get some Zen. So we skipped the ACDC3 GMDs specifically because they have a chance to give me an encounter, and I would rather not get an encounter if I can avoid it. Don't we have bomb traps? They're not worth it. Uh, I say it's not worth it, but... Gosh, copy damage lasts a million years. <laughs> Do these fights count? Yes, my karma just went up by one. Because hmm. uh, like in some of the previous Battle Over games, uh, whether or not a fight had a reward screen will change the end of fight behavior. Somebody in chat's asking what a bugged encounter is? Is that East stuff? Uh, no, that's just the Metzar fight we were talking about earlier. Basically, it's the one encounter that you can get technically still through uh, the sneak run that we had. Because... Yeah. It's battle level is significantly higher for absolutely no reason. Okay. So it's not necessarily bugged, but just like it doesn't make sense. Yeah. Interesting design decision if intended. Yeah. <laughs> just one double Metar fight that is obscenely high level for no reason. Yep. Uh, but we just have to hunt down some, I guess, Nebula Navis. Uh, beat them to advance the story, attacking a few different areas. We do have, uh, so we've got the Navicus, but we didn't get or use Buster Pack, uh, so we get Custom 2, which will be more useful uh, in the long run. So this is Crane Comp. Much better folder. Yeah, this is Crane Comp, which we activated a little bit ago, so we could grab that 1,000 Zenny specifically. Crazy. Yep. 
490 karma. So an another thing to, to notice about uh, karma is that normally Mega Man is just like a regular blue. If you have a thousand karma, he's a bright blue. Uh, but if you're at, when you use a first dark chip and you get set to 480, you're kind of like this darker blue. Tainted. And tainted. Yeah. Uh, at what point does that go back to regular? Is it 500 or less than that? I think it's 500, yeah. Okay. So as long as he's this darker uh, blue, you know that his karma is below 500. Uh, there's another threshold where if your karma gets low enough, you start fights as Dark Mega. And so we kind of use those as points of reference. Okay, now this is different. This is not, <laughs> not part of it. Yes. Uh, once you beat Navi, they're kind of V2. Well, your team Navis will kind of hang out on the internet and you can fight them. So this is Nightman V2. And the V2s have like a fixed drop table after this fight. Uh, we always get Nightman V1. And it will uh, allow Rish to then fight Nightman V3. Is it V3 or? Yeah. And then once you beat V3, it unlocks as a random encounter Nightman Omega. And we're going to need to fight all these different versions of Nightman in order to acquire the different Nightman battleships, which are a key component of base. Perfect. Also, shoutouts to Drill Arm. That's why they're so good. Chris has uh, Drill Arms, Dark Sword, and Life Sword. So, okay. my karma actually just went down by four. Crazy. Dark chip. Yo, 486. Yeah, that's the number. Wow. <laughs> hey, that's the computer Do number. <laughs> yeah. So... We just have a couple more fights to take care of. We had a 46 when I was a kid. Uh oh. This is awkward. Okay. I'll use him for Kojima. Thank you. Django. Tayo. So he puts uh, an enemy first one in the row in a coffin and then does that light around it which does 150 damage to everything and it's piercing for the most part doesn't it do more damage if you're outside of an ejac and or is that a different ship mm. this is the gundel chips directly Django himself i forget i think he can do more damage somehow it might just be a matter of the uh turns passing but i, I don't oh remember. yeah that's that yeah that's right i remembered I was going to say, it's like you guarded and then air shot. And I'm like, ah. <laughs> I remembered it just a little late. <laughs> so being five specifically, those little boulders in the field. Uh, they're in other games, but this is the only one that, that you can uh, <laughs> air shot them. Hmm. I'm going to miss this. I hope you all know. We just got to iframe it. You, you got you, It'll be fine. Yeah, iframes. Oh, yeah, you're going to miss it. <laughs> I should have gone for it right away. Yeah. Oh. As expected. <laughs> uh, I, I, you know, everything was working against you. What are you gonna do? I don't know, Buster. The wind box. Okay. And then we're trying to get to Scilab area. Uh, we got one more fight, but then after that, we kind of go on a, a diversion. Actually, no, we got to get to the... Okay, yeah. Good. Oh, he, he got blocked by the bat. Yeah. Oh, your buster's so weak. That's yeah, I good. keep <laughs> thinking it's going to do 50 damage. So you digging for any drops here? Like, why are we fighting all these? Or is this just Those hard? Are forced encounters. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So now we're in Scilab area, and we basically got to get to the end, because the next liberation mission is Scilab area 3, so we're kind of just doing some reconnaissance. Rock reconnaissance. I can't do it. I can't do it. I heard that, Terra. The GMD can contain Zenny, which would be nice, but Rish is watching his karma 
Yeah, if I if I did the fight, I would be on. Fun fact, by the oh, way. Oh, an I odd number. <laughs> yeah. I'd be on an odd number. I think I lied earlier when I said that the. What's it called? Doesn't count. Mm. What is custom it? thing? It's taunting you. <laughs> Uh, I think I lied. Tutorial battle doesn't the... count? Yeah. Because the... I think... That's what makes it even or something? That's what makes it even. So... Have you already lost count of karma? It's 494. I, I don't need to count because I know how many random encounters I've gotten. I've gotten three. Okay. I mean, chat's helping. We're, we've been counting this entire time. Alright. Uh, quick folder edit. To... So, having beaten... Uh... Nightman v2, this is where Nightman v3 spawns. And this is an important fight because uh, this is your only opportunity to fight Nightman v3, and he has a different drop table than Nightman Omega. So we use this fight specifically to get Nightman DS. So Rish is, needs, a, needs an S rank or, or a high enough rank to get DS. So at least nine, but S rank is the best odds. Mm -hmm. uh, the fight goes mostly the same, but Nightman's got more health, might attack a little bit faster, but it, it, it's essentially just a damage race. It doesn't even attack faster, it just does more damage. Okay. Uh, this draw might not be good enough. Yep, so if we don't get Nightman DS, it's essentially just reset and try again. Nightman's attack, if you stand in the middle, he'll he'll shoot the Wrecking Ball at you, which is slightly faster, which is why one of, one of the reasons that Rish is going to prefer to stay at the bottom, because um, he'll always do the Rock Ball attack, and that makes it easier to kind of time out how long the fight's taking and what Nightman's going to do. Alright, well, we got Life Sword and Dark Sword, so... Yeah, but this is definitely going to be too slow. It'll at least be like a coin flip, right? It's probably going to be 9 or 10. Oh, he's armored off. Yeah. Alright. Okay, break 9. So we're, we're aiming for sub 30 without getting hits. Because we also don't have super armor, so very important to not flinch. When we reset, our karma is set back, so we're still at 494. Mm. Fast enough. Which means I need to get counter hit with Life Sword. Is Dark Sword 4 or 500? Uh, it's actually 400. 800. Ooh, and a drill line. Mm, I'm gonna do this first. Cause you could invis just to be sure that you don't. I could have done that, but... Oops. Chris That's... isn't afraid of things like I am. Yeah. That's what we'll go with. Alright. Nice. So that's 2850. that. And now we need to jack out, jack back in. <clears throat> Omegas and... will not spawn until you do that. Yep. So, now the, the way we're going to handle this, yeah, is we're going to save immediately because we've gotten DS. We need to get Nightman SP, which again typically requires an S rank. We're also going to buy four sneak runs that we'll need later. Again, save in case we get a random encounter while we do a little bit of a trip to the internet. And we'll just soft reset every time we get an encounter. Also, my karma went down by four. That so. is not Nightman. Yeah. Or do you want that GMD or was it not worth it? It was like a star coded ship. I don't actually need it. Pretty, so, Nightman's encounter chance is what, like 7%? 11. Oh, okay. You got a what second try? Yeah, yeah that's, that's pretty, pretty wild. I'm not gonna lie. It's pretty, now, yeah, now there, there's a couple options here. It's like you can run from these fights. It takes three or four turns, and then you could lock enemy, and then it becomes a fifty percent chance. 
Now that's slower than just doing the fight. Uh, but Rish needs this fight to, like, ideally you're going to draw Fast Gauge early, because we need to dig through a lot of chips and do a lot of damage, because there are two very specific time ranges that we need this fight to end in. And so, depending on how much damage the chip does when we get it, Nightman SP, uh, Ace will or will not work. So we need specific values. Oh, I didn't get the counter hit. But the damage value still works so Now we got the draw. Uh, is this fast enough? I'll we'll find out. I need to counter hit with this, so he's gonna jump. Okay. And then... That was the latest I could have gotten to counter it. Okay. Cool. Alright. <clears throat> Just too slow. Dang. It does need to be sub-30 seconds. Uh, Marco, do you remember the exact time ranges? I don't. Uh, 28 to 30 seconds, 24 to 30... or 26 seconds. That, that yeah. There you go. So, so we're 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 not going to be able to do this fight without using the dark chip. Uh, so whenever we finally do get the correct nightman SP, it will be the the 490. We can kind of anticipate that and then carry on from there. Mm -hmm. Go to 46. Uh, there's two approaches to finding nightman. Well, excluding the lock enemy is one of them is you can actually use sneak run because you will avoid all random encounters except for nightman. His level is high enough that he'll go through the sneak run. But the problem is while you're using a sneak run, every time that you get an encounter that you do sneak run from, it resets your step counter. And then you have to run a whole bunch of steps before you will get another encounter check. So yep. it ends up, I, I think, being like a little bit faster to just maintaining a high step counter and then soft resetting. Because specifically when you have the wireless adapter in, the title screen doesn't take as long as it otherwise would. So you can see how quickly Rish is cycling through all these different encounters. And again, Nightman is a... 11%, so it should take 10 resets on average. And that's a much better draw this time. Very early longsword. I want to say an early fast. The yeah, fast the is just for, like, consistency, but... Yeah. Like, technically, as long as I draw a wide sword next turn, this is fine. I mean, I, yeah, you can just top deck everything you need, and it doesn't matter, but... Yeah, I can just get lucky on a fast gauge. That's what I'm saying. Look. What, what is... <laughs> I mean, it's Rish, you know. Just get lucky. Alright, he's already jumped. I'm gonna counter it here. And then this actually, because of the timing, this works out that this is exactly 30 seconds. Like, just under. So I'm pretty sure, yep. Oh, it's that Wrecking Ball. Perfect. Okay, 9.33. So that's Nightman... 220? Yeah. Yep, 220. We need it to do either 220 or 240. 240 actually works out a little more conveniently, but both of them work. You just have to do a different setup. So our karma is now 46, as yep. chat's been tracking. And we have all the Nightman ships that we need. Uh, so yeah, now it's kind of working towards getting things set up. We even have the cannon star to make things nicer. Yeah. Because uh, we the, need the cannon star because specifically Nightman deals 220 damage. It's There's some weird thing about that. <laughs> I'm not sure Marco even fully understands it. I think Prof. I do. Do you? Okay. I don't... I, I can ready, try chat. in a Get bit. Ready, chat. <laughs> so, so we're getting close to game breaky, right? We're, yeah, I know. Like... All of that stuff was just playing the game in a very odd fashion. That's stuff I didn't need to do for an 80% run. But now we're kind of back to playing through the story, because we have to go back to Orin Isle for story reasons. Nightman got hacked. Someone stole his walk program. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Wait, what? Yep, so his walk program, his talk program, his... I don't know what else. Oh, you talk like... to Pride, yeah. Yeah, of course you talk to Pride. Making sure. Did you think I was going to skip that? Uh, I mean, have you never forgotten? I have not. I've forgotten other things, like going to sleep. <laughs> okay, fair. 
So this is just a quick revisit through these comps. Without the mini game, I can't fall off and scream IE this time. How much sanity do you need still? Oh. Quite a bit, quite a bit. Okay. I will take a look on the next check-in. I think it's like 5,000. Yeah, so this is where the GMD farming may come oh. in and Rish is using sneak runs to kind of get through the area mm -hmm. uh, without getting encounters so he can maintain his karma. This is just backtracking. Make sure to stretch chat, it's always a good thing. Take every opportunity you can get. And yeah, 5,680. I need 5,120 Zenny. Quick maths. I now need 4,420 Zenny. There's a lot of counting in this speedrun, and math. I apologize. But, if you are brave enough at the end of this, after seeing what happens, to try it yourself, we do have notes. I d we do have notes, yes. You, j you just need the Japanese version of, of Kernel, and a wireless adapter. Yeah, it's easy. All right, so now you saw it a little bit earlier, but we're going to use this GMD specifically right there. And we're going to grind out the Zenny off of it after we get the data from this comp. Yep. Uh, this is specifically because once you've gone through all four comps, you get kicked out of the mine, which is nice because then you don't have to walk out but we need Zenny, so we're going to do this first. Yeah, we need exactly 10,800 Zenny. Uh, because we need to buy one more sneak run after this point, and we need to buy a battle chip that costs 10,500, and that battle chip is absolutely required in order to be able to do this entire setup. And yeah, uh, you do specifically need Team Colonel uh, Protomans and have access to the Nightmare chips. Which are extremely important for Ace. Yeah. But there are multiple versions of... Like, I know there's different color carts for Team Colonel, but does, it, does the version matter? Uh, not to my knowledge. Yeah, so you're probably fine. Just try it. If it doesn't work, then uh, I guess so. Let's quickly hey. check my Zenny, because I don't even know what I got from that last drop. Okay. Need... 3,060 more Zen. So yes, this does take a little bit of time. It will be a little bit boring. I do apologize for that, but... Everything will be worth it. Once it doesn't make any sense. Too bad Fat Kid's not here to make rock jokes true this is very true that would have been a perfect thing to fill the the void right now no you're just making me extra sad that fat kid's not here <laughs> yeah we really took his previous commentary for granted <laughs> i heard that tara tara don't you have a list of heard what one runs I, I, I mean, I wasn't going to bring it up. <laughs> I mean, you just used one. Yeah, where is the Among Us fan fiction? Oh, gosh. <laughs> too far, too far. Oh, no. This is unfortunate. I'm getting, like, chips over and over and over again. So, fun fact that someone has brought up humor. Humor is part, or was part, I don't know if it still is. It was it was part of the any percent route. <laughs> it is a legitimate strategy. It is fast. Yeah, humor is speed tech. I think we've shown that before on the hotfix. Yeah. I, I will be using the same bug for, like, having humor bugged. Yeah, but you don't have humor. It's not the same. Maybe soul time isn't as funny, okay? Yeah, you're right. But. So how are we doing on money? 
I haven't gotten a single drop since I found out that I needed 3060. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> this is like a 3 and 8 chance, by the way, to get any Zenny drops. Yeah, GMDs, um, when they're split evenly, is four chip drops, three Zenny drops, and one bug frag drop. Mm -hmm. um, the reason we choose this GMD, or at least I choose this GMD, is because it has a very high amount of average Zenny you can get from it. It has some very high Zenny drops, like 1,060 or something is the max you can get. And we can get there grab the GMD and jack out without ever getting an encounter check, which means that my karma is completely safe right now. 680, we did it! Is Making that why uh, Taro was encouraging you to grind this GMD while you're looking for the drill arm earlier? It just happens yeah. to be the GMD and yeah, it just works out. Alright, so what did I say? We need, uh, the, the, we need 2,400, 2,380. We still have uh, plenty of time. Like, it, 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 there's a lot of setup to it, but this is like the last kind of bad bad farm. The, the rest of the stuff is more like we'll make progress, uh, not as gated by RNG. Although we can it, get some bad chip draws, but that's that's less of a time loss. Yeah, this this is just an an infinite like time loss thing it depends no on upper just, bound it just there, there's no upper bound yeah it just depends on how much zenny i get uh but i'm sure rish has a backup safe if we get to the point that we're attempting ace and he starts uh crashing which is possible if this is not performed correctly yeah but so far so good Ooh, was that one more sunny yep yeah i think i only need one more drop You just Especially check. if it's uh, 9,000. Okay, if I get the 400 drop, which I can, I will be 20 off. Thanks, game. Thanks. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If only it had been 420 Zenny. Oh, well. Yep. <laughs> you had to say something. I, I, I had to say it because I knew it was going to happen. Uh, it was just too good. Just too good. All right, I literally need one more Zenny drop. Any amount. <laughs> Any amount. Yeah, without getting too far into it, Karma uh, basically is going to prevent the game from crashing if it's a specific set of that. Hey! <laughs> uh, yeah, and, like, of course, I had to get the highest drop possible there when... Uh, I only needed 20. All right, here we go. Snake run. Final pump, and then we're going to do something specifically for Feng Shui. Trust me on this. <laughs> oh, run, run needs some good Feng Shui right now after oh. that grind. I, ne I never <laughs> disbelieved you, Tara. <laughs> Marco's just like, what? What do you mean Feng Oh, I see. <laughs> so people in chat are having fun. Imagining what would happen if you'd seen an previously as yet undiscovered 19 Zenny drop there. That would be impressive. I've been I, far for the course for Rish. I cried, honestly. <laughs> uh, so, so we fixed Nightman and now we go out of the mine. And kind of the next thing that we're supposed to do is... Actually, we go to bed, right? This is the end of the day? We no, go... go to Silo. You go back to Silo, okay. Um, but first... This spot yeah. has good feng shui. I need to jack out right there. Very specific, right there. Okay? I like that. Shout out to Oran area. It's, it's our favorite place. We come back here so often in Battle Network. It's a yep. shame that Ace only goes there like three times. Twice, I'm saving here in case something goes wrong uh, before I trigger the clouds. Like, making sure that I at least have that back up for right now. Usually nothing goes wrong at this point. But just in case. Yeah. Because we're we're almost at the end of as far as we're gonna progress the plot. Uh we we saw Shadowman recently. He's actually the person that attacked Nightman. He's essentially testing the team before he joins us. And so the next 
scenario is there's a bunch of clouds that are cluttering the internet. Guess who the next boss might be? And so we got to go clean them up. And Shadow Man is watching us kind of as we do this. And the first area that he's going to be in is Oran Area 1. Only need the one. We don't need to sneak run yet. We actually need to get this encounter. Oh, uh, you're uh, out of it. That makes sense. This is routed in specifically so I can do this. So oh. <laughs> you um, missed. Wow, Rish. Oh, no, wow. I missed a sword. Ha ha. Except Better run for... away. Yeah. Better run away. You just wanted the Matars to remember this moment. <laughs> Tell your friend. So the the JP exclusive thing where it calls where it calculates karma twice also applies to HP because he was at three sixteen there. He used the dark ship and ran away, and now he's at three fourteen. So it subtracted two HP. Mhm. Mm and then we're gonna bug that. Except there's a friend. Uh. Do you want to explain wrong warping before we do it, or...? We're gonna yeah. do it right now, so... Yeah. Oops. So the funny thing about this wrong warp is actually that it takes us into Oran area, but there's a cutscene that teleports us back to the beginning of Oran area. Uh, the way that this works is when you have certain HP amounts in the JP oh, version, okay. and you back out of the... Uh, and you pack out of a liberation, it just teleports you to the last place that you jacked out of the internet. Hence why I jacked out of the internet in Orn Area 1, specifically in that location. However, uh, uh, at this point in the game, when you enter this area, there's a cutscene that plays that puts you at the start, so... Yeah. Even though he jacked out in that uh, Feng Shui spot, it was just gonna teleport him to the start. So he's actually gonna go back and wrong warp AGAIN! Yep. Yep. This just saves a little bit of steps and actually saves a tiny bit of time. Fun mm -hmm. fact though, uh, we get back into this area and the cutscene plays as if we had just, uh, like, we talked, we had actually exited the liberation correctly. It's just the nice. little cutscene was. And, uh, what is it you just bought? I just bought a chip called Guardian. That's what we were grinding so much Zenny for. It's a uh, pretty good mega chip. It's very solid. It's actually very just a strong chip in general, but it's also just absolutely necessary for setting this whole thing up. And here we are. So currently we are behind the cloud where we shouldn't be because this is the last place we jacked out. Uh, and on top of that, let's uh, set up my folder a tiny bit, shall we? Let's reg so, that. Oh, all right, all right, a little bit of the magic here. Shadow Man, right, is there you can talk to him you're not supposed to be able to talk to him when you talk to an npc that you're not normally supposed to be able to talk to it has a pointer to non-existent dialogue and so when it tries to read that when it tries to process it strange things happen and that's what we're going to take advantage of correct correct we are currently in a position where there's an NPC that we can talk to that we realistically should not be able to talk to. So this is what we call it, bad text box or something, right? Yep. I believe so. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, actually, I need to scroll my notes. And four... this is where we need to have specific amounts of HP, specific uh, karma, but also uh, set something up called the combo. Which I'm not even going to try to explain. Hopefully one of them does. <laughs> when it's relevant. Yeah, I can, I can get there. Hmm. So, yeah. We're going to be running manipulatable parts of memory as script commands. 478 sounds right based on the number of random encounters I got. I got three random encounters. So it should be 478. Um... Alright. So I think then... What does it say to do? Take damage until your HP is currently 244. Ah, yes. It's time to... Okay, not this fight. Never mind. Uh... How do I handle this? I'm going to take damage. What 30... do you need to do? I don't... Uh, it's telling me to set up the combo right now, oh. but don't want to off of this fight. Oh, yeah, because B-Tank's annoying, right? B-Tank yeah. is bad feng shui. Yeah. 
So we're now at 480 karma. Uh, we can do it off this next fight technically too. Perfect. All right. Uh, oh yeah, this is a good one. Yep. <clears throat> and so we'll go up to 482 after this. So why is so, Mega Man's like mood rapidly switching? Uh, that's because of a bug in my Navi Cust. Oh okay. That is Soul Time plus one is bugged, which it gives me a motion bug, which is what we were talking about a little bit earlier. It just means my emotion swaps randomly. Uh, I'm trying to draw Guardians specifically right now. I should have kept that air shot actually. So yeah, it doesn't we count for your karma unless you actually synchros. use that sword, right? Yeah, yeah dark, chi dark chips mm -hmm. are based on usage. Yes. Okay. So Rish is looking for specific chips in order to set up the combo. I might even do the combo twice just to be safe. Uh, -uh. I like that plan. That is unfortunate, but whatever. <laughs> oh no. Doesn't matter, I can fix that. Wow, that was an extremely specific set of events you just did there. <laughs> so what, right. recuff 10, or how are you gonna yeah. give him any energy? No, I'll even throw these in. Oh, so yeah, you can put it in one. Now? Boulder Flow! Oh, um, okay, so yeah, we should be at 482 right now, and then the next step is we need to use a dark chip and then run away three times. Fix your health at some point. Okay. While, we're, while we're doing that, we can also fix my health, yeah. Uh, so since we just set up a combo, I guess I'll explain them. So when, whenever... You remember if you watched the end of the DN4 run when he was fighting Dark Mega and Dark Mega was using the same chips as the, the chips he's been using throughout the run. Uh, the game keeps track of your most commonly used chips as well as what are called like Dark Soul combos. Basically, uh, whenever you use a chip, a series of chips in rapid succession without moving, uh, they get saved as a combo. So that when you fight Dark Mega later, spoiler, you fight Dark Mega later. Uh, he can do those same combos. So, Rish set up a combo there with Guardian, where Guardian's the first chip of the combo, and he's a specific distance away from an enemy, which matters. Hmm. Hmm. Combos so. are certain combinations of chips used in quick succession. It keeps track of a list, and they're sorted by kind of how often you've used them. Uh, and they kind of, I think they deteriorate over time or something, so it tries to mm -hmm. look at more, more recent ones. Yeah. Yep. He specifically needs this Guardian combo to be his top combo. Yeah. Which is why I might probably going to do, gonna it, do it in the next fight or the fight after that? I definitely can't do it off this fight because B tanks are annoying. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I'm going to avoid that at all costs. Also, by the way, our karma will probably be negative. Even if we're wrong with what the karma value is, it should be 466. Thank you. But regardless of that, we're going to be dark right now. And... Whoa, you're evil. Whoa. <laughs> what am I going to do? Kill the B-Tank. Uh, I don't know how. So when you're dark and use a dark chip, when you start as dark mega, your karma only decreases by well. one, right? By two, yes. So now that we're dark, if we use a dark chip and run away, it, well, if we use a dark chip and end the fight, it goes down by one. But because it happens twice when we run away, it will go down by two here. So we will be at 464 karma. And we lost two more HP. Does that hurt anyone else in chat? It's okay. Don't worry about my HP. We're going to be at a nice round number. <laughs> Eventually. Is that round number going to be one? No, no, it won't. We're not playing that long. We need uh, more than two hours. Next 10 fights, we're going to run away, try and get my karma back up to 484. Also, oh, setting it up. 
I'm just gonna do the combo one more time. Hopefully I don't hit this B tank, actually. Don't hit the B tank. Mm. Yeah, I shouldn't have done it that way. I just set up one more time. Yeah. So that brings my karma up by 2, 466. It'll be 468 after this. Uh, all right, so let's do it this way, shall we? Let's move around a bunch just to make sure this doesn't end up being a combo. All right. Fast gauge cannon. Combo. <laughs> So I'm going to use this opportunity to set up the combo one more time, just to be safe. Oh, I get it. So, so there's only this guy in the rocks, he can't hit you? It's just this guy, and this guy has a very nice pattern where he just doesn't move. The B tanks have a weird thing where they move so frequently that the combo usually doesn't set up properly off of them. Yeah, you have to be specifically in the same row as them for, uh, like, columns away or whatever. Mm -hmm. So somebody in chat is asking, what is the, the combo you're trying to set up? Like, what exactly, exactly does it do? It's going to be run as a script command eventually. It represents a specific sequence of bits and bytes in RAM. Oh, okay. So. Yeah. So we, we need those chips specifically, well, more or less, uh, to be at the top of our combo list. Alright, so we're now going to be at 470 Karma, which, by the way, means that this next fight... Safety save or lighter? I'll be safety saving a little bit later. Okay. Um, we should now be regular, see? No longer dark. How matter. does he know? 472. Uh, I actually want to set up the combo one more time. <laughs> because Again. I used it. We're, used four, to... we're 472 now? Yes. Because we were light and we went up to? 472, and then after this fight, it'll be 474 when I run away. Yeah. Okay, I, just, I was looking at chat, and I guess we're doing fights fast enough now that latency matters. Yes. <laughs> Don't worry. I. I am keeping track of this on my own as well, with a live split counter. Uh, this fight would have worked. I guess I could have done it off of the Metzar, but eh. It's just scared of the beast tank. Run! Yeah. What do we need our karma? 480? 486. Oh, we need our karma to be 486 going into a fight. So we save it. Save it 486 or we save it 484? We save it for I save it for 84 to give myself one fight to fix. Yeah. I like it. It also just works out really well because then I end up at 484 karma starting the whole next thing. Uh Do I want to use this fight? No. This should be 480. Are oh, you just tell people like that? Okay. I... Sometimes <laughs> try to keep I try to keep people on their toes about it and then this is 42 you probably want to set it up on the next fight then regardless well yeah ooh. I do you could save here and if it's a bad fight reset right yeah if I'm gonna save it 44 anyway so, we've been doing weird things, but weird things have, other than the fact that we have teleported via wrong warping, uh, things have been too weird. They will get very weird soon. Oh yeah, they're gonna get super weird very, very shortly. We're gonna get real acquainted with Shadow Man. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Alright. 
I've done the combo three times. It should be at the top of my list. So with, uh, do you think full synchro changes the combo in any way, Parker? Uh, if I had I'm to guess, no, I'm not the one that that would be. Oh, wait. So Rish again, and a feng shui stays right next to Shadow Man. Good spot. Uh, let me do something first though, because we have. Uh, we'll keep Guardian in. We don't need any of these. Because we want to maintain specific health. Yeah. I guess that's better safe than sorry when you're dealing with ace. Uh. Time for nightmare. You might have Jenga. Okay, now there's room. Um. Enjoy how a lot of ace runs wind up like this, where. It's no relatively normal, then doing weird stuff, and then magic happens. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I want fast gauge near the top, just to be safe. Uh, we also want to do a quick navi cuss edit. Unfortunately, we can't have custom 2 in because we need HP plus 300 in. Yep. So things that matter are your current HP, your maximum HP, your karma, uh, the chips that you used most recently. Uh, yeah, and I think that's kind of the key right now. Mm -hmm. So we have most of those set up. Rish is saved and I run for one more fight. This is at the magical 486 going into the next fight where he's going to set up a hand buffer, which is separate from the combos that we've been doing previously. Mm hmm. Of course, it's this fight. <laughs> so, so we need dodge. We 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 Are need. She hard reset? Oh wait, no. We we need our current HP to be a specific thing. Uh, actually, does that since we're resetting, we still do? Or current HP doesn't matter. In fact, thank you for reminding me. Are you gonna get hit? Oh yeah, he has I... to get hit for a different reason. I forgot. <laughs> Because it buffs yeah. the Nightman DS chip to do 240 damage, and we need one of them to actually do 240 damage. Because normally it does what, 200 or 220? Yeah, one does. Yeah, 220. So we have Cannon Star. Now we're looking for specific chips, and this is where not having custom two is going to be a little annoying. Uh, yeah. Because we need that... to keep those chips. Yeah, we just can't fit it. So we need all three Nightmen. We, we need the whole team here. Uh, copy damage, because it's a, a no damage star chip. And then cannon star, because it's a 40 damage star. Ooh. Okay. And the order he picks them in is very important. And here we go. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, Shadow Man. <laughs> Our best friend. Shout Look out to Shadow Man. He's so kind that he's giving us all of these HP memories. Wow. See, my max HP is now a very round number. Okay, where do I start with this? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so the, the area of memory that Shadow Man runs as a, a script is uh, your hand buffer, right? So the, the chips he chose. Uh, get run as script commands. So he ends up running the damage of the Nightman chips as a script command, which then runs the his number one combo as a script command, which uh, Guardian is set up to jump to your Navi stats in the battle. So then he runs his current HP, his max HP, and his Karma as script commands. And the commands he ran there were give item HP memory to and then end the script. The karma specifically ends the script, which is why if you don't end the script, the game crashes. Yep. It runs too far. So currently we're doing arbitrary script execution, not arbitrary code execution. Yeah. We're leveraging the script execution to get ace eventually. And we just did minus eight on our karma? Okay. Yes. I, okay, ignore my karma right now. Oh, okay. I messed up because I was supposed to take damage on that fight first, so that my karma, my HP was not an odd number. <laughs> that was 
Well, at least you got the ship quick. Yeah, yeah. This is why. I need to be at 1020 HP for the next setup. So that guy just happens to work out really nicely. So now, our karma when we reloaded the save, by the way, was 484. So we should have just lost four karma and should now be at 476. Four? Minus four or minus eight? Should it be minus, minus eight? eight. Hmm. Yes. I should have taken fast gauge too. What am I doing? And then now it goes down by another four. And then another four. We're at 468 next. I don't trust his math. At this point, I don't even need math. I have this all routed out in advance. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it ideally gets to the point to where it says, do three fights. You just start ship, run away, and you're like, okay, okay. Uh, like once, once you've gotten, if you saved at 484 karma, everything else after that is just as expected. Yep. Uh, the fact that Shadow Man was so generous means that we're on the right track, which is good. Yeah, it means what that actually guarantees is that the dark mega AI combo with Guardian was set up correctly. Like we already know that for a fact. So I just have to be careful to not mess up and do another combo uh by the way we're we're currently dark so our karma only goes down by two so we're at 464. bruce isn't nervous he's just counting it looks similar yeah <laughs> you're a lot of mental stuff right now that's making uh i've watched Rish mess this up many times <laughs> <laughs> building a lot of confidence right now yeah Oh, let's not dodge. Okay. Well, let, let's dodge, actually, is what I meant to say there. Let's not not dodge. Okay. And now, Karma should be at 464. Our current HP is at 1020, and our max HP is at 1042. So, we are good to just run away from 11 fights. <laughs> 11? 11 fights. We have to get our karma back up to the, the value that doesn't crash. 486. Yep. So the reason we gave ourselves so many HP memories is the next script command we're going to run requires, uh, since the, just the way the bytes work out, requires a lot of HP. So we do the first setup to give ourselves the, that HP because that's the only way we can really do that. And then we have to, you know, reuse the dark chips to get the, the values just right and like, tweak them down. Yep. So right now, my karma is 468. We should go into the next fight. Still be dark. And then just to show you guys that I know what I'm talking about, our karma should now be 470, right? Based on what I'm saying. So next fight, we shouldn't be dark anymore. Yeah. And yes, that is the third fight. And with 470, like, changing your appearance is an easy way to make sure you didn't miscount anyway, so, like... Yep. Even wow. if Rish had miscounted, it'd be very obvious. We're yeah, counting up small. Really obvious right now. So yeah. if at any point he loses track of his karma, there's a way to recover. If you go fully light mega, that means you're above 500, so that if the next dark chip you use, we'll say you have 480 again. So... That depends on your health, though. It would be really yeah. different for you right now, though, because... Because your HP, I, yeah. I've already gotten the perfect current and max HP. Yeah. You would have to figure out how to set up the max HP... Or the HP memory thing again on the fly. Have fun. Someone in chat is like, Just got here, what's going on? <laughs> okay. <laughs> all I can say is, hold on. It's almost over. Hold on. You won't be ready for the end. I know we won't be. So... Lan is finally taking after his dad, learning how to do his job, and we're doing data <laughs> magic. Lan actually does his job better than his dad, if I were to be real. <laughs> From what I've seen in these games... Er, dad, sir, not appearing in this game. <laughs> <laughs> not gonna lie, I'm trying to check if Chad is counting correctly, and uh, because of the delay, I'm not even sure. <laughs> hey, it, it does make it a little more difficult. It's hard mode. <laughs> Yeah, chat's I, like at six, seven <laughs> seconds behind, something like that. 
some people in chat are counting positive encounters, others are counting down from 11. <laughs> and Smog started at 10, just to be confusing. <laughs> As long as everyone is internally consistent, I'm sure we'll converge onto what will be the end of the game. I'm assuming they're about to count nine, if I had to guess. Well, some of them. Some of them might say two. Yeah, there goes nine and two. And now that we've mentioned oh, that, there's 14. a bunch more people being chaotic. <laughs> <laughs> I have 484 karma. We save next to our best buddy, Shadow Man. One more fight to run away from, and then. And I don't then... even remember what's next. Oh. We do it <laughs> I like that one. Somebody just typed 0xfc87d4f8. <laughs> That's a little bit higher than what we're counting. Just a little bit. Yeah, just a tiny bit. All right. So now we have custom two in. We need to do the hand buffer again, but this time we can do it with. Custom to it. Makes it a little bit easier. Alright. Wow, that was actually insanely good. Jeez. Uh, let's just take the B tanks. It's okay, you bottom deck the other one, don't worry. Yeah, I know, right? Two. Because we need, uh, we need three unique. We need four unique chips. Yeah. They could be anywhere in our folder, even with slot buys. Had to make sure to kill at least one because then it's so much easier to dodge the other two. Yeah. Uh, I should still have an invis in my folder so I can still. You could keep it all the same. I don't need to be greedy at this point. You know, <laughs> you don't you know, who know? You're talking to. <laughs> I'm always greedy. Uh, all right. I f I'm pretty sure Crackout works, but I'm just not going to trust it. It might be do 10 damage. Uh, we need yeah. specific HP uh, prior to this hand buffer setup. Yeah. Let me just make sure. Okay, 240, 220. Cannon, that, select, done. Get ready on time, by the way, because time. That's so silly. <laughs> hey, it's being five. Magic. You guys enjoy the run? About two hours, 42 minutes on my timer, which I started my timer a little later because I did a little GMD minute at the start. 42 seconds, you mean? Huh? 42, 42 seconds? Two hours, 42 seconds. Okay, you said minutes and I was very confused. So, yeah, two hours, 42 seconds. Yeah, that tracks. So, uh, what the heck just happened? Chat wants to know. <laughs> okay, so remember at the very start of the run, when Rish entered the cross battle menu and put in that payload? Well, he showed us the payload he already put mm -hmm. in. Um, the HP that he had going when he talked to Shadowman there specifically called it. Well. It, uh, called an invalid function that pointed directly to that payload. So it ran the text he entered as code, and you just have just enough space to fit the instructions to call the credits. Yep. <laughs> Specifically just says call the credits function. That That's what the payload said. And Amazing. as a result, we just talked to Shadow Man and we jumped to the credits. Also, the yeah. planets and stars that had to align to make this work is just <laughs> unreal. <laughs> yeah, because how many characters can you put into those boxes? So five, the then... name is five, and the description is... Is it 11? I think 11 makes sense, yeah, because it's like the 12th character is the terminating character or something. Yeah, yeah. So, so that gives you five bytes and 11 bytes to work with, but do the way just the memories laid out, you really only have four bytes and eight bytes. Yep. And you can't use, there are certain values that you can't write with the character set, so you have to get a little creative with the instructions you write. Yes. And for reference, as Tara mentioned in the chat, um, 
this run without Ace is three and a half hours as a world record time. So it only happened recently. Like usually yeah. being five, like four hours on average. Yeah. Yep, most runs tend to take about four-ish hours. But at least twice as fast. So people are asking about how that this was found, and I'm assuming that's a complicated question, because beforehand they were talking how it took, like, several years to put Whoa. this run together. <laughs> so, so it's like, two or three years ago, uh, a community <laughs> member named Lucky Typhlosion found a thing where you talk to Shadow Man run script commands, and there was another thing that we could do with that we found at the time that was pretty cool, where we can give ourselves 90 of every chip um but that was an ace but the more i looked into it because i thought it was really interesting the more likely it seemed that i could leverage ace from this somehow so i spent like two years two or three years on and off just messing around with different ideas and eventually uh thought of the crossover battle menu and just kind of worked out yep i, I think lucky the the wrong warping exclusive to the japanese version was was known like there's even I, i'm pretty sure it's one of the few bugs that capcom has acknowledged right because you can soft yeah. log or something there's there's a support page on for the because you can soft log you yeah it's so like a, a pretty hard soft lock you have to send in your game yeah lucky uh was playing around with wrong warping and found that if you talk to certain npcs you're not supposed to be able to and it's like shadow man was one that proved to be promising and then years of poking at it marco prof and lucky did yeah shout outs to prof and gm and lucky and uh especially hideo kojima it's <laughs> all possible when you showed a payload again for people that weren't here at the start one of my favorite things about this just really quickly oh, is that fuck. everything works uh because the credits like didn't change anything i could just talk to shadow man and hey we're at the credits again Yo, um, new game plus any percent, two seconds. <laughs> but, but um, yes, yeah, so if we show off the payload real quick, this is the payload, basically, in the crossover battle menu, which only shows up if you have the wireless adapter enabled in your game. You can type in a name and a description with these characters, and this payload effectively says, call the credits function. Uh, so yeah, and then all we have to do actually to utilize this is we do a soft reset, we load, opening that menu loads the name and description into the specific place that gets called. If you don't do a soft reset, uh, after, I think it's like based on entering this menu, like right now, because I loaded this, uh, this text box right like the actual ability to edit the name and description if i went and did the glitch it would actually just crash for whatever reason so specifically you have to go in open this menu to load them into the correct memory addresses and then just back out and then we'd be good i forget will this crash absolutely not of course not uh see that's ace. It's currently only been done for any percent purposes, but this, I believe, has other applications that could be used for 100%, like giving yourself 90 of every chip, giving yourself max HP as we already did, giving yourself every Navicus program in the game, etc. So I'm currently working on and off on a, a, a full control test. So using ace to literally write as big as payload as I want using, you know, task-specific inputs and stuff. Uh, full, full control is when things get real broken. That's where you see the stuff like what's happened on the task showcases at GDQ where you start yeah. playing different games within another game. It's theoretically... Well, it is possible. I've done it. It's... It's wild. Uh, Railcoon, I'm gonna give you a, a paste bin that Marco provided. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> for people the Discord. Yeah, for people that are interested, that paste bin that I think Railcoon will post in chat basically describes how the glitch works in, in a bit more detail. It breaks down a lot more of the technical aspects. Yep. So yeah, that 
was BN5 any percent with arbitrary code execution. Wait, Wait where'd that you... A... That's from the speedrun.com. Why is there a different link? Uh, I mean, if they both go to the server, that's fine. Yeah, I think do. at one point I made uh, a couple different links so we could know where they came from, like which link. Mm-hmm. It's like, just putting it on speedrun.com get anyone? And the answer was actually yes. <laughs> Alright, and uh, I think a fun thing to mention is that while we were setting up, it was mentioned that this doesn't even count as any percent, because you don't fulfill the rules of any percent. So, if you look at the speedrun.com and Mega Man RTA leaderboards, um, the rules tell you that time starts on new game, and time ends when Nebula Grey, the final boss, starts exploding. So, <laughs> technically speaking, this run does not fulfill that requirement, so it can't be submitted to that particular leaderboard. However, it does fulfill the requirements of typically any percent, because any percent just means reach the credits as fast as possible. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure you could call the Nebula Grey battle. Hmm? You probably, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty just, sure that would be pretty trivial to do. I. Give me a payload, I'll do a run of it later. <laughs> right, I'll look into it. That would be a hard Nebula Grey fight. Yeah. I mean, Besides, it would be uh... Nightman. Well, you'd have a thousand HP, so... Oh, true. So besides Team BN, do you have any other shoutouts? We should wrap things up here pretty soon. Um, Shoutouts to Team BN. Shoutouts to Terra and Marco for helping with commentary. Uh, thanks, Marco, for coming up with this hilarious glitch and uh, letting us beat the game in such a way. Also, huge thanks to Lucky Typhlosion, as was mentioned, Prof9, Grega Master, uh, for helping to work on routing with this glitch, and shoutouts to Hideo Kojima for wanting to make a kid's game, <laughs> you know? And is uh, Team BN doing anything coming up soon we should let people know about? Mm. Uh, I don't think we have anything special planned. Uh, Currently, we'll probably the next big thing we're going to work towards is the summer showcase, which will probably be like um, sometime after summer games and quick in a week or two. Mm. Okay, no, nothing soon. All right, thanks uh, everyone here, Rish, Marco, Tara for this run, but everybody else has participated tonight. We've got Erithar, Kamari, Smog, Dallas, and everybody else in the Team BN uh, community. We do this at least once a year, sometimes more, when we've got more stuff to show off. Uh, so I'm glad everybody seemed to enjoy the show. We're trying to put together a second part of the showcase, probably sometime in June, so keep your eyes open. We'll let you know if we've got more Battle Network to show off. And if you tune in tomorrow here on Hotfix, Random Number Generation is going to have Pokemon Crystal Randomizer. So tune in for that. That'll be starting at 7 p.m. Eastern. Uh, I'm actually going to be on Mercy Kill this week. Uh, that's going to be fun. Uh, starting at, I think, I'm not the first runner, so I'll be probably like around 8.30 p.m. Eastern. But the show starts at 7 p.m. Eastern. That's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, just as a quick reminder, if you'd like to see more stuff about Hotfix and what we do, you can go to gamestonequick.com slash hotfix. And there's a form down there at the bottom left you can fill out to let us know what games that you would like to show off here on Hotfix. So definitely let us know if there's games you're interested in. Uh, showing off on these shows but other than that uh, game submissions for Frame Fatales open tomorrow SGDQ schedule came out tonight and uh, we'll see you tomorrow <laughs>